First Kings chapters 8 through 16 of the Bible, Dewey Rames, 1899 American Edition. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 9 And it came to pass, when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all that he desired and was pleased to do, that the Lord appeared to him the second time, as he had appeared to him in Gabaon. And the Lord said to him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication which thou hast made before me. I have sanctified this house which thou hast built, to put my name there for ever, and my eyes and my heart shall be there always. And if thou wilt walk before me, as thy father walked, in simplicity of heart and in uprightness, and wilt do all that I have commanded thee, and wilt keep my ordinances and my judgments, I will establish the throne of thy kingdom over Israel for ever, as I promised David thy father, saying, There shall not fail a man of thy race upon the throne of Israel. But if you and your children revolting shall turn away from following me, and will not keep my commandments and my ceremonies, which I have set before you, but will go and worship strange gods and adore them, I will take away Israel from the face of the land which I have given them, and the temple which I have sanctified to my name I will cast out of my sight, and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. And this house shall be made an example of. Every one that shall pass by it shall be astonished, and shall hiss and say, Why hath the Lord done thus to this land and to this house? And they shall answer, Because they forsook the Lord their God, who brought their fathers out of the land of Egypt, and followed strange gods, and adored them, and worshipped them. Therefore hath the Lord brought upon them all this evil. And when twenty years were ended, after Solomon had built the two houses, that is, the house of the Lord and the house of the king, Hiram the king of Tyre, furnishing Solomon with cedar trees and fir trees, and gold according to all he had need of, then Solomon gave Hiram twenty cities in the land of Galilee. And Hiram came out of Tyre to see the towns which Solomon had given him, and they pleased him not. And he said, Are these the cities which thou hast given me, brother? And he called them the land of Kabul unto this day. And Hiram sent to King Solomon a hundred and twenty talents of gold. This is the sum of the expenses which King Solomon offered to build the house of the Lord, and his own house, and Melo, and the wall of Jerusalem, and Hezer, and Megiddo, and Gezer. Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, came up, and took Gezer, and burnt it with fire, and slew the Canaanite that dwelt in the city, and gave it for a dowry to his daughter, Solomon's wife. So Solomon built Gezer, and Beth Horon the nether, and Baalath, and Palmyra, in the land of the wilderness. And all the towns that belonged to himself and were not walled, he fortified, the cities also of the chariots and the cities of the horsemen. And whatsoever he had a mind to build in Jerusalem, and in Libanus, and in all the land of his dominion. All the people that were left of the Amorites, and Hittites, and Perizzites, and Hivites, and Jebusites, that are not of the children of Israel, their children that were left in the land, to wit, such as the children of Israel had not been able to destroy, Solomon made tributary unto this day. But of the children of Israel Solomon made not any to be bondmen, 
but they were men of war, and his servants and his princes and captains and overseers of the chariots and horses. And there were five hundred and fifty chief officers set over all the works of Solomon, and they had people under them, and had charge over the appointed works. And the daughter of Pharaoh came up out of the city of David to her house, which Solomon had built for her. Then did he build Melo. Solomon also offered three times every year holocausts, and victims of peace offerings upon the altar which he had built to the Lord, and he burnt incense before the Lord, and the temple was finished. And King Solomon made a fleet in Asiangaber, which is by Ilath on the shore of the Red Sea, in the land of Edom. And Hiram sent his servants in the fleet, sailors that had knowledge of the sea, with the servants of Solomon. And they came to Ophir, and they brought from thence to King Solomon four hundred and twenty talents of gold. End of chapter 9 Chapter 10 And the queen of Seba, having heard of the fame of Solomon in the name of the Lord, came to try him with hard questions and entering into Jerusalem with a great train, and riches, and camels that carried spices, and an immense quantity of gold, and precious stones, she came to King Solomon, and spoke to him all that she had in her heart. And Solomon informed her of all the things she proposed to him. There was not any word the king was ignorant of, and which he could not answer her. And when the queen of Seba saw all the wisdom of Solomon, and the house which he had built, and the meat of his table, and the apartments of his servants, and the order of his ministers, and their apparel, and the cup-bearers, and the holocausts, which he offered in the house of the Lord, she had no longer any spirit in her. And she said to the king, The report is true which I heard in my own country, concerning thy words and concerning thy wisdom, and I did not believe them that told me till I came myself, and saw with my own eyes, and have found that the half hath not been told me. Thy wisdom and thy works exceed the fame which I heard. Blessed are thy men, and blessed are thy servants who stand before thee always, and hear thy wisdom. Blessed be the Lord thy God, whom thou hast pleased, and who hath set thee upon the throne of Israel, because the Lord hath loved Israel for ever, and hath appointed thee king to do judgment and justice. And she gave the king a hundred and twenty talents of gold, and of spices, a very great store, and precious stones. There was brought no more such abundance of spices as these which the queen of Seba gave to King Solomon. The navy also of Hiram, which brought gold from Ophir, brought from Ophir great plenty of thion trees and precious stones. And the king made of the thion trees the rails of the house of the Lord, and of the king's house, and citterns and harps for singers. There were no such thion trees as these brought, nor seen unto this day. And King Solomon gave the queen of Seba all that she desired, and asked of him besides what he offered he himself of his royal bounty. And she returned and went to her own country with her servants. And the weight of the gold that was brought to Solomon every year was six hundred and sixty-six talents of gold. Besides that which the men brought him that were over the tributes, and the merchants, and they that sold by retail, and all the kings of Arabia, and the governors of the country. 
and solomon made two hundred shields of the purest gold he allowed six hundred cidas of gold for the plates of one shield and three hundred targets of fine gold three hundred pounds of gold covered one target and the king put them in the house of the forest of libanus king solomon also made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with the finest gold it has six steps and the top of the throne was round behind and there were two hands on either side holding the seat and two lions stood one at each hand and twelve little lions stood upon the six steps on the one side and on the other there was no such work made in any kingdom moreover all the vessels out of which king solomon drank were of gold and all the furniture of the house of the forest of libanus was of most pure gold there was no silver nor was any account made of it in the days of solomon for the king's navy once in three years went with the navy of hiram by sea to tharsis and brought from thence gold and silver and elephants teeth and apes and peacocks and king solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom and all the earth desired to see solomon's face to hear his wisdom which god had given in his heart and every one brought him presents vessels of silver and of gold garments and armor and spices and horses and mules every year and solomon gathered together chariots and horsemen and he had a thousand four hundred chariots and twelve thousand horsemen and he bestowed them in fenced cities and with the king in jerusalem and he made silver to be as plentiful in jerusalem as stones and cedars to be as common as sycamores which grow in the plains and horses were brought for solomon out of egypt and koa for the king's merchants brought them out of koa and bought them at a set price and a chariot of four horses came out of egypt for six hundred siddhas of silver and a horse for a hundred and fifty and after this manner did all the kings of the hittites and of syria sell horses end of chapter ten Chapter 11 And King Solomon loved many strange women besides the daughter of Pharaoh, and women of Moab, and of Ammon, and of Edom, and of Sidon, and of the Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said to the children of Israel, You shall not go in unto them, neither shall any of them come into yours for they will most certainly turn away your heart to follow their gods. And to these was Solomon joined with a most ardent love. And he had seven hundred wives as queens, and three hundred concubines, and the women turned away his heart. And when he was now old, his heart was turned away by women to follow strange gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. But Solomon worshipped Astarthe, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Moloch, the idol of the Ammonites. And Solomon did that which was not pleasing before the Lord, and did not fully follow the Lord as David his father. Then Solomon built a temple for Camos, the idol of Moab, on the hill that is over against Jerusalem, and for Moloch, the idol of the children of Ammon. And he did in this manner for all his wives that were strangers who burnt incense and offered sacrifice to their gods. 
and the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his mind was turned away from the Lord the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not follow strange gods. But he kept not the things which the Lord commanded him. The Lord therefore said to Solomon, Because thou hast done this, and hast not kept my covenant and my precepts, which I have commanded thee, I will divide and rend thy kingdom, and will give it to thy servant. Nevertheless in thy days I will not do it, for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Neither will I take away the whole kingdom, but I will give one tribe to thy son, for the sake of David my servant, and Jerusalem, which I have chosen. And the Lord raised up an adversary to Solomon, Adad the Edomite of the king's seed, in Edom. For when David was in Edom, and Joab the general of the army was gone up to bury them that were slain, and had killed every male in Edom, for Joab remained there six months with all Israel, till he had slain every male in Edom. Then Adad fled, he and certain Edomites of his father's servants with him, to go into Egypt, and Adad was then a little boy. And they arose out of Median, and came into Faran, and they took men with them from Faran, and went into Egypt, to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, who gave him a house, and appointed him victuals, and assigned him land. And Adad found great favor before Pharaoh, insomuch that he gave him to wife the own sister of his wife Taphnes, the queen. And the sister of Taphnes bore him his son Genubeth, and Taphnes brought him up in the house of Pharaoh and Genubeth dwelt with Pharaoh among his children. And when Adad heard in Egypt that David slept with his fathers, and that Joab the general of the army was dead, he said to Pharaoh, Let me depart, that I may go to my own country. And Pharaoh said to him, Why, what is wanting to thee with me, that thou seekest to go to thy own country? But he answered, nothing, yet I beseech thee to let me go. God also raised up against him an adversary, Razon the son of Eliada, who had fled from his master at Arezer, the king of Soba. And he gathered men against him, and he became a captain of robbers, when David slew them of Soba, and they went to Damascus and dwelt there, and they made him king in Damascus. And he was an adversary to Israel all the days of Solomon, and this is the evil of Adad, and his hatred against Israel, and he reigned in Syria. Jeroboam also the son of Nebat, an Ephrathite of Sarida, a servant of Solomon, whose mother was named Seruah, a widow woman, lifted up his hand against the king. And this is the cause of his rebellion against him. For Solomon built Milo, and filled up the breach of the city of David his father. And Jeroboam was a valiant and mighty man, and Solomon seeing him a young man, ingenious and industrious, made him chief over the tributes of all the house of Joseph. So it came to pass at that time that Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, and the prophet Ahias the Silonite, clad with a new garment, found him in the way, and they too were alone in the held. And Ahias, taking his new garment wherewith he was clad, divided it into twelve parts, and he said to Jeroboam, Take to thee ten pieces, for thus saith the Lord the God of Israel, 
Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and will give thee ten tribes. But one tribe shall remain to him for the sake of my servant David, and Jerusalem the city, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. Because he hath forsaken me, and hath adored Astarthe, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Camos, the god of Moab, and Moloch, the god of the children of Ammon, and hath not walked in my ways to do justice before me, and to keep my precepts and judgments, as did David his father. Yet I will not take away all the kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him prince all the days of his life, for David my servant's sake, whom I chose, who kept my commandments and my precepts. But I will take away the kingdom out of his son's hand, and will give thee ten tribes. And to his son I will give one tribe, that there may remain a lamp for my servant David before me always, in Jerusalem the city which I have chosen, that my name might be there. And I will take thee, and thou shalt reign over all that thy soul desireth, and thou shalt be king over Israel. If then thou wilt hearken to all that I shall command thee, and wilt walk in my ways, and do what is right before me, keeping my commandments and my precepts, as David my servant did, I will be with thee, and will build thee up a faithful house, as I built a house for David, and I will deliver Israel to thee. And I will for this afflict the seed of David, but yet not for ever. Solomon therefore sought to kill Jeroboam, but he arose and fled into Egypt, to Sisak the king of Egypt, and was in Egypt till the death of Solomon. And the rest of the words of Solomon, and all that he did, and his wisdom, behold, they are all written in the book of the words of the days of Solomon. And the days that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel, were forty years. And Solomon slept with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David his father, and Roboam his son reigned in his stead. End of chapter 11 Chapter 12 And Roboam went to Sichem, for thither were all Israel come together to make him king. But Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who was yet in Egypt, a fugitive from the face of King Solomon, hearing of his death, returned out of Egypt. And they sent and called him, and Jeroboam came, and all the multitude of Israel, and they spoke to Roboam, saying, Thy father laid a grievous yoke upon us. Now therefore do thou take off a little of the grievous service of thy father, and of his most heavy yoke, which he put upon us, and we will serve thee. And he said to them, Go till the third day, and come to me again. And when the people was gone, King Roboam took counsel with the old men that stood before Solomon his father, while he yet lived. And he said, What counsel do you give me, that I may answer this people? They said to him, if thou wilt yield to this people to-day, and condescend to them, and grant their petition, and wilt speak gentle words to them, they will be thy servants always. But he left the counsel of the old men which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that had been brought up with him, and stood before him. And he said to them, What counsel do you give me that I may answer this people? who have said to me, Make the yoke which thy father put upon us lighter. And the young men that had been brought up with him said, 
Thus shalt thou speak to this people who have spoken to thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, do thou ease us. Thou shalt say to them, My little finger is thicker than the back of my father, and now my father put a heavy yoke upon you, but I will add to your yoke. My father beat you with whips, but I will beat you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Reboam the third day, as the king had appointed, saying, Come to me again the third day. And the king answered the people roughly, leaving the counsel of the old men which they had given him, and he spoke to them according to the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke. My father beat you with whips, but I will beat you with scorpions. And the king condescended not to the people, for the Lord was turned away from him to make good his word, which he had spoken in the hand of Ahias the Silonite to Jeroboam the son of Nabat. Then the people, seeing that the king would not hearken to them, answered him, saying, What portion have we in David, or what inheritance in the son of Isai? Go home to thy dwellings, O Israel. Now, David, look to thy own house. So Israel departed to their dwellings. But as for all the children of Israel that dwelt in the cities of Judah, Roboam reigned over them. Then King Roboam sent Adoram, who was over the tribute, and all Israel stoned him, and he died. Wherefore King Roboam made haste to get him up into his chariot, and he fled to Jerusalem. And Israel revolted from the house of David unto this day. And it came to pass, when all Israel heard that Jeroboam was come again, that they gathered an assembly, and sent and called him, and made him king over all Israel. And there was none that followed the house of David, but the tribe of Judah only. And Roboam came to Jerusalem, and gathered together all the house of Judah, and the tribe of Benjamin, a hundred fourscore thousand chosen men for war, to fight against the house of Israel, and to bring the kingdom again under Roboam, the son of Solomon. But the word of the Lord came to Semeias, the man of God, saying, Speak to Reboam, the son of Solomon, the king of Judah, and to all the house of Judah, and Benjamin, and the rest of the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, You shall not go up nor fight against your brethren, the children of Israel. Let every man return to his house, for this thing is from me. They hearkened to the word of the Lord, and returned from their journey, as the Lord had commanded them. And Jeroboam built Sichem in Mount Ephraim, and dwelt there, and going out from thence he built Phanuel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David, if this people go up to offer sacrifices in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, and the heart of this people will turn to their lord Roboam the king of Judah, and they will kill me, and return to him. And finding out a device, he made two golden calves, and said to them, Go ye up no more to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other in Dan. And this thing became an occasion of sin, for the people went to adore the calf as far as Dan. And he made temples in the high places, and priests of the lowest of the people, who were not the sons of Levi. And he appointed a feast in the eighth month, on the fifteenth day of the month, after the manner of the feast that was celebrated in Judah. And going up to the altar, 
he did in like manner in Bethel to sacrifice to the calves which he had made, and he placed in Bethel priests of the high places which he had made. And he went up to the altar which he had built in Bethel on the fifteenth day of the eighth month, which he had devised of his own heart, and he ordained a feast to the children of Israel, and went upon the altar to burn incense. End of chapter 12 Chapter 13 And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah, by the word of the Lord to Bethel, when Jeroboam was standing upon the altar and burning incense. And he cried out against the altar in the word of the Lord, and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born to the house of David, Josias by name, and he shall immolate upon thee the priests of the high places, who now burn incense upon thee, and he shall burn men's bones upon thee. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This shall be the sign that the Lord hath spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And when the king had heard the word of the man of God, which he had cried out against the altar in Bethel, he stretched forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. And his hand which he stretched forth against him withered, and he was not able to draw it back again to him. The altar also was rent, and the ashes were poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given before in the word of the Lord. And the king said to the man of God, Entreat the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored to me. And the man of God besought the face of the Lord, and the king's hand was restored to him, and it became as it was before. And the king said to the man of God, Come home with me to dine, and I will make thee presents. And the man of God answered the king, If thou wouldst give me half thy house, I will not go with thee, nor eat bread, nor drink water in this place. For so it was enjoined me by the word of the Lord commanding me, Thou shalt not eat bread, nor drink water, nor return by the same way that thou camest. So he departed by another way, and returned not by the way that he came into Bethel. Now a certain old prophet dwelt in Bethel, and his sons came to him and told him all the works that the men of God had done that day in Bethel, and they told their father the words which he had spoken to the king. And their father said to them, What way went he? His sons showed him the way by which the man of God went who came out of Judah. And he said to his sons, Saddle me the ass. And when they had saddled him, he got up and went after the man of God, and found him sitting under a turpentine tree. And he said to him, Art thou the man of God that camest from Judah? He answered, I am. And he said to him, Come home with me to eat bread. But he said, I must not return nor go with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place because the Lord spoke to me in the word of the Lord, saying, Thou shalt not eat bread, and thou shalt not drink water there, nor return by the way thou wentest. He said to him, I also am a prophet like unto thee. And an angel spoke to me in the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thy house, that he may eat bread and drink water. He deceived him, and brought him back with him. So he ate bread and drank water in his house. And as they sat at table, the word of the Lord came to the prophet that brought him back. And he cried out to the man of God who came out of Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, 
because thou hast not been obedient to the Lord, and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, and hast returned, and eaten bread, and drunk water in the place wherein he commanded thee, that thou shouldst not eat bread nor drink water, thy dead body shall not be brought into the sepulchre of thy fathers. And when he had eaten and drunk, he saddled his ass for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion found him in the way, and killed him. And his body was cast in the way, and the ass stood by him, and the lion stood by the dead body. And behold, men passing by saw the dead body cast in the way, and the lion standing by the body and they came and told it in the city wherein that old prophet dwelt. And when that prophet, who had brought him back out of the way, heard of it, he said, It is the man of God that was disobedient to the mouth of the Lord, and the Lord hath delivered him to the lion, and he hath torn him and killed him, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke to him. And he said to his sons, saddle me an ass. And when they had saddled it, and he was gone, he found the dead body cast in the way, and the ass and the lion standing by the carcass. The lion had not eaten of the dead body, nor hurt the ass. And the prophet took up the body of the man of God, and laid it upon the ass, and going back, brought it into the city of the old prophet to mourn for him and he laid his dead body in his own sepulchre, and they mourned over him, saying, Alas, alas, my brother! And when they had mourned over him, he said to his sons, When I am dead, bury me in the sepulchre wherein the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. For assuredly, the word shall come to pass which he hath foretold in the word of the Lord against the altar that is in Bethel, and against all the temples of the high places that are in the cities of Samaria. After these words Jeroboam came not back from his wicked way, but on the contrary he made of the meanest of the people priests of the high places, Whosoever would, he filled his hand, and he was made a priest of the high places. And for this cause did the house of Jeroboam sin, and was cut off, and destroyed from the face of the earth. End of chapter 13 Chapter 14 At that time Abiah the son of Jeroboam fell sick. And Jeroboam said to his wife, Arise, and change thy dress, that thou be not known to be the wife of Jeroboam, and go to Silo, where Ahias the prophet is, who told me that I should reign over this people. Take also with thee ten leaves, and cracknels, and a pot of honey, and go to him, for he will tell thee what shall become of this child. Jeroboam's wife did as he told her, and rising up went to Silo, and came to the house of Ahias, but he could not see, for his eyes were dim by reason of his age. And the Lord said to Ahias, Behold, the wife of Jeroboam cometh in, to consult thee concerning her son that is sick. Thus and thus shalt thou speak to her. So when she was coming in, and made as if she were another woman, Ahias heard the sound of her feet coming in at the door, and said, Come in, thou wife of Jeroboam, why dost thou feign thyself to be another? But I am sent to thee with heavy tidings. Go and tell Jeroboam. Thus saith the Lord the God of Israel, Forasmuch as I exalted thee from among the people, and made thee prince over my people Israel, and rent the kingdom away from the house of David, and gave it to thee, 
and thou hast not been as my servant David, who kept my commandments, and followed me with all his heart, doing that which was well pleasing in my sight, but hast done evil above all that were before thee, and hast made these strange gods and molten gods to provoke me to anger, and hast cast me behind thy back. Therefore, behold, I will bring evils upon the house of Jeroboam, and will cut off from Jeroboam him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up, and the last in Israel, and I will sweep away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam, as dung is swept away, till all be clean. Them that shall die of Jeroboam in the city the dogs shall eat and them that shall die in the field the birds of the air shall devour, for the Lord hath spoken it. Arise thou therefore, and go to thy house, and when thy feet shall be entering into the city, the child shall die. And all Israel shall mourn for him, and shall bury him, for he only of Jeroboam shall be laid in a sepulchre, because in his regard there is found a good word from the Lord the God of Israel in the house of Jeroboam. And the Lord hath appointed himself a king over Israel, who shall cut off the house of Jeroboam in this day and in this time. And the Lord God shall strike Israel as a reed is shaken in the water, and he shall root up Israel out of this good land which he gave to their fathers, and shall scatter them beyond the river, because they have made to themselves groves to provoke the Lord. And the Lord shall give up Israel for the sins of Jeroboam, who hath sinned and made Israel to sin. And the wife of Jeroboam arose, and departed, and came to Thersa, and when she was coming in to the threshold of the house, the child died. And they buried him, and all Israel mourned for him according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by the hand of his servant Ahias the prophet. And the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, how he fought and how he reigned, Behold, they are written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Israel. And the days that Jeroboam reigned were two and twenty years, and he slept with his fathers, and Nadab his son reigned in his stead, and Roboam the son of Solomon reigned in Judah. Roboam was one and forty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem the city, which the Lord chose out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Naamah an Ammonitess. And Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord, and provoked him above all that their fathers had done in their sins which they committed. For they also built them altars and statues and groves upon every high hill and under every green tree. There were also the effeminate in the land, and they did according to all the abominations of the people whom the Lord had destroyed before the face of the children of Israel. And in the fifth year of the reign of Roboam, Sisak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem, and he took away the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the king's treasures, and carried all off, as also the shields of gold which Solomon had made. And Roboam made shields of brass instead of them, and delivered them into the hand of the captains of the shield-bearers, and of them that kept watch before the gate of the king's house. And when the king went into the house of the Lord, they whose office it was to go before him carried them, and afterwards they brought them back to the armory of the shield-bearers. 
Now the rest of the sets of Roboam, and all that he did, behold, they are written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Judah. And there was war between Roboam and Jeroboam always, and Roboam slept with his fathers, and was buried with them in the city of David. And his mother's name was Naamah, an Ammonitess, and Abiam his son reigned in his stead. End of chapter 14 Chapter 15 Now in the eighteenth year of the reign of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, Abiam reigned over Judah. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Maacah, the daughter of Abessalom. And he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. But for David's sake, the Lord his God gave him a lamp in Jerusalem to set up his son after him, and to establish Jerusalem, because David had done that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, and had not turned aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, except the matter of Urias the Hittite. But there was war between Roboam and Jeroboam all the time of his life, and the rest of the words of Abiam, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Judah? And there was war between Abiam and Jeroboam. And Abiam slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David, and Asa his son reigned in his stead. So in the twentieth year of Jeroboam king of Israel, reigned Asa king of Judah, and he reigned one and forty years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Maacah, the daughter of Abessalom. And Asa did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, as did David his father. And he took away the effeminate out of the land, and he removed all the filth of the idols which his fathers had made. Moreover, he also removed his mother Maacah from being the princess in the sacrifices of Priapus, and in the grove which she had consecrated to him, and he destroyed her den, and broke in pieces the filthy idol, and burnt it by the torrent Kedron. But the high places he did not take away. Nevertheless the heart of Asa was perfect with the Lord all his days. And he brought in the things which his father had dedicated, and he had vowed into the house of the Lord silver and gold and vessels. And there was war between Asa and Baasa, king of Israel, all their days. And Baasa, king of Israel, went up against Judah, and built Ramah, that no man might go out or come in of the side of Asa, king of Judah. Then Asa took all the silver and gold that remained in the treasures of the house of the Lord, and in the treasures of the king's house, and delivered it into the hands of his servants, and sent them to Benadad, son of Tabrimon, the son of Hezion, king of Syria, who dwelt in Damascus, saying, There is a league between me and thee, and between my father and thy father. Therefore I have sent thee presents of silver and gold, and I desire thee to come and break thy league with Baasa, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. Benadad, hearkening to king Asa, sent the captains of his army against the cities of Israel, and they smote Ahion, and Dan, and Abeldamum Maacah, and all Kenneroth, that is all, the land of Nephtali. And when Baasa had heard this, he left off building Ramah, and returned into Thersa. 
But King Asa sent word into all Judah, saying, Let no man be excused. And they took away the stones from Remah, and the timber thereof wherewith Baasa had been building, and with them Asa built Gabeah of Benjamin and Mazpah. But the rest of all the acts of Asa, and all his strength, and all that he did, and the cities that he built, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Judah? But in the time of his old age he was diseased in his feet, and he slept with his fathers, and was buried with them in the city of David his father. And Josaphat his son reigned in his place. But Nadab the son of Jeroboam reigned over Israel the second year of Asa king of Judah, and he reigned over Israel two years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the ways of his father, and in his sins, wherewith he made Israel to sin. And Baasa the son of Ahias of the house of Issachar conspired against him, and slew him in Gabethan, which is a city of the Philistines, for Nadab and all Israel besieged Gabethan. So Baasa slew him in the third year of Asa king of Judah, and reigned in his place. And when he was king, he cut off all the house of Jeroboam. He left not so much as one soul of his seed, till he had utterly destroyed him, according to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken in the hand of Ahias the Silonite. Because of the sin of Jeroboam, which he had sinned, and wherewith he had made Israel to sin, and for the offence, wherewith he provoked the Lord the God of Israel. But the rest of the acts of Nadab, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Israel? And there was war between Asa and Baasa, the king of Israel, all their days. In the third year of Asa king of Judah, Baasa the son of Ahias, reigned over all Israel in Therza four and twenty years. And he did evil before the Lord, and walked in the ways of Jeroboam, and in his sins, wherewith he made Israel to sin. End of chapter 15 Chapter 16 then the word of the Lord came to Jehu, the son of Hanani, against Baasa, saying, Forasmuch as I have exalted thee out of the dust, and made thee prince over my people Israel, and thou hast walked in the way of Jeroboam, and hast made my people Israel to sin, to provoke me to anger with their sins, Behold, I will cut down the posterity of Baasa, and the posterity of his house, and I will make thy house as the house of Jeroboam the son of Nebat. Him that dieth of Baasa in the city, the dogs shall eat, and him that dieth of his in the country, the fowls of the air shall devour. But the rest of the acts of Baasa and all that he did, and his battles, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Israel? So Baasa slept with his fathers, and was buried in Therza, and Elah his son reigned in his stead. And when the word of the Lord came in the hand of Jehu the son of Hanani the prophet against Baasa, and against his house, and against all the evil that he had done before the Lord, to provoke him to anger by the works of his hands, to become as the house of Jeroboam, for this cause he slew him, that is to say, Jehu the son of Hanani the prophet. In the six and twentieth year of Asa king of Judah, Elah 
the son of Baasa, reigned over Israel in Theresa two years. And his servant Zambri, who was captain of half the horsemen, rebelled against him. Now Elah was drinking in Thersa, and drunk in the house of Arza, the governor of Thersa. And Zambri, rushing in, struck him, and slew him in the seven-and-twentieth year of Asa, king of Judah, and he reigned in his stead. And when he was king, and sat upon his throne, he slew all the house of Baasa, and he left not one thereof to piss against a wall, and all his kinfolks and friends. And Zambri destroyed all the house of Baasa, according to the word of the Lord that he had spoken to Baasa in the hand of Jehu the prophet, for all the sins of Baasa, and the sins of Elah his son, who sinned and made Israel to sin, provoking the Lord the God of Israel with their vanities. But the rest of the acts of Elah, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Israel? In the seven and twentieth year of Asa, king of Judah, Zambri reigned seven days in Thersa. Now the army was besieging Gabethan, a city of the Philistines, and when they heard that Zambri had rebelled and slain the king, all Israel made Amri their king, who was general over Israel in the camp that day. And Amri went up, and all Israel with him, from Gabethan, and they besieged Thirza. And Zambri, seeing that the city was about to be taken, went into the palace and burnt himself with the king's house and he died in his sins, which he had sinned, doing evil before the Lord, and walking in the way of Jeroboam, and in his sin, wherewith he made Israel to sin. But the rest of the acts of Zambri, and of his conspiracy and tyranny, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Israel? Then were the people of Israel divided into two parts. One half of the people followed Thebni, the son of Geneth, to make him king, and one half followed Amri. But the people that were with Amri prevailed over the people that followed Thebni, the son of Geneth, and Thebni died, and Amri reigned. In the one and thirtieth year of Asa, king of Judah, Amri reigned over Israel twelve years. In Thersa he reigned six years. And he bought the hill of Samaria of Semer for two talents of silver, and he built upon it, and he called the city which he built Samaria, after the name of Semer, the owner of the hill. And Amri did evil in the sight of the Lord and acted wickedly above all that were before him. And he walked in all the way of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, and in his sins wherewith he made Israel to sin, to provoke the Lord the God of Israel to anger with their vanities. Now the rest of the acts of Amri, and the battles he fought, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Israel? And Amri slept with his fathers, and was buried in Samaria. And Achab his son reigned in his stead. Now Achab the son of Amri reigned over Israel in the eight and thirtieth year of Asa king of Judah. And Achab the son of Amri reigned over Israel in Samaria two and twenty years. And Achab the son of Amri did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. Nor was it enough for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, but he also took to wife Jezebel, daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Sidonians. And he went and served Baal, and adored him. And he set up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal, 
which he had built in Samaria, and he planted a grove, and Achab did more to provoke the Lord the God of Israel than all the kings of Israel that were before him. In his days Hiel of Bethel built Jericho. In Abiram his firstborn he laid its foundations, and in his youngest son Segub he set up the gates thereof, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke in the hand of Josu, the son of Nun. End of chapter 16First King, chapters 17 through 22 of the Bible, Douay Rheims, 1899, American Edition. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 17 And Elias the Thesbite of the inhabitants of Galead said to Achab, as the Lord liveth, the God of Israel, in whose sight I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to the words of my mouth. And the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get thee hence, and go towards the east, and hide thyself by the torrent of Carith, which is over against the Jordan, and there thou shalt drink of the torrent, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, and going he dwelt by the torrent Carith, which is over against the Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the torrent. But after some time the torrent was dried up, for it had not rained upon the earth. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, and go to Serefta of the Sidonians, and dwell there. For I have commanded a widow woman there to feed thee. He arose, and went to Serefta, and when he was come to the gate of the city, he saw the widow woman gathering sticks, and he called her, and said to her, Give me a little water in a vessel that I may drink and when she was going to fetch it, he called after her, saying, Bring me also, I beseech thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she answered, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have no bread, but only a handful of meal in a pot, and a little oil in a cruise. Behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it, for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elias said to her, Fear not, but go and do as thou hast said. But first make for me of the same meal a little hearth cake, and bring it to me, and after make for thyself and thy son. For thus saith the Lord the God of Israel, The pot of meal shall not waste, nor the cruise of oil be diminished, until the day wherein the Lord will give rain upon the face of the earth. She went and did according to the word of Elias, and he ate, and she and her house, and from that day the pot of meal wasted not, and the cruise of oil was not diminished, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke in the hand of Elias. And it came to pass after this that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick, and the sickness was very grievous, so that there was no breath left in him. And she said to Elias, What have I to do with thee, thou man of God? Art thou come to me, that my iniquities should be remembered, and that thou shouldst kill my son? And Elias said to her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom, and carried him into the upper chamber where he abode, and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried to the Lord, and said, O Lord my God, hast thou afflicted also the widow 
with whom I am after a sort maintained, so as to kill her son? And he stretched, and measured himself upon the child three times, and cried to the Lord, and said, O Lord my God, let the soul of this child, I beseech thee, return into his body. And the Lord heard the voice of Elias, and the soul of the child returned into him, and he revived. And Elias took the child, and brought him down from the upper chamber to the house below, and delivered him to his mother, and said to her, Behold, thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elias, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and the word of the Lord in thy mouth is true. End of chapter 17 Chapter 18 After many days the word of the Lord came to Elias in the third year, saying, Go and show thyself to Achab, that I may give rain upon the face of the earth. And Elias went to show himself to Achab, and there was a grievous famine in Samaria. And Achab called Abdias the governor of his house. Now Abdias feared the Lord very much. For when Jezebel killed the prophets of the Lord, he took a hundred prophets, and hid them by fifty and fifty in caves, and fed them with bread and water. And Achab said to Abdias, Go into the land unto all fountains of waters, and into all valleys, to see if we can find grass, and save the horses and mules, that the beasts may not utterly perish. And they divided the countries between them, that they might go round about them. Achab went one way, and Abdias another way by himself. And as Abdias was in the way, Elias met him, and he knew him, and fell on his face, and said, Art thou my lord Elias? And he answered, I am. Go and tell thy master, Elias is here. And he said, What have I sinned, that thou wouldst deliver me, thy servant, into the hand of Achab, that he should kill me? As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom, whither my Lord hath not sent to seek thee. And when all answered, He is not here, he took an oath of every kingdom and nation, because thou wast not found. And now thou sayest to me, Go and tell thy master, Elias is here. And when I am gone from thee, the Spirit of the Lord will carry thee into a place that I know not, and I shall go in and tell Achab, and he, not finding thee, will kill me. But thy servant feareth the Lord from his infancy. Hath it not been told thee, my Lord, what I did when Jezebel killed the prophets of the Lord, how I hid a hundred men of the prophets of the Lord, by fifty and fifty in caves, and fed them with bread and water? And now thou sayest, Go and tell thy master, Elias is here, that he may kill me. And Elias said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whose face I stand, this day I will show myself unto him. Abdias therefore went to meet Achab, and told him, and Achab came to meet Elias. And when he had seen him, he said, Art thou he that troublest Israel? And he said, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, who have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and have followed Baalim. Nevertheless, send now, and gather unto me all Israel, unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal four hundred and fifty, and the prophets of the groves four hundred, who eat at Jezebel's table. Achab sent to all the children of Israel, and gathered together the prophets unto Mount Carmel. And Elias, coming to all the people, said, 
how long do you halt between two sides if the lord be god follow him but if baal then follow him and the people did not answer him a word and elias said again to the people i only remain a prophet of the lord but the prophets of baal are four hundred and fifty men let two bullocks be given us and let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it upon wood but put no fire under and i will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under it call ye on the names of your gods and i will call on the name of my lord and the god that shall answer by fire let him be god and all the people answering said a very good proposal then elias said to the prophets of baal choose you one bullock and dress it first because you are many and call on the names of your gods but put no fire under and they took the bullock which he gave them and dressed it and they called on the name of baal from morning even till noon saying o baal hear us but there was no voice nor any that answered and they leaped over the altar that they had made and when it was now noon elias jested at them saying cry with a louder voice for he is a god and perhaps he is talking or is in an inn or on a journey or perhaps he is asleep and must be awaked so they cried with a loud voice and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till they were all covered with blood and after midday was past and while they were prophesying the time was come of offering sacrifice and there was no voice heard nor did any one answer nor regard them as they prayed elias said to all the people come ye unto me and the people coming near unto him he repaired the altar of the lord that was broken down and he took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of jacob to whom the word of the lord came saying israel shall be thy name and he built with the stones an altar to the name of the lord and he made a trench for water of the breadth of two furrows round about the altar and he laid the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces and laid it upon the wood and he said fill four buckets with water and pour it upon the burnt offering and upon the wood and again he said do the same the second time and when they had done it the second time he said do the same also the third time and they did so the third time and the water run round about the altar and the trench was filled with water and when it was now time to offer the holocaust elias the prophet came near and said o lord god of abraham and isaac and israel show this day that thou art the god of israel and i thy servant and that according to thy commandment i have done all these things hear me o lord hear me that this people may learn that thou art the lord god and that thou hast turned their heart again then the fire of the lord fell and consumed the holocaust and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench and when all the people saw this they fell on their faces and they said the lord he is god the lord he is god and elias said to them take the prophets of baal and let not one of them escape and when they had taken them elias brought them down to the torrent kisson and killed them there and elias said to achab 
Go up, eat, and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Achab went up to eat and drink, and Elias went up to the top of Carmel, and casting himself down upon the earth, put his face between his knees, and he said to his servant, Go up, and look toward the sea. And he went up and looked, and said, There is nothing. And again he said to him, Return seven times. And at the seventh time, behold, a little cloud arose out of the sea, like a man's foot. And he said, Go up and say to Achab, Prepare thy chariot, and go down, lest the rain prevent thee. And while he turned himself this way and that way, behold, the heavens grew dark with clouds and wind, and there fell a great rain, and a cab, getting up, went away to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was upon Elias, and he girded up his loins and ran before a cab till he came to Jezreel. End of chapter 18 Chapter 19 And Achab told Jezebel all that Elias had done, and how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. And Jezebel sent a messenger to Elias, saying, Such and such things may the gods do to me, and add still more, if by this hour to-morrow I make not thy life as the life of one of them. Then Elias was afraid, and rising up he went whithersoever he had a mind, and he came to Berzebee of Judah, and left his servant there, and he went forward one day's journey into the desert. And when he was there and sat under a juniper tree, he requested for his soul that he might die, and said, It is enough for me, Lord, take away my soul, for I am no better than my father's. And he cast himself down and slept in the shadow of the juniper tree. And behold, an angel of the Lord touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. He looked, and behold, there was at his head a hearth cake and a vessel of water and he ate and drank, and he fell asleep again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time, and touched him, and said to him, Arise, eat, for thou hast yet a great way to go. And he arose, and ate, and drank, and walked in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights, unto the mount of God, Horeb. And when he was come thither, he abode in a cave, and behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, and he said to him, What dost thou here, Elias? And he answered, With zeal have I been zealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, they have thrown down thy altars, they have slain thy prophets with the sword and I alone am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said to him, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passeth, and a great and strong wind before the Lord, overthrowing the mountains and breaking the rocks in pieces. The Lord is not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, the Lord is not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake a fire, the Lord is not in the fire. And after the fire a whistling of a gentle air. And when Elias heard it, he covered his face with his mantle, and coming forth stood in the entering in of the cave, and behold a voice unto him, saying, What dost thou hear, Elias? And he answered, with zeal have I been zealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, they have destroyed thy altars, they have slain thy prophets with the sword, and I alone am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said to him, 
go and return on thy way through the desert to damascus and when thou art come thither thou shalt anoint heziel to be king over syria and thou shalt anoint jehu the son of namsi to be king over israel and elisius the son of saphat of abomula thou shalt anoint to be prophet in thy room and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall escape the sword of Heziel shall be slain by Jehu, and whosoever shall escape the sword of Jehu shall be slain by Elysius. And I will leave me seven thousand men in Israel, whose knees have not been bowed before Baal, and every mouth that hath not worshipped him kissing the hands and elias departing from thence found elisius the son of saphat ploughing with twelve yoke of oxen and he was one of them that were ploughing with twelve yoke of oxen and when elias came up to him he cast his mantle upon him and he forthwith left the oxen and ran after elias and said let me i pray thee kiss my father and my mother and then i will follow thee and he said to him, Go and return back, for that which was my part I have done to thee. And returning back from him, he took a yoke of oxen, and killed them, and boiled the flesh with the plough of the oxen, and gave to the people, and they ate. And rising up he went away, and followed Elias, and ministered to him. End of chapter 19 Chapter 20 And Benadad king of Syria gathered together all his host, and there were two and thirty kings with him, and horses and chariots, and going up he fought against Samaria, and besieged it. And sending messengers to Achab king of Israel into the city, he said, Thus saith Benadad, Thy silver and thy gold is mine, and thy wives and thy goodliest children are mine. And the king of Israel answered, According to thy word, my lord, O king, I am thine and all that I have. And the messengers came again and said, Thus saith Benadad, who sent us unto thee, thy silver and thy gold and thy wives and thy children thou shalt deliver up to me to-morrow therefore at this same hour i will send my servants to thee and they shall search thy house and the houses of thy servants and all that pleaseth them they shall put in their hands and take away and the king of israel called all the ancients of the land and said mark and see that he layeth snares for us. For he sent to me for my wives, and for my children, and for my silver and gold, and I said, Not nay. And all the ancients and all the people said to him, Hearken not to him, nor consent to him. Wherefore he answered the messengers of Benadad, Tell my lord the king, all that thou didst send for to me thy servant at first i will do but this thing i cannot do and the messengers returning brought him word and he sent again and said such and such things may the gods do to me and more may they add if the dust of samaria shall suffice for handfuls for all the people that follow me and the king of Israel answering said, Tell him, Let not the girded boast himself as the ungirded. And it came to pass, when Benadad heard this word, that he and the kings were drinking in pavilions. And he said to his servants, Beset the city, and they beset it. And behold, a prophet coming to Achab king of Israel said to him, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou seen all this exceeding great multitude? Behold, I will deliver them into thy hand this day, that thou mayest know that I am the Lord. 
And Achab said, By whom? And he said to him, Thus saith the Lord, By the servants of the princes of the provinces. And he said, Who shall begin to fight? And he said, Thou. So he mustered the servants of the princes of the provinces, and he found the number of two hundred and thirty-two, and he mustered after them the people, all the children of Israel, seven thousand. And they went out at noon, but Benadab was drinking himself drunk in his pavilion, and the two and thirty kings with him, who were come to help him. And the servants of the princes of the provinces went out first, and Benadad sent, and they told him, saying, There are men come out of Samaria. And he said, Whether they come for peace, take them alive, or whether they come to fight, take them alive. So the servants of the princes of the provinces went out, and the rest of the army followed. And every one slew the man that came against him, and the Syrians fled, and Israel pursued after them, and Benadad king of Syria fled away on horseback with his horsemen. But the king of Israel going out overthrew the horses and chariots, and slew the Syrians with a great slaughter. And a prophet coming to the king of Israel said to him, Go and strengthen thyself, and know, and see what thou dost, for the next year the king of Syria will come up against thee. But the servants of the king of Syria said to him, Their gods are gods of the hills, therefore they have overcome us, but it is better that we should fight against them in the plains, and we shall overcome them. Do thou therefore this thing, Remove all the kings from thy army, and put captains in their stead, and make up the number of soldiers that have been slain of thine, and horses according to the former horses, and chariots according to the chariots which thou hadst before, and we will fight against them in the plains, and thou shalt see that we shall overcome them. He believed their counsel, and did so. Wherefore, at the return of the year, Benadad mustered the Syrians, ancient up to Aphek, to fight against Israel. And the children of Israel were mustered, and taking victuals, went out on the other side, and camped over against them, like two little flocks of goats. But the Syrians filled the land, and a man of God coming said to the king of Israel, Thus saith the Lord, because the Syrians have said, The Lord is God of the hills, but is not God of the valleys. I will deliver all this great multitude into thy hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord. And both sides set their armies in array, one against the other, seven days, and on the seventh day the battle was fought, and the children of Israel slew of the Syrians a hundred thousand footmen in one day. And they that remained fled to Aphek into the city, and the wall fell upon seven and twenty thousand men that were left. And Benadad fleeing went into the city, into a chamber that was within a chamber, and his servants said to him, Behold, we have heard that the kings of the house of Israel are merciful, so let us put sackcloth on our loins, and ropes on our heads, and go out to the king of Israel. Perhaps he will save our lives. So they girded sackcloth on their loins, and put ropes on their heads, and came to the king of Israel, and said to him, Thy servant Benadad saith, I beseech thee, let me have my life. And he said, If he be yet alive, he is my brother. The men took this for a sign, and in haste caught the word out of his mouth, and said, Thy brother Benadad. And he said to them, Go and bring him to me. Then Benadad came out to him, and he lifted him up into his chariot. 
And he said to him, The cities which my father took from thy father I will restore, and do thou make these streets in Damascus, as my father made in Samaria, and having made a league I will depart from thee. So he made a league with him, and let him go. Then a certain man of the sons of the prophets said to his companion in the word of the Lord, Strike me, but he would not strike. Then he said to him, Because thou wouldst not hearken to the word of the Lord, Behold, then shalt depart from me, and a lion shall slay thee. And when he was gone a little from him, a lion found him and slew him. Then he found another man, and said to him, Strike me! And he struck him, and wounded him. So the prophet went, and met the king in the way, and disguised himself by sprinkling dust on his face and his eyes. And as the king passed by, he cried to the king, and said, Thy servant went out to fight hand to hand, and when a certain man was run away, one brought him to me, and said, Keep this man, and if he shall slip away, thy life shall be for his life, or thou shalt pay a talent of silver. And whilst I in a hurry turned this way and that, on a sudden he was not to be seen. And the king of Israel said to him, This is thy judgment which thyself hast decreed. But he forthwith, wiped off the dust from his face, and the king of Israel knew him, that he was one of the prophets. And he said to him, Thus saith the Lord, Because thou hast let go out of thy hand a man worthy of death, thy life shall be for his life, and thy people for his people. And the king of Israel returned to his house, slighting to hear, and raging, came into Samaria. End of chapter 20 Chapter 21 And after these things Naboth the Jezreelite, who was in Jezreel, had at that time a vineyard near the palace of Achab, king of Samaria. And Achab spoke to Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may make me a garden of herbs, because it is nigh and adjoining to my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard, or if thou think it more convenient for thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. Naboth answered him, The Lord be merciful to me, and not let me give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And Achab came into his house angry and fretting, because of the word that Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him, saying, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And casting himself upon his bed, he turned away his face to the wall, and would eat no bread. And Jezebel his wife went in to him, and said to him, What is the matter that thy soul is so grieved, and why eatest thou no bread? And he answered her, I spoke to Naboth the Jezreelite, and said to him, Give me thy vineyard, and take money for it, or, if it please thee, I will give thee a better vineyard for it. And he said, I will not give thee my vineyard. Then Jezebel his wife said to him, Thou art of great authority indeed, and governest well the kingdom of Israel. Arise, and eat bread, and be of good cheer. I will give thee the vineyard of Neboth the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Achab's name, and sealed them with his ring, and sent them to the ancients, and the chief men that were in his city, and that dwelt with Neboth. And this was the tenor of the letters. Proclaim a fast, and make Naboth sit among the chief of the people. And suborn two men, sons of Belial, against him, and let them bear false witness, that he hath blasphemed God and the king, and then carry him out and stone him, and so let him die. 
and the men of his city, the ancients and nobles that dwelt with him in the city, did as Jezebel had commanded them, and as it was written in the letters which she had sent to them, they proclaimed a fast, and made Naboth sit among the chief of the people. And bringing two men, sons of the devil, they made them sit against him, and they, like men of the devil, bore witness against him before the people, saying, Naboth hath blasphemed God and the king. Wherefore they brought him forth without the city, and stoned him to death. And they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. And it came to pass, when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and dead, that she said to Achab, Rise and take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, who would not agree with thee, and give it thee for money. For Naboth is not alive, but dead. And when Achab heard this, to wit, that Naboth was dead, he arose and went down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite to take possession of it. And the word of the Lord came to Elias the Thesbite, saying, Arise, and go down to meet Achab, king of Israel, who is in Samaria. Behold, he is going down to the vineyard of Naboth to take possession of it. And thou shalt speak to him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Thou hast slain, moreover also thou hast taken possession. And after these words thou shalt add, Thus saith the Lord, In this place wherein the dogs have licked the blood of Naboth, they shall lick thy blood also. And Achab said to Elias, Hast thou found me thy enemy? He said, I have found thee, because thou art sold to do evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring evil upon thee, and I will cut down thy posterity, and I will kill of Achab him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up, and the last in Israel. And I will make thy house like the house of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasa the son of Ahias. For what thou hast done to provoke me to anger, and for making Israel to sin. And of Jezebel also the Lord spoke, saying, The dogs shall eat Jezebel in the field of Jezreel. If a cab die in the city, the dogs shall eat him, but if he die in the field, the birds of the air shall eat him. Now there was not such another as Achab, who was sold to do evil in the sight of the Lord, for his wife Jezebel set him on, and he became abominable, insomuch that he followed the idols which the Amorites had made, whom the Lord destroyed before the face of the children of Israel. And when Achab had heard these words, he rent his garments, and put hair-cloth upon his flesh, and fasted and slept in sackcloth, and walked with his head cast down. And the word of the Lord came to Elias the Thesbite, saying, Hast thou not seen Achab humbled before me? Therefore, because he hath humbled himself for my sake, I will not bring the evil in his days, but in his son's days will I bring the evil upon his house. End of chapter 21 Chapter 22 And there passed three years without war between Syria and Israel, and in the third year Josephat king of Judah came down to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said to his servants, Know ye not that Ramoth Gilead is ours, and we neglect to take it out of the hand of the king of Syria? And he said to Josephat, Wilt thou come with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? And Josephat said to the king of Israel, As I am, so art thou, my people and thy people are one. 
and my horsemen thy horsemen. And Josephat said to the king of Israel, Inquire, I beseech thee this day, the word of the Lord. Then the king of Israel assembled the prophets, about four hundred men, and he said to them, Shall I go to remote Gilead to fight, or shall I forbear? They answered, Go up, and the Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. And Josephat said, Is there not here some prophet of the Lord that we may inquire by him? And the king of Israel said to Josephat, There is one man left by whom we may inquire of the Lord, Micchaeus, the son of Jemla. But I hate him, for he doth not prophesy good to me, but evil. And Josephat said, Speak not so, O king. Then the king of Israel called an eunuch, and said to him, Make haste, and bring hither Micchaeus the son of Jemla. Then the king of Israel and Josephat king of Judah sat each on his throne, clothed with royal robes, in a court by the entrance of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. And Sidicius, the son of Canaana, made himself horns of iron, and said, Thus saith the Lord, With these shalt thou push Syria till thou destroy it. And all the prophets prophesied in like manner, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord will deliver it into the king's hands. And the messenger that went to call Micchaeus spoke to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets with one mouth declare good things to the king. Let thy word therefore be like to theirs, and speak that which is good. But Micchaeus said to him, As the Lord liveth, whatsoever the Lord shall say to me, that will I speak. So he came to the king, and the king said to him, Micchaeus, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? He answered him, Go up and prosper, and the Lord shall deliver it into the king's hands. But the king said to him, I adjure thee again and again, that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills like sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let every man of them return to his house in peace. Then the king of Israel said to Josephat, Did I not tell thee that he prophesieth no good to me, but always evil? And he added and said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the army of heaven standing by him on the right hand and on the left. And the Lord said, Who shall deceive Achab king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one spoke words of this manner, and another otherwise. And there came forth a spirit, and stood before the Lord, and said, I will deceive him. And the Lord said to him, By what means? And he said, I will go forth and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt deceive him, and shalt prevail. Go forth and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath given a lying spirit in the mouth of all thy prophets that are here, and the Lord hath spoken evil against thee. And Sidicius, the son of Canaana, came, and struck Micchaeus on the cheek, and said, Hath then the Spirit of the Lord left me, and spoken to thee? And Micchaeus said, Thou shalt see in the day when thou shalt go into a chamber within a chamber, to hide thyself. And the king of Israel said, Take Micchaeus, and let him abide with Ammon the governor of the city and with Joaz the son of Amalek, and tell them, Thus saith the king, Put this man in prison, and feed him with bread of affliction, and water of distress, till I return in peace. 
And Micchaeus said, If thou return in peace, the Lord hath not spoken by me. And he said, Hear, all ye people. So the king of Israel and Josaphat king of Judah went up to remote Galead. And the king of Israel said to Josaphat, Take armor, and go into the battle, and put on thy own garments. But the king of Israel changed his dress, and went into the battle. And the king of Syria had commanded the two and thirty captains of the chariots, saying, You shall not fight against any, small or great, but against the king of Israel only. So when the captains of the chariots saw Josaphat, they suspected that he was the king of Israel, and making a violent assault, they fought against him, and Josaphat cried out. And the captains of the chariots perceived that he was not the king of Israel, and they turned away from him. And a certain man bent his bow, shooting at a venture, and chanced to strike the king of Israel between the lungs and the stomach. But he said to the driver of his chariot, Turn thy hand, and carry me out of the army, for I am grievously wounded. And the battle was fought that day, and the king of Israel stood in his chariot against the Syrians, and he died in the evening. And the blood ran out of the wound into the midst of the chariot. And the herald proclaimed through all the army before the sun set, saying, let every man return to his own city and to his own country. And the king died and was carried into Samaria, and they buried the king in Samaria. And they washed his chariot in the pool of Samaria, and the dogs licked up his blood, and they washed the reins according to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken. But the rest of the acts of Achab and all that he did and the house of ivory that he made, and all the cities that he built, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Israel? So Achab slept with his fathers, and Ocosius his son reigned in his stead. But Josaphat the son of Asa began to reign over Judah in the fourth year of Achab king of Israel. He was five and thirty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned five and twenty years in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Azuba, the daughter of Salai. And he walked in all the way of Asa his father, and he declined not from it, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Nevertheless he took not away the high places, for as set the people offered sacrifices and burnt incense in the high places. And Josaphat had peace with the king of Israel. But the rest of the acts of Josaphat, and his works which he did, and his battles, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Judah? And the remnant also of the effeminate, who remained in the days of Asa his father, he took out of the land. And there was then no king appointed in Edom. But King Josaphat made navies on the sea to sail into Ophir for gold, but they could not go, for the ships were broken in Aziangaber. Then Ocosius the son of Achab said to Josaphat, Let my servants go with thy servants in the ships. And Josaphat would not. And Josaphat slept with his fathers, and was buried with them in the city of David his father. And Joram his son reigned in his stead. And Ocosius the son of Achab began to reign over Israel in Samaria in the seventeenth year of Josaphat king of Judah. And he reigned over Israel two years, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of his father and his mother, and in the way of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. He served also Baal, and worshipped him, and provoked the Lord the God of Israel 
according to all that his father had done. End of chapter 22《2 Kings》Chapters 1 through 10 of the Bible, Douay Rheims, 1899 American Edition. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 1 And Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Achab, and Ocosius fell through the lattices of his upper chamber which he had in Samaria, and was sick. And he sent messengers, saying to them, Go, consult Beelzebub, the god of Acharon, whether I shall recover of this my illness. And an angel of the Lord spoke to Elias the Thesbite, saying, Arise, and go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say to them, is there not a god in Israel, that ye go to consult Beelzebub, the god of Acheron? Wherefore thus saith the Lord, From the bed on which thou art gone up, thou shalt not come down, but thou shalt surely die. And Elias went away. And the messengers turned back to Ochosius, and he said to them, Why are you come back? But they answered him, a man met us, and said to us, Go and return to the king that sent you, and you shall say to him, Thus saith the Lord, Is it because there was no god in Israel that thou sendest to Beelzebub, the god of Acheron? Therefore thou shalt not come down from the bed on which thou art gone up, but then shalt surely die. And he said to them, what manner of man was he who met you and spoke these words? But they said, A hairy man with a girdle of leather about his loins. And he said, It is Elias the Thesbite. And he sent to him a captain of fifty, and the fifty men that were under him. And he went up to him, and as he was sitting on the top of a hill, said to him, Man of God, the king hath commanded that thou come down. And Elias answering said to the captain of fifty, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee in thy fifty. And there came down fire from heaven, and consumed him and the fifty that were with him. And again he sent to him another captain of fifty men, and his fifty with him. And he said to him, Man of God, thus saith the king, Make haste, and come down. Elias answering said, If I be a man of God, Let fire come down from heaven, And consume thee and thy fifty. And fire came down from heaven, And consumed him and his fifty. Again he sent a third captain of fifty men, And the fifty that were with him, and when he was come, he fell upon his knees before Elias, and besought him, and said, Man of God, despise not my life, and the lives of thy servants that are with me. Behold, fire came down from heaven, and consumed two first captains of fifty men, and the fifties that were with them. But now I beseech thee to spare my life. And the angel of the Lord spoke to Elias, saying, Go down with him, fear not. He arose, therefore, and went down with him to the king, and said to him, Thus saith the Lord, Because thou hast sent messengers to consult Beelzebub, the god of Acharon, as though there were not a god in Israel, of whom thou mightest inquire the word, therefore from the bed on which thou art gone up Thou shalt not come down, but thou shalt surely die. So he died according to the word of the Lord which Elias spoke. And Joram his brother reigned in his stead, in the second year of Joram the son of Josephat, king of Judah, because he had no son. But the rest of the acts of Ocosius, which he did, 
are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Israel? End of chapter 1 Chapter 2 And it came to pass, when the Lord would take up Elias into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elias and Elysius were going from Galgal. And Elias said to Elysius, Stay thou here, because the Lord hath sent me as far as Bethel. And Elysius said to him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And when they were come down to Bethel, the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elysius, and said to him, Dost thou know that this day the Lord will take away thy master from thee? And he answered, I also know it. Hold your peace. And Elias said to Elysius, Stay here, because the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And when they were come to Jericho, the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elysius and said to him, Dost thou know that this day the Lord will take away thy master from thee? And he said, I also know it, hold your peace. And Elias said to him, Stay here, because the Lord hath sent me as far as the Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they two went on together, and fifty men of the sons of the prophets followed them, and stood in sight at a distance, but they too stood by the Jordan. And Elias took his mantle and folded it together, and struck the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, and they both passed over on dry ground. And when they were gone over, Elias said to Elysius, Ask what thou wilt have me do for thee, before I be taken away from thee. And Elysius said, I beseech thee, that in me may be thy double spirit. And he answered, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, thou shalt have what thou hast asked. But if thou see me not, thou shalt not have it. And as they went on, walking and talking together, behold, a fiery chariot and fiery horses parted them both asunder, and Elias went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elysius saw him and cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the driver thereof. And he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own garments and rent them in two pieces. And he took up the mantle of Elias that fell from him, and going back he stood upon the bank of the Jordan, and he struck the waters with the mantle of Elias that had fallen from him, and they were not divided. And he said, Where is now the God of Elias? And he struck the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, and Elysius passed over. And the sons of the prophets at Jericho, who were over against him, seeing it, said, The spirit of Elias hath rested upon Elysius. And coming to meet him, they worshipped him, falling to the ground. And they said to him, Behold, there are with thy servants fifty strong men that can go and seek thy master, lest perhaps the spirit of the Lord hath taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. And he said, Do not send. But they pressed him till he consented, and said, Send. And they sent fifty men, and they sought three days, but found him not. And they came back to him, for he abode at Jericho, and he said to them, Did I not say to you, Do not send? And the men of the city said to Elysius, Behold, the situation of this city is very good, as thou, my lord, seest. But the waters are very bad, and the ground barren. And he said, 
bring me a new vessel and put salt into it and when they had brought it he went out to the spring of the waters and cast the salt into it and said thus saith the lord i have healed these waters and there shall be no more in them death or barrenness and the waters were healed unto this day according to the word of elysius which he spoke and he went up from thence to bethel and as he was going up by the way little boys came out of the city and mocked him saying go up thou bald head go up thou bald head and looking back he saw them and cursed them in the name of the lord and there came forth two bears out of the forest and tore of them two and forty boys and from thence he went to mount carmel and from thence he returned to samaria end of chapter two chapter three and joram the son of achab reigned over israel in samaria in the eighteenth year of josaphat king of judah and he reigned twelve years and he did evil before the lord but not like his father and his mother for he took away the statues of baal which his father had made nevertheless he stuck to the sins of jeroboam the son of nebat who made israel to sin nor did he depart from them now meza king of moab nourished many sheep and he paid to the king of israel a hundred thousand lambs and a hundred thousand rams with their fleeces and when achab was dead he broke the league which he had made with the king of israel and king joram went out that day from samaria and mustered all israel and he sent to josaphat king of judah saying the king of moab is revolted from me come with me against him to battle and he answered i will come up he that is mine is thine my people thy people and my horses thy horses and he said which way shall we go up but he answered by the desert of edom so the king of israel and the king of judah and the king of edom went and they fetched a compass of seven days journey and there was no water for the army and for the beasts that followed them and the king of israel said alas 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 the lord hath gathered us three kings together to deliver us into the hands of moab and josaphat said is there not here a prophet of the lord that we may beseech the lord by him and one of the servants of the king of israel answered here is elisius the son of saphat who poured water on the hands of elias and josaphat said the word of the lord is with him and the king of israel and josaphat king of judah and the king of edom went down to him and elisius said to the king of israel what have i to do with thee go to the prophets of thy father and thy mother and the king of israel said to him why hath the lord gathered together these three kings to deliver them into the hands of moab and elisius said to him as the lord of hosts liveth in whose sight i stand if i did not reverence the face of josaphat king of judah i would not have hearkened to thee nor looked on thee but now bring me hither a minstrel and when the minstrel played the hand of the lord came upon him and he said thus saith the lord make the channel of this torrent full of ditches for thus saith the lord you shall not see wind nor rain and yet this channel shall be filled with waters and you shall drink you and your families and your beasts and this is a small thing in the sight of the lord moreover he will deliver also moab into your hands and you shall destroy every fenced city 
and every choice city, and shall cut down every fruitful tree, and shall stop up all the springs of waters, and every goodly field you shall cover with stones. And it came to pass in the morning when the sacrifices used to be offered, that, behold, water came by the way of Edom, and the country was filled with water. And all the Moabites, hearing that the kings were come up to fight against them, gathered together all that were girded with a belt upon them, and stood in the borders. And they rose early in the morning, and the sun being now up, and shining upon the waters, the Moabites saw the waters over against them red like blood, and they said, It is the blood of the sword. The kings have fought among themselves, and they have killed one another. Go now, Moab, to the spoils. And they went into the camp of Israel. But Israel, rising up, defeated Moab, who fled before them and they being conquerors went and smote Moab. And they destroyed the cities, and they filled every goodly field, every man casting his stone. And they stopped up all the springs of waters, and cut down all the trees that bore fruit, so that brick walls only remained. And the city was beset by the slingers, and a great part thereof destroyed. And when the king of Moab saw this, to wit, that the enemies had prevailed, he took with him seven hundred men that drew the sword, to break in upon the king of Edom, but they could not. Then he took his eldest son that should have reigned in his stead, and offered him for a burnt offering upon the wall. And there was great indignation in Israel, and presently they departed from him, and returned into their own country. End of chapter 3 Chapter 4 Now a certain woman of the wives of the prophets cried to Elysius, saying, Thy servant my husband is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant was one that feared God, and behold, the creditor is come to take away my two sons to serve him. And Elysius said to her, What wilt thou have me to do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in thy house? And she answered, I, thy handmaid, have nothing in my house but a little oil to anoint me. And he said to her, Go, borrow of all thy neighbors empty vessels, not a few, and go in, and shut thy door, when thou art within, and thy sons, and pour out thereof into all those vessels, and when they are full, take them away. So the woman went, and shut the door upon her, and upon her sons. They brought her the vessels, and she poured in. And when the vessels were full, she said to her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he answered, I have no more and the oil stood. And she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay thy creditor, and thou and thy sons live of the rest. And there was a day when Elysius passed by Sunam. Now there was a great woman there who detained him to eat bread, and as he passed often that way, he turned into her house to eat bread. And she said to her husband, I perceive that this is a holy man of God who often passeth by us. Let us therefore make him a little chamber, and put a little bed in it for him, and a table, and a stool, and a candlestick, that when he cometh to us he may abide there. Now there was a certain day when he came and turned into the chamber, and rested there. And he said to Geizi, his servant, call this Sunamites, and when he had called her, and she stood before him, he said to his servant, Say to her, Behold, thou hast diligently served us in all things, what wilt thou have me to do for thee? 
hast thou any business and wilt thou that i speak to the king or to the general of the army and she answered i dwell in the midst of my own people and he said what will she then that i do for her and geezi said do not ask for she hath no son and her husband is old then he bid him call her and when she was called and stood before the door he said to her at this time and this same hour if life accompany thou shalt have a son in thy womb but she answered do not i beseech thee my lord thou man of god do not lie to thy handmaid and the woman conceived and brought forth a son in the time and at the same hour that elicius had said and the child grew and on a certain day when he went out to his father to the reapers he said to his father my head acheth my head acheth but he said to his servant take him and carry him to his mother and when he had taken him and brought him to his mother she set him on her knees until noon and then he died and she went up and laid him upon the bed of the man of god and shut the door and going out she called her husband and said send with me i beseech thee one of thy servants and an ass that i may run to the man of god and come again and he said to her why dost thou go to him to-day is neither new moon nor sabbath she answered i will go and she saddled an ass and commanded her servant drive and make haste make no stay in going and do that which i bid thee so she went forward and came to the man of god to mount carmel and when the man of god saw her coming towards he said to geezi his servant behold that synamitis go therefore to meet her and say to her is all well with thee and with thy husband and with thy son and she answered well and when she came to the man of God to the mount, she caught hold on his feet, and Geezi came to remove her. And the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is in anguish, and the Lord hath hid it from me, and hath not told me. And she said to him, Did I ask a son of my Lord? Did I not say to thee, Do not deceive me? Then he said to Geezi, gird up thy loins and take my staff in thy hand and go if any man meet thee salute him not and if any man salute thee answer him not and lay my staff upon the face of the child but the mother of the child said as the lord liveth and as thy soul liveth i will not leave thee he arose therefore and followed her but geezi was gone before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child and there was no voice nor sense and he returned to meet him and told him saying the child is not risen elysius therefore went into the house and behold the child lay dead on his bed and going in he shut the door upon him and upon the child and prayed to the lord and he went up and lay upon the child, and he put his mouth upon his mouth, and his eyes upon his eyes, and his hands upon his hands, and he bowed himself upon him, and the child's flesh grew warm. Then he returned and walked in the house, once to and fro, and he went up and lay upon him, and the child gaped seven times, and opened his eyes. And he called Geezi, and said to him, Call this Sinamites. And she being called went in to him, and he said, Take up thy son. She came and fell at his feet, and worshipped upon the ground, and took up her son, and went out. And Elysius returned to Galgal, and there was a famine in the land, and the sons of the prophets dwelt before him. And he said to one of his servants, 
set on the great pot, and boil pottage for the sons of the prophets. And one went out into the field to gather wild herbs, and he found something like a wild vine, and gathered of it wild gourds of the field, and filled his mantle, and coming back he shred them into the pot of pottage, for he knew not what it was. And they poured it out for their companions to eat, and when they had tasted of the pottage, they cried out, saying, Death is in the pot, O man of God, and they could not eat thereof. But he said, Bring some meal, and when they had brought it, he cast it into the pot, and said, Pour out for the people that they may eat. And there was now no bitterness in the pot. And a certain man came from Baal Silissa, bringing to the man of God bread of the first fruits, twenty leaves of barley, and new corn in his scrip. And he said, Give to the people that they may eat. And his servant answered him, How much is this that I should set it before a hundred men? He said again, Give to the people that they may eat. For thus saith the Lord, They shall eat, and there shall be left. So he set it before them, and they ate, and there was left according to the word of the Lord. End of chapter 4 Chapter 5 Naaman, general of the army of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, and honorable, for by him the Lord gave deliverance to Syria, and he was a valiant man and rich, but a leper. Now there had gone out robbers from Syria, and had led away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid, and she waited upon Naaman's wife. And she said to her mistress, I wish my master had been with the prophet that is in Samaria. He would certainly have healed him of the leprosy which he hath. Then Naaman went in to his lord and told him, saying, Thus and thus said the girl from the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said to him, Go, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel and he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes of raiment, and brought the letter to the king of Israel in these words, When thou shalt receive this letter, know that I have sent to thee Naaman my servant, that thou mayest heal him of his leprosy. And when the king of Israel had read the letter, he rent his garments and said, Am I God to be able to kill and give life that this man hath sent to me to heal a man of his leprosy? Mark, and see how he seeketh occasions against me. And when Elisius the man of God had heard this, to wit, that the king of Israel had rent his garments, he sent to him, saying, Why hast thou rent thy garments? Let him come to me, and let him know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots, and stood at the door of the house of Elisius. And Elisius sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash seven times in the Jordan, and thy flesh shall recover health, and thee shalt be clean. Naaman was angry and went away, saying, I thought he would have come out to me, and standing would have invoked the name of the Lord his God, and touched with his hand the place of the leprosy, and healed me. Are not the Abana and the Farfar rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel, that I may wash in them and be made clean? So as he turned and was going away with indignation, his servants came to him and said to him, Father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, surely thou shouldst have done it. How much rather what he now hath said to thee, Wash, and thou shalt be clean. Then he went down and washed in the Jordan seven times, according to the word of the man of God. 
and his flesh was restored, like the flesh of a little child, and he was made clean. And returning to the man of God with all his train, he came and stood before him, and said, In truth, I know there is no other God in all the earth, but only in Israel. I beseech thee, therefore, take a blessing of thy servant. But he answered, As the Lord liveth before whom I stand, I will receive none. And when he pressed him, he still refused. And Naaman said, As thou wilt, but I beseech thee, grant to me thy servant, to take from hence two mules' burden of earth, for thy servant will not henceforth offer holocaust or victim to other gods but to the Lord. But there is only this, for which thou shalt entreat the Lord for thy servant, when my master goeth into the temple of Ramon to worship, and he leaneth upon my hand, if I bow down in the temple of Rimon, when he boweth down in the same place, that the Lord pardon me thy servant for this thing. And he said to him, Go in peace. So he departed from him in the springtime of the earth. But Geezi, the servant of the man of God, said, My master hath spared Naaman this Syrian, in not receiving of him that which he brought. As the Lord liveth, I will run after him, and take something of him. And Geezi followed after Naaman, and when he saw him running after him, he leapt down from his chariot to meet him, and said, Is all well? And he said, Well, my master hath sent me to thee, saying, Just now there are come to me from Mount Ephraim, two young men of the sons of the prophets, give them a talent of silver, and two changes of garments. And Naaman said, It is better that thou take two talents. And he forced him, and bound two talents of silver in two bags, and two changes of garments, and laid them upon two of his servants, and they carried them before him. And when he was come, and now it was evening, he took them from their hands, and laid them up in the house, and sent the men away, and they departed. But he went in, and stood before his master. And Elysius said, Whence comest thou, Geezi? He answered, Thy servant went no whither. But he said, was not my heart present when the man turned back from his chariot to meet thee? So now thou hast received money, and received garments, to buy olive-yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen, and men-servants and maid-servants. But the leprosy of Naaman shall also stick to thee, and to thy seed for ever. And he went out from him a leper, as white as snow. End of chapter 5 Chapter 6 And the sons of the prophets said to Elysius, Behold, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go as far as the Jordan, and take out of the wood every man a piece of timber, that we may build us there a place to dwell in. And he said, Go. And one of them said, But come thou also with thy servants. He answered, I will come. So he went with them. And when they were come to the Jordan, they cut down wood. And it happened, as one was felling some timber, that the head of the axe fell into the water, and he cried out and said, Alas, 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 my lord! for this same was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where did it fall? And he showed him the place. Then he cut off a piece of wood, and cast it in thither, and the iron swam. And he said, Take it up. And he put out his hand, and took it. And the king of Syria warred against Israel, and took counsel with his servants, saying, in such and such a place let us lay ambushes, 
and the man of God sent to the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not to such a place, for the Syrians are there in ambush. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God had told him, and prevented him, and looked well to himself, there not once nor twice. And the heart of the king of Syria was troubled for this thing. And calling together his servants, he said, Why do you not tell me who it is that betrays me to the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, No one, my lord, O king, but Elishius the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel all the words that thou speakest in thy privy chamber. And he said to them, Go and see where he is, that I may send and take him. And they told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore he sent thither horses and chariots, and the strength of an army, and they came by night and beset the city. And the servant of the man of God rising early went out, and saw an army round about the city, and horses and chariots. And he told him, saying, Alas, 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 my lord, what shall we do? But he answered, Fear not, for there are more with us than with them. And Elishius prayed, and said, Lord, open his eyes, that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the servant, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elishius. And the enemies came down to him, but Elishius prayed to the Lord, saying, Strike, I beseech thee, this people, with blindness. And the Lord struck them with blindness, according to the word of Elishius. And Elishius said to them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will show you the man whom you seek. So he led them into Samaria. And when they were come into Samaria, Elishius said, Lord, open the eyes of these men, that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw themselves to be in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Israel said to Elishius, when he saw them, My father, shall I kill them? And he said, Thou shalt not kill them, for thou didst not take them with thy sword or thy bow, that thou mayst kill them, but set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink, and go to their master. And a great provision of meats was set before them, and they ate and drank, and he let them go, and they went away to their master, and the robbers of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. And it came to pass after these things, that Benadad king of Syria gathered together all his army, and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and so long did the siege continue, till the head of an ass was sold for fourscore pieces of silver, and the fourth part of a kebby of pigeon's dung for five pieces of silver. And as the king of Israel was passing by the wall, a certain woman cried out to him, saying, Save me, my lord, O king! And he said, If the Lord doth not save thee, how can I save thee? Out of the barn floor, or out of the wine-press? And the king said to her, What aileth thee? And she answered, This woman said to me, Give thy son, that we may eat him to-day, and we will eat my son to-morrow. So we boiled my son, and ate him, and I said to her on the next day, Give thy son, that we may eat him, and she hath hid her son. When the king heard this, he rent his garments, and passed by upon the wall, and all the people saw the hair-cloth which he wore within, next to his flesh. And the king said, May God do so and so to me, and may he add more, if the head of Elishius, 
the son of Sephat, shall stand on him this day. But Elisius sat in his house, and the ancients sat with him. So he sent a man before, and before that messenger came, he said to the ancients, Do you know that this son of a murderer hath sent to cut off my head? Look then, when the messenger shall come, shut the door, and suffer him not to come in. For behold, the sound of his master's feet is behind him. While he was yet speaking to them, the messenger appeared who was coming to him, and he said, Behold, so great an evil is from the Lord, what shall I look for more from the Lord? End of chapter 6 Chapter 7 And Elysius said, Hear ye the word of the Lord, thus saith the Lord. Tomorrow about this time a bushel of fine flour shall be sold for a statter, and two bushels of barley for a statter, in the gate of Samaria. Then one of the lords, upon whose hand the king leaned, answering the man of God, said, If the Lord should make floodgates in heaven, can that possibly be which thou sayest? And he said, Thou shalt see it with thy eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. Now there were four lepers at the entering in of the gate, and they said one to another, What mean we to stay here till we die? If we will enter into the city, we shall die with the famine, and if we will remain here, we must also die. Come, therefore, and let us run over to the camp of the Syrians. If they spare us, we shall live, but if they kill us, we shall but die. So they arose in the evening to go to the Syrian camp, and when they were come to the first part of the camp of the Syrians, they found no man there, for the Lord had made them hear in the camp of Syria the noise of chariots and of horses, and of a very great army. And they said one to another, Behold, the king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites, and of the Egyptians, and they are come upon us. Wherefore they arose, and fled away in the dark, and left their tents, and their horses and asses in the camp, and fled, desiring to save their lives. So when these lepers were come to the beginning of the camp, they went into one tent, and ate and drank, and they took from thence silver and gold and raiment, and went and hid it, and they came again and went into another tent, and carried from thence in like manner, and hid it. Then they said one to another, We do not well, for this is a day of good tidings. If we hold our peace, and do not tell it till the morning, we shall be charged with a crime. Come, let us go and tell it in the king's court. So they came to the gate of the city, and told them, saying, We went to the camp of the Syrians, and we found no man there but horses and asses tied, and the tents standing. Then the guards of the gate went, and told it within the king's palace. And he arose in the night, and said to his servants, I tell you what the Syrians have done to us. They know that we suffer great famine, and therefore they are gone out of the camp and lie hid in the fields, saying, When they come out of the city we shall take them alive, and then we may get into the city. And one of his servants answered, Let us take the five horses that are remaining in the city, because there are no more in the whole multitude of Israel, for the rest are consumed, and let us send and see. They brought therefore two horses, and the king sent into the camp of the Syrians, saying, Go and see. And they went after them as far as the Jordan, and behold, all the way was full of garments and vessels, which the Syrians had cast away in their fright, and the messengers returned and told the king. 
and the people going out pillaged the camp of the Syrians, and a bushel of fine flour was sold for a statter, and two bushels of barley for a statter, according to the word of the Lord. And the king appointed that lord on whose hand he leaned to stand at the gate, and the people trod upon him in the entrance of the gate, and he died, as the man of God had said when the king came down to him. And it came to pass according to the word of the man of God, which he spoke to the king when he said, Two bushels of barley shall be for a statter, and a bushel of fine flour for a statter, at this very time to-morrow in the gate of Samaria. When that Lord answered the man of God, and said, Although the Lord should make floodgates in heaven, could this come to pass which thou sayest? And he said to him, Thou shalt see with thy eyes, and shalt not eat thereof. And so it fell out to him as it was foretold, and the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died. End of chapter 7 Chapter 8 And Elishius spoke to the woman whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise, and go thou and thy household, and sojourn wheresoever thou canst find. For the Lord hath exiled a famine, and it shall come upon the land seven years. And she arose, and did according to the word of the man of God. And going with her household, she sojourned in the land of the Philistines many days. And when the seven years were ended, the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines, and she went forth to speak to the king for her house and for her lands. And the king talked with Gaizi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me all the great things that Elishius hath done. And when he was telling the king how he had raised one dead to life, the woman appeared, whose son he had restored to life crying to the king for her house and her lands. And Gaizi said, My lord, O king, this is the woman, and this is her son, whom Elishius raised to life. And the king asked the woman, and she told him. And the king appointed her an eunuch, saying, Restore her all that is hers, and all the revenues of the lands from the day that she left the land to this present. Elishius also came to Damascus, and Benadad king of Syria was sick, and they told him, saying, The man of God is come hither. And the king said to Haziel, Take with thee presents, and go to meet the man of God, and consult the Lord by him, saying, Can I recover of this my illness? And Haziel went to meet him, taking with him presents, and all the good things of Damascus, the burdens of forty camels. And when he stood before him, he said, Thy son Benadad the king of Syria hath sent me to thee, saying, Can I recover of this my illness? And Elishius said to him, Go tell him, Thou shalt recover. But the Lord hath shown me that he shall surely die. And he stood with him, and was troubled so far as to blush. And the man of God wept. And Haziel said to him, Why doth my Lord weep? And he said, Because I know the evil that thou wilt do to the children of Israel. Their strong cities then wilt burn with fire, and their young men thou wilt kill with the sword, and thou wilt dash their children, and rip up their pregnant women. And Haziel said, But what am I, thy servant, a dog, that I should do this great thing? And Elishius said, The Lord hath shown me that thou shalt be king of Syria. 
and when he was departed from elicius he came to his master who said to him what saith elicius to thee and he answered he told me thou shalt recover and on the next day he took a blanket and poured water on it and spread it upon his face and he died and hazael reigned in his stead in the fifth year of joram son of achab king of israel and of josaphat king of judah reigned joram son of josaphat king of judah he was two and thirty years old when he began to reign and he reigned eight years in jerusalem and he walked in the ways of the kings of israel as the house of achab had walked for the daughter of achab was his wife and he did that which was evil in the sight of the lord but the lord would not destroy judah for david his servant's sake as he had promised him to give him a light and to his children always in his days edom revolted from being under judah and made themselves a king and joram came to sira and all the chariots with him and he arose in the night and defeated the edomites that had surrounded him and the captains of the chariots but the people fled into their tents so edom revolted from being under judah unto this day then lobna also revolted at the same time but the rest of the acts of joram and all that he did are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of judah and joram slept with his fathers and was buried with them in the city of david and Ocosius his son reigned in his stead in the twelfth year of joram son of achab king of israel reigned Ocosius son of joram king of judah Ocosius was two and twenty years old when he began to reign and he reigned one year in jerusalem the name of his mother was athaliah the daughter of amri king of israel and he walked in the ways of the house of achab and he did evil before the lord as did the house of achab for he was the son-in-law of the house of achab he went also with joram son of achab to fight against haziel king of syria in remoth gilead and the syrians wounded joram and he went back to be healed in jezreel because the syrians had wounded him in ramoth when he fought against haziel king of syria and ocosius the son of joram king of judah went down to visit joram the son of achab in jezreel because he was sick there end of chapter eight chapter nine and elicius the prophet called one of the sons of the prophets and said to him gird up thy loins and take this little bottle of oil in thy hand and go to ramoth gilead and when thou art come thither thou shalt see jehu the son of josaphat the son of namsi and going in thou shalt make him rise up from amongst his brethren and carry him into an inner chamber then taking the little bottle of oil thou shalt pour it on his head and shalt say thus saith the lord i have anointed thee king over israel and thou shalt open the door and flee and shalt not stay there so the young man the servant of the prophet went away to ramoth gilead and went in thither and behold the captains of the army were sitting and he said i have a word to thee o prince and jehu said unto whom of us all and he said to thee o prince and he arose and went into the chamber and he poured the oil upon his head and said thus saith the lord god of israel 
I have anointed thee king over Israel, the people of the Lord. And thou shalt cut off the house of Achab thy master, and I will revenge the blood of my servants the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel. And I will destroy all the house of Achab, and I will cut off from Achab him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up, and the meanest in Israel. And I will make the house of Achab like the house of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, and like the house of Baasa the son of Ahias. And the dogs shall eat Jezebel in the field of Jezreel, and there shall be no one to bury her. And he opened the door and fled. Then Jehu went forth to the servants of his lord, and they said to him, Are all things well? Why came this mad man to thee? And he said to them, You know the man, and what he said. But they answered, It is false, but rather do thou tell us. And he said to them, Thus and thus did he speak to me. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Then they made haste, and taking every man his garment, laid it under his feet, after the manner of a judgment seat, and they sounded the trumpet, and said, Jehu is king. So Jehu the son of Josaphat, the son of Namsi, conspired against Joram. Now Joram had besieged Ramoth Galead, he and all Israel fighting with Haziel, king of Syria, and was returned to be healed in Jezreel of his wounds, for the Syrians had wounded him when he fought with Haziel, king of Syria. And Jehu said, If it please you, let no man go forth or flee out of the city, lest he go and tell in Jezreel. And he got up and went into Jezreel, for Joram was sick there, and Ocosius, king of Judah, was come down to visit Joram. The watchmen, therefore, that stood upon the tower of Jezreel, saw the troop of Jehu coming, and said, I see a troop. And Joram said, Take a chariot and send to meet them, and let him that goeth say, Is all well? So there went one in a chariot to meet him, and said, Thus saith the king, Are all things peaceable? And Jehu said, What hast thou to do with peace? Go behind and follow me. And the watchman told, saying, The messenger came to them, but he returneth not and he sent a second chariot of horses, and he came to them and said, Thus saith the king, Is there peace? And Jehu said, What hast thou to do with peace? Pass, and follow me. And the watchman told, saying, He came even to them, but returneth not. And the driving is like the driving of Jehu, the son of Namsi, for he drives furiously. And Joram said, Make ready the chariot. And they made ready his chariot, and Joram king of Israel, and Ocosius king of Judah went out, each in his chariot. And they went out to meet Jehu, and met him in the field of Naboth the Jezreelite. And when Joram saw Jehu, he said, Is there peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace? So long as the fornications of Jezebel thy mother and her many sorceries are in their vigor. And Joram turned his hand, and fleeing, said to Ocosius, There is treachery, Ocosius. But Jehu bent his bow with his hand, and shot Joram between the shoulders, and the arrow went out through his heart, and immediately he fell in his chariot. And Jehu said to Bedaker his captain, Take him and cast him into the field of Naboth the Jezreelite. 
for I remember when I and thou sitting in a chariot followed a cab, this man's father, that the Lord laid this burden upon him, saying, If I do not requite thee in this field, saith the Lord, for the blood of Naboth, and for the blood of his children which I saw yesterday, saith the Lord, so now take him, and cast him into the field, according to the word of the Lord. But Ocosius, king of Judah, seeing this, fled by the way of the garden house, and Jehu pursued him, and said, Strike him also in his chariot. And they struck him in the going up to Gever, which is by Jebleam, and he fled into Megiddo, and died there. And his servants laid him upon his chariot, and carried him to Jerusalem, and they buried him in his sepulchre with his fathers in the city of David. In the eleventh year of Joram the son of Achab, Ocosius reigned over Judah, and Jehu came into Jezreel. But Jezebel, hearing of his coming in, painted her face with stivic stone, and adorned her head, and looked out of a window at Jehu coming in at the gate, and said, Can there be peace for Zambri that hath killed his master? And Jehu lifted up his face to the window, and said, Who is this? And two or three eunuchs bowed down to him. And he said to them, Throw her down headlong. And they threw her down, and the wall was sprinkled with her blood, and the hoofs of the horses trod upon her. And when he was come in to eat and to drink, he said, Go and see after that cursed woman, and bury her, because she is a king's daughter. And when they went to bury her, they found nothing but the skull and the feet and the extremities of her hands. And coming back they told him, and Jehu said, it is the word of the Lord which he spoke by his servant Elias the Thesbite, saying, In the field of Jezreel the dogs shall eat the flesh of Jezebel, and the flesh of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face of the earth in the field of Jezreel, so that they who pass by shall say, Is this that same Jezebel? End of chapter 9 Chapter 10 And Achab had seventy sons in Samaria. So Jehu wrote letters and sent to Samaria, to the chief men of the city, and to the ancients, and to them that brought up Achab's children, saying, As soon as you receive these letters, Ye that have your masters, sons, and chariots, and horses, and fenced cities, and armor, choose the best, and him that shall please you most of your masters, sons, and set him on his father's throne, and fight for the house of your master. But they were exceedingly afraid, and said, Behold, two kings could not stand before him, and how shall we be able to resist? Therefore the overseers of the house, and the rulers of the city, and the ancients, and the tutors, sent to Jehu, saying, We are thy servants, whatsoever thou shalt command us we will do, neither will we make us a king. Do thou all that pleaseth thee. And he wrote letters the second time to them, saying, If you be mine, and will obey me, take the heads of the sons of your master, and come to me to Jezreel by to-morrow this time. Now the king's sons, being seventy men, were brought up with the chief men of the city. And when the letters came to them, they took the king's sons, and slew seventy persons, and put their heads in baskets, and sent them to him to Jezreel. And a messenger came, and told him, saying, They have brought the heads of the king's sons. And he said, 
lay ye them in two heaps by the entering in of the gate until the morning. And when it was light, he went out, and standing said to all the people, You are just. If I conspired against my master and slew him, who hath slain all these? See therefore now that there hath not fallen to the ground any of the words of the Lord which the Lord spoke concerning the house of Achab, and the Lord hath done that which he spoke in the hand of his servant Elias. So Jehu slew all that were left of the house of Achab in Jezreel, and all his chief men and his friends and his priests, till there were no remains left of him. And he arose and went to Samaria, and when he was come to the shepherd's cabin in the way, he met with the brethren of Ocosius, king of Judah, and he said to them, Who are you? And they answered, We are the brethren of Ocosius, and are come down to salute the sons of the king and the sons of the queen. And he said, Take them alive. And they took them alive, and killed them at the pit by the cabin, two and forty men, and he left not any of them. And when he was departed thence, he found Jonadab, the son of Rechab, coming to meet him, and he blessed him, and he said to him, Is thy heart right, as my heart is with thy heart? And Jonadab said, It is. If it be, said he, give me thy hand. He gave him his hand, and he lifted him up to him into the chariot, and he said to him, Come with me, and see my zeal for the Lord. So he made him ride in his chariot, and brought him into Samaria. And he slew all that were left of Achab in Samaria to a man, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elias. And Jehu gathered together all the people, and said to them, Achab worshipped Baal a little, but I will worship him more. Now therefore call to me all the prophets of Baal, and all his servants, and all his priests. Let none be wanting, for I have a great sacrifice to offer to Baal. Whosoever shall be wanting shall not live. Now Jehu did this craftily, that he might destroy the worshippers of Baal. And he said, Proclaim a festival for Baal. And he called, and he sent into all the borders of Israel, and all the servants of Baal came. There was not one left that did not come. And they went into the temple of Baal, and the house of Baal was filled from one end to the other. And he said to them that were over the wardrobe, Bring forth garments for all the servants of Baal. And they brought them forth garments. And Jehu and Jonadab, the son of Rechab, went to the temple of Baal, and said to the worshippers of Baal, Search, and see that there be not any with you of the servants of the Lord, but that there be the servants of Baal only. And they went in to offer sacrifices and burnt offerings. But Jehu had prepared him fourscore men without, and said to them, If any of the men escape whom I have brought into your hands, he that letteth him go shall answer life for life. And it came to pass, when the burnt offering was ended, that Jehu commanded his soldiers and captains, saying, Go in and kill them, let none escape. And the soldiers and captains slew them with the edge of the sword, and cast them out. And they went into the city of the temple of Baal, and brought the statue out of Baal's temple, and burnt it, and broke it in pieces. They destroyed also the temple of Baal, and made a jacquez in its place unto this day. So Jehu destroyed Baal out of Israel. But yet he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, 
nor did he forsake the golden calves that were in Bethel and Dan. And the Lord said to Jehu, Because thou hast diligently executed that which was right and pleasing in my eyes, and hast done to the house of Achab according to all that was in my heart, thy children shall sit upon the throne of Israel to the fourth generation. But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord the God of Israel with all his heart, for he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, who had made Israel to sin. In those days the Lord began to be weary of Israel, and Haziel ravaged them in all the coasts of Israel, from the Jordan eastward, all the land of Galead and Gad, and Reuben and Manasses, from Aroer, which is upon the torrent Amen, and Galead, and Bessan. But the rest of the acts of Jehu, and all that he did, and his strength, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Israel? And Jehu slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria, and Joachaz his son reigned in his stead. And the time that Jehu reigned over Israel in Samaria, was eight and twenty years. End of chapter 10《2nd Kings chapters 11 through 18 of the Bible Douay Rames 1899 American Edition. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 11 And Athalia, the mother of Ocosius, seeing that her son was dead, arose, and slew all the royal seed. But Josaba, the daughter of King Joram, sister of Ocosius, took Joas, the son of Ocosius, and stole him from among the king's sons that were slain, out of the bedchamber with his nurse, and hid him from the face of Athalia, so that he was not slain. And he was with her six years hid in the house of the Lord, and Athalia reigned over the land. And in the seventh year Joiada sent, and taking the centurions and the soldiers, brought them in to him into the temple of the Lord, and made a covenant with them and taking an oath of them in the house of the Lord, showed them the king's son. And he commanded them, saying, This is the thing that you must do. Let a third part of you go in on the Sabbath, and keep the watch of the king's house. And let a third part be at the gate of Sir, and let a third part be at the gate behind the dwelling of the shield-bearers and you shall keep the watch of the house of Messah. But let two parts of you, all that go forth on the Sabbath, keep the watch of the house of the Lord about the king. And you shall compass him round about, having weapons in your hands, and if any man shall enter the precinct of the temple, let him be slain, and you shall be with the king coming in and going out. And the centurions did according to all things that Joiada the priest had commanded them, and taking every one their men that went in on the Sabbath with them that went out on the Sabbath, came to Joiada the priest. And he gave them the spears and the arms of King David, which were in the house of the Lord. And they stood, having every one their weapons in their hands, from the right side of the temple unto the left side of the altar and of the temple about the king. And he brought forth the king's son, and put the diadem upon him, and the testimony, and they made him king, and anointed him. And clapping their hands, they said, God save the king. And Athaliah heard the noise of the people running, and going in to the people into the temple of the Lord, she saw the king standing upon a tribunal, 
as the manner was, and the singers and the trumpets near him, and all the people of the land rejoicing, and sounding the trumpets. And she rent her garments and cried, A conspiracy! A conspiracy! But Joyada commanded the centurions that were over the army, and said to them, Have her forth without the precinct of the temple, and whosoever shall follow her, let him be slain with the sword. For the priest had said, Let her not be slain in the temple of the Lord. And they laid hands on her, and thrust her out by the way by which the horses go in, by the palace, and she was slain there. And Joyada made a covenant between the Lord and the king and the people, that they should be the people of the Lord, and between the king and the people. And all the people of the land went into the temple of Baal, and broke down his altars, and his images they broke in pieces thoroughly. They slew also Methan, the priest of Baal, before the altar, and the priest set guards in the house of the Lord. And he took the centurions, and the bands of the Kerithi, and the Felithi, and all the people of the land, and they brought the king from the house of the Lord. And they came by the way of the gate of the shield-bearers into the palace, and he sat on the throne of the kings. And all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was quiet, but Athaliah was slain with the sword in the king's house. Now Joaz was seven years old when he began to reign. End of chapter 11 Chapter 12 In the seventh year of Jehu, Joaz began to reign, and he reigned forty years in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Sebia of Berzebi. And Joaz did that which was right before the Lord all the days that Joiada the priest taught him. But yet he took not away the high places, for the people still sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places. And Joaz said to the priests, All the money of the sanctified things which is brought into the temple of the Lord by those that pass, which is offered for the price of a soul, and which of their own accord and of their own free heart they bring into the temple of the Lord, let the priests take it according to their order, and repair the house, wheresoever they shall see anything that wanteth repairing. Now till the three-and-twentieth year of King Joaz, the priests did not make the repairs of the temple. And King Joaz called Joiada the high priest and the priests, saying to them, Why do you not repair the temple? Take you therefore money no more according to your order, but restore it for the repairing of the temple. And the priests were forbidden to take any more money of the people, and to make the repairs of the house. And Joiada the high priest took a chest, and bored a hole in the top, and set it by the altar, at the right hand of them that came into the house of the Lord, and the priests that kept the doors put therein all the money that was brought to the temple of the Lord. And when they saw that there was very much money in the chest, the king's scribe and the high priest came up, and poured it out, and counted the money that was found in the house of the Lord and they gave it out by number and measure into the hands of them that were over the builders of the house of the Lord, and they laid it out to the carpenters and the masons that wrought in the house of the Lord, and made the repairs, and to them that cut stones, and to buy timber and stones to be hewed, that the repairs of the house of the Lord might be completely finished, and wheresoever there was need of expenses to uphold the house. But there were not made of the same money for the temple of the Lord bowls, or flesh-hooks, or censers, or trumpets, or any vessel of gold and silver, 
of the money that was brought into the temple of the Lord. For it was given to them that did the work, that the temple of the Lord might be repaired. And they reckoned not with the men that received the money to distribute it to the workmen, but they bestowed it faithfully. But the money for trespass and the money for sins they brought not into the temple of the Lord, because it was for the priests. Then Haziel king of Syria went up and fought against Geth, and took it and set his face to go up to Jerusalem. Wherefore Joaz king of Judah took all the sanctified things, which Josaphat and Joram and Ocosius his fathers, the kings of Judah, had dedicated to holy uses, and which he himself had offered, and all the silver that could be found in the treasures of the temple of the Lord, and in the king's palace, and sent it to Hazael king of Syria, and he went off from Jerusalem. And the rest of the acts of Joaz, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Judah? And his servants arose, and conspired among themselves, and slew Joaz in the house of Melo in the descent of Selah. For Josachar the son of Simeath, and Josabad the son of Somer his servant, struck him, and he died. And they buried him with his fathers in the city of David, and Amasias his son reigned in his stead. End of chapter 12 Chapter 13 In the three-and-twentieth year of Joaz, son of Ocosius, king of Judah, Joachaz, the son of Jehu, reigned over Israel in Samaria seventeen years. And he did evil before the Lord, and followed the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, and he departed not from them. And the wrath of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he delivered them into the hand of Hazael the king of Syria, and into the hand of Benadad the son of Hazael all days. But Joachaz besought the face of the Lord, and the Lord heard him, for he saw the distress of Israel, because the king of Syria had oppressed them. And the Lord gave Israel a savior, and they were delivered out of the hand of the king of Syria. And the children of Israel dwelt in their pavilions as yesterday and the day before. But yet they departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, who made Israel to sin, but walked in them, and there still remained a grove also in Samaria. And Joachaz had no more left of the people than fifty horsemen, and ten chariots, and ten thousand footmen, for the king of Syria had slain them, and had brought them low as dust by thrashing in the barn floor. But the rest of the acts of Joachaz, and all that he did, and his valor, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Israel? And Joachaz slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria, and Joas his son reigned in his stead. In the seven and thirtieth year of Joas king of Judah, Joaz the son of Joachaz reigned over Israel in Samaria sixteen years. And he did that which is evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, but he walked in them. But the rest of the acts of Joaz, and all that he did, and his valor, wherewith he fought against Amasias, king of Judah, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Israel? And Joaz slept with his fathers, and Jeroboam sat upon his throne. But Joaz was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. 
Now Eliseus was sick of the illness whereof he died, and Joaz king of Israel went down to him, and wept before him, and said, O oh, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the guider thereof. And Eliseus said to him, Bring a bow and arrows. And when he had brought him a bow and arrows, he said to the king of Israel, Put thy hand upon the bow. And when he had put his hand, Elisius put his hands over the king's hands, and said, Open the window to the east. And when he had opened it, Elisius said, Shoot an arrow. And he shot. And Elisius said, The arrow of the Lord's deliverance, and the arrow of the deliverance from Syria, and thou shalt strike the Syrians in Aphek till thou consume them. And he said, Take the arrows. And when he had taken them, he said to him, Strike with an arrow upon the ground. And he struck three times, and stood still. And the man of God was angry with him, and said, If thou hadst smitten five or six or seven times, thou hadst smitten Syria even to utter destruction. But now three times shalt thou smite it. And Elisius died, and they buried him. And the rovers from Moab came into the land the same year. And some that were burying a man saw the rovers, and cast the body into the sepulchre of Elisius. And when it had touched the bones of Elisius, the man came to life, and stood upon his feet. Now Haziel king of Syria afflicted Israel all the days of Joachaz. And the Lord had mercy on them, and returned to them because of his covenant, which he had made with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And he would not destroy them, nor utterly cast them away unto this present time. And Haziel king of Syria died, and Benadad his son reigned in his stead. Now Joaz the son of Joachaz took the cities out of the hand of Benadad the son of Haziel, which he had taken out of the hand of Joachaz his father by war three times did Joaz beat him, and he restored the cities to Israel. End of chapter 13 Chapter 14 In the second year of Joaz, son of Joachaz, king of Israel, reigned Amasias, son of Joaz, king of Judah. He was five and twenty years old when he began to reign and nine and twenty years he reigned in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Joadan of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right before the Lord, but yet not like David his father. He did according to all things that Joas his father did. But this only, that he took not away the high places, for yet the people sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places. And when he had possession of the kingdom, he put his servants to death that had slain the king his father. But the children of the murderers he did not put to death, according to that which is written in the book of the law of Moses, wherein the Lord commanded, saying, The fathers shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers, but every man shall die for his own sins. He slew of Edom in the valley of the salt pits ten thousand men, and took the rock by war, and called the name thereof Jectale unto this day. Then Amasias sent messengers to Joaz, son of Joachaz, son of Jehu, king of Israel, saying, Come, let us see one another. And Joaz, king of Israel, sent again to Amasias, king of Judah, saying, A thistle of Libanus, sent to a cedar tree which is in Libanus, saying, Give thy daughter to my son to wife. 
and the beasts of the forest that are in Libanus passed and trod down the thistle. Thou hast beaten and prevailed over Edom, and thy heart hath lifted thee up. Be content with the glory, and sit at home. Why provokest thou evil, that thou shouldst fall, and Judah with thee? But Amasias did not rest satisfied. So Joaz king of Israel went up, and he and Amasias king of Judah saw one another in Bethsemes, a town in Judah. And Judah was put to the worst before Israel, and they fled every man to their dwellings. But Joaz king of Israel took Amasias king of Judah, the son of Joaz, the son of Ocosius, in Bethsemes, and brought him into Jerusalem. And he broke down the wall of Jerusalem, from the gate of Ephraim to the gate of the corner, four hundred cubits. And he took all the gold and silver, and all the vessels that were found in the house of the Lord, and in the king's treasures, and hostages, and returned to Samaria. But the rest of the acts of Joaz, which he did, and his valor, wherewith he fought against Amasias king of Judah, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Israel? And Joaz slept with his fathers, and was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. And Jeroboam his son reigned in his stead. And Amasias the son of Joaz king of Judah lived after the death of Joaz son of Joachaz king of Israel fifteen years. And the rest of the acts of Amasias, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Judah? Now they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachis, and they sent after him to Lachis, and killed him there. And they brought him away upon horses, and he was buried in Jerusalem with his fathers in the city of David. And all the people of Judah took Azarias, who was sixteen years old, and made him king instead of his father Amasias. He built Elath, and restored it to Judah after that the king slept with his fathers. In the fifteenth year of Amasias, son of Joaz king of Judah, reigned Jeroboam the son of Joaz king of Israel in Samaria one and forty years. And he did that which was evil before the Lord. He departed not from all the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. He restored the borders of Israel from the entrance of Imath unto the sea of the wilderness, according to the word of the Lord, the God of Israel, which he spoke by his servant Jonas, the son of Amathai the prophet, who was of Geth, which is in Ophir. For the Lord saw the affliction of Israel, that it was exceeding bitter, and that they were consumed even to them that were shut up in prison, and the lowest persons, and that there was no one to help Israel. And the Lord did not say that he would blot out the name of Israel from under heaven, but he saved them by the hand of Jeroboam, the son of Joaz. But the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, and all that he did, and his valor, wherewith he fought, and how he restored Damascus and Imath to Judah in Israel, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Israel? And Jeroboam slept with his fathers, the kings of Israel, and Zacharias his son reigned in his stead. End of chapter 14 Chapter 15 in the seven and twentieth year of Jeroboam king of Israel reigned Azarias, son of Amasias king of Judah. He was sixteen years old when he began to reign, and he reigned two and fifty years in Jerusalem. 
The name of his mother was Jechaliah of Jerusalem. And he did that which was pleasing before the Lord, according to all that his father Amasias had done. But the high places he did not destroy, for the people sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places. And the Lord struck the king, so that he was a leper unto the day of his death, and he dwelt in a free house apart. But Joatham, the king's son, governed the palace, and judged the people of the land. And the rest of the acts of Azarias, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Judah? And Azarias slept with his fathers, and they buried him with his ancestors in the city of David. And Joatham his son reigned in his stead. In the eight and thirtieth year of Azarias king of Judah reigned Zacharias son of Jeroboam over Israel in Samaria six months. And he did that which is evil before the Lord, as his fathers had done. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. And Selim, the son of Jabez, conspired against him, and struck him publicly, and killed him, and reigned in his place. Now the rest of the acts of Zacharias, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Israel? This was the word of the Lord, which he spoke to Jehu, saying, Thy children to the fourth generation shall sit upon the throne of Israel. And so it came to pass. Selim, the son of Jabez, began to reign in the nine and thirtieth year of Azarias, king of Judah, and reigned one month in Samaria. And Menahem, the son of Gadi, went up from Thersa, and he came into Samaria, and struck Selim, the son of Jabez in Samaria, and slew him, and reigned in his stead. And the rest of the acts of Selim, and his conspiracy which he made, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Israel? Then Menahem destroyed Thapsa, and all that were in it, and the borders thereof from Thersa, because they would not open to him. And he slew all the women thereof that were with child, and ripped them up. In the nine and thirtieth year of Azarias king of Judah reigned Menahem son of Gadi over Israel ten years in Samaria. And he did that which was evil before the Lord. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin all his days. And Phul, king of the Assyrians, came into the land, and Menahem gave Phul a thousand talents of silver to aid him and to establish him in the kingdom. And Menahem laid a tax upon Israel, on all that were mighty and rich, to give the king of the Assyrians each man fifty siddis of silver. So the king of the Assyrians turned back, and did not stay in the land. And the rest of the acts of Menahem, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Israel? And Menahem slept with his fathers, and Phakiah his son reigned in his stead. In the fiftieth year of Azarias, king of Judah, reigned Phakiah, the son of Menahem, over Israel in Samaria two years. And he did that which was evil before the Lord. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. And Phakiah, the son of Romilia, his captain, conspired against him, and smote him in Samaria in the tower of the king's house, near Argob and near Ari, and with him fifty men of the sons of the Galeadites. And he slew him, 
and reigned in his stead. And the rest of the acts of Fakiah, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Israel? In the two and fiftieth year of Azarias, king of Judah, reigned Fakhi, the son of Romelia, over Israel in Samaria twenty years. And he did that which was evil before the Lord. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. In the days of Fakhi, king of Israel, came Theglath Phalazar, king of Assyria, and took Ion, and Abel Domum Maica, and Genoi, and Kedes, and Azor, and Galead, and Galilee, and all the land of Naphtali, and carried them captives into Assyria. Now Osi, son of Elah, conspired and formed a plot against Faki, the son of Romelia, and struck him and slew him, and reigned in his stead in the twentieth year of Joatham, the son of Ozias. But the rest of the acts of Fakith, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Israel? In the second year of Fakih, the son of Romelia, king of Israel, reigned Joatham, son of Ozias, king of Judah. He was five and twenty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Jerusa, the daughter of Sadak. And he did that which was right before the Lord. According to all that his father Ozias had done, so did he. But the high places he took not away. The people still sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places. He built the highest gate of the house of the Lord. But the rest of the acts of Joatham, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Judah? In those days the Lord began to send into Judah Basin, king of Syria, and Faki, the son of Romelia. And Joatham slept with his fathers, and was buried with them in the city of David his father, and Echaz, his son, reigned in his stead. End of chapter 15 Chapter 16 In the seventeenth year of Faki, the son of Romelia, reigned Echaz, the son of Joatham, king of Judah. Echaz was twenty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. He did not that which was pleasing in the sight of the Lord his God, as David his father, but he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. Moreover, he consecrated also his son, making him pass through the fire according to the idols of the nations, which the Lord destroyed before the children of Israel. He sacrificed also, and burnt incense in the high places, and on the hills, and under every green tree. Then Basin, king of Syria, and Faki, son of Romelia, king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to fight, and they besieged Echaz, but were not able to overcome him. At that time Rasin, king of Syria, restored Ayala, to Syria, and drove the men of Judah out of Ailah, and the Edomites came into Ailah, and dwelt there unto this day. And Achaz sent messengers to Theglath Phalazar, king of the Assyrians, saying, I am thy servant and thy son. Come up and save me out of the hand of the king of Syria, and out of the hand of the king of Israel, who are risen up together against me. And when he had gathered together the silver and gold that could be found in the house of the Lord and in the king's treasures, he sent it for a present to the king of the Assyrians. And he agreed to his desire, for the king of the Assyrians went up against Damascus, 
and laid it waste. And he carried away the inhabitants thereof to Cyrene, but Basin he slew. And King Achaz went to Damascus to meet Theglathphalazar, king of the Assyrians, and when he had seen the altar of Damascus, King Achaz sent to Urias the priest a pattern of it, and its likeness according to all the work thereof. And Urias the priest built an altar according to all that King Achaz had commanded from Damascus. So did Urias the priest, until King Achaz came from Damascus. And when the king was come from Damascus, he saw the altar and worshipped it, and went up and offered holocausts and his own sacrifice, and offered libations and poured the blood of the peace offerings which he had offered upon the altar. But the altar of brass that was before the Lord he removed from the face of the temple, and from the place of the altar, and from the place of the temple of the Lord, and he set it at the side of the altar toward the north. And King Achaz commanded Urias the priest, saying, Upon the great altar offer the morning holocaust and the evening sacrifice, and the king's holocaust and his sacrifice, and the holocaust of the whole people of the land, and their sacrifices and their libations, and all the blood of the holocaust, and all the blood of the victim thou shalt pour out upon it. But the altar of brass shall be ready at my pleasure. So Urias the priest did according to all that King Achaz had commanded him. And King Achaz took away the graven bases and the laver that was upon them, and he took down the sea from the brazen oxen that held it up, and put it upon a pavement of stone. The Musak also for the Sabbath, which he had built in the temple, and the king's entry from without, he turned into the temple of the Lord, because of the king of the Assyrians. Now the rest of the acts of Achaz, which he did, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Judah? And Achaz slept with his fathers, and was buried with them in the city of David, and Ezekias his son reigned in his stead. End of chapter 16 Chapter 17 in the twelfth year of Achaz, king of Judah, Osi, the son of Elah, reigned in Samaria over Israel nine years. And he did evil before the Lord, but not as the kings of Israel that had been before him. Against him came up Salmanazar, king of the Assyrians, and Osi became his servant and paid him tribute. And when the king of the Assyrians found that Osi, endeavoring to rebel, had sent messengers to Sua, the king of Egypt, that he might not pay tribute to the king of the Assyrians, as he had done every year, he besieged him, bound him, and cast him into prison. And he went through all the land, and going up to Samaria, he besieged it three years. And in the ninth year of O.C., the king of the Assyrians took Samaria, and carried Israel away to Assyria, and he placed them in Hala and Hebor by the river of Gozan, in the cities of the Medes. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, who brought them out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and they worshipped strange gods, and they walked according to the way of the nations which the Lord had destroyed in the sight of the children of Israel and of the kings of Israel, because they had done in like manner. And the children of Israel offended the Lord their God with things that were not right, and built them high places in all their cities from the tower of the watchmen 
to the fenced city. And they made them statues and groves on every high hill and under every shady tree. And they burnt incense there upon altars after the manner of the nations which the Lord had removed from their face. And they did wicked things, provoking the Lord. And they worshipped abominations, concerning which the Lord had commanded them that they should not do this thing. And the Lord testified to them in Israel and in Judah by the hand of all the prophets and seers, saying, Return from your wicked ways, and keep my precepts and ceremonies according to all the law which I commanded your fathers, and as I have sent to you in the hand of my servants the prophets. And they hearkened not, but hardened their necks like to the neck of their fathers, who would not obey the Lord their God. And they rejected his ordinances, and the covenant that he made with their fathers, and the testimonies which he testified against them. And they followed vanities, and acted vainly, and they followed the nations that were round about them, concerning which the Lord had commanded them, that they should not do as they did. And they forsook all the precepts of the Lord their God, and made to themselves two molten calves, and groves, and adored all the host of heaven. And they served Baal, and consecrated their sons and their daughters through fire, and they gave themselves to divinations and soothsayings, and they delivered themselves up to do evil before the Lord to provoke him. And the Lord was very angry with Israel, and removed them from his sight, and there remained only the tribe of Judah. But neither did Judah itself keep the commandments of the Lord their God, but they walked in the errors of Israel, which they had wrought. And the Lord cast off all the seed of Israel, and afflicted them, and delivered them into the hand of spoilers, till he cast them away from his face. Even from that time when Israel was rent from the house of David, and made Jeroboam son of Nebat their king, for Jeroboam separated Israel from the Lord, and made them commit a great sin. And the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam which he had done, and they departed not from them, till the Lord removed Israel from his face, as he had spoken in the hand of all his servants the prophets. And Israel was carried away out of their land to Assyria unto this day. And the king of the Assyrians brought people from Babylon, and from Cutha, and from Ava, and from Emath, and from Sepharvaim, and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria, and dwelt in the cities thereof. And when they began to dwell there, they feared not the Lord, and the Lord sent lions among them which killed them. And it was told the king of the Assyrians, and it was said, The nations which thou hast removed and made to dwell in the cities of Samaria know not the ordinances of the God of the land, and the Lord hath sent lions among them, and, behold, they kill them, because they know not the manner of the God of the land. And the king of the Assyrians commanded, saying, Carry thither one of the priests whom you brought from thence captive, and let him go and dwell with them, and let him teach them the ordinances of the God of the land. So one of the priests who had been carried away captive from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel, and taught them how they should worship the Lord. And every nation made gods of their own, 
and put them in the temples of the high places which the Samaritans had made, every nation in their cities where they dwelt. For the men of Babylon made Selkothbenoth, and the Cuthites made Nergal, and the men of Imath made Asima, and the Hivites made Nebahaz, and Tharthak, and they that were of Sepharvaim burnt their children in fire to Adramelech and Anamelech, the gods of Sepharvaim. And nevertheless they worshipped the Lord, and they made to themselves of the lowest of the people priests of the high places, and they placed them in the temples of the high places. And when they worshipped the Lord, they served also their own gods according to the custom of the nations out of which they were brought to Samaria. Unto this day they follow the old manner, they fear not the Lord, neither do they keep his ceremonies and judgments and law and the commandment, which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he surnamed Israel, with whom he made a covenant, and charged them, saying, You shall not fear strange gods, nor shall you adore them, nor worship them, nor sacrifice to them. But the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, with great power and a stretched-out arm, him shall you fear, and him shall you adore, and to him shall you sacrifice. And the ceremonies and judgments and law and the commandment, which he wrote for you, you shall observe to do them always, and you shall not fear strange gods. And the covenant that he made with you, you shall not forget neither shall ye worship strange gods, but fear the Lord your God, and he shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. But they did not hearken, but did according to their old custom. So these nations feared the Lord, but nevertheless served also their idols, their children also, and grandchildren, as their fathers did, so do they unto this day. End of chapter 17 Chapter 18 In the third year of Osi, the son of Elah, king of Israel, reigned Ezekias, the son of Achaz, king of Judah, he was five and twenty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned nine and twenty years in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Abi, the daughter of Zacharias. And he did that which was good before the Lord, according to all that David his father had done. He destroyed the high places, and broke the statues in pieces, and cut down the groves, and broke the brazen serpent which Moses had made. For till that time the children of Israel burnt incense to it, and he called its name Nohistan. He trusted in the Lord the God of Israel, so that after him there was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any of them that were before him. And he stuck to the Lord, and departed not from his steps, but kept his commandments, which the Lord commanded Moses. Wherefore the Lord also was with him, and in all things to which he went forth he behaved himself wisely. And he rebelled against the king of the Assyrians, and served him not. He smote the Philistines as far as Gaza, and all their borders from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. In the fourth year of King Ezekias, which was the seventh year of Osi, the son of Elah, king of Israel, Salmaneser, king of the Assyrians, came up to Samaria and besieged it, and took it. For after three years in the sixth year of Ezekias, that is, in the ninth year of Osi, king of Israel, Samaria was taken. 
and the king of the Assyrians carried away Israel into Assyria, and placed them in Hali, and in Hebor by the rivers of Gozan in the cities of the Medes, because they hearkened not to the voice of the Lord their God, but transgressed his covenant. All that Moses the servant of the Lord commanded, they would not hear nor do. In the fourteenth year of King Ezekias, Sennacherib, king of the Assyrians, came up against the fenced cities of Judah, and took them. Then Ezekias, king of Judah, sent messengers to the king of the Assyrians, to Lachis, saying, I have offended, depart from me, and all that thou shalt put upon me I will bear. And the king of the Assyrians put a tax upon Ezekias, king of Judah, of three hundred talents of silver and thirty talents of gold. And Ezekias gave all the silver that was found in the house of the Lord and in the king's treasures. At that time Ezekias broke the doors of the temple of the Lord and the plates of gold which he had fastened on them, and gave them to the king of the Assyrians. And the king of the Assyrians sent Tharthan and Rabseris and Rabsachis from Lachis to king Ezekias with a strong army to Jerusalem. And they went up and came to Jerusalem, and they stood by the conduit of the upper pool, which is in the way of the fuller's field. And they called for the king, and there went out to them Eliakim, the son of Helchias, who was over the house, and Sobna the scribe, and Joahi the son of Asaph the recorder. And Rabsachus said to them, Speak to Ezekias. Thus saith the great king, the king of the Assyrians, What is this confidence wherein thou trustest? Perhaps thou hast taken counsel to prepare thyself for battle. On whom dost thou trust, that thou darest to rebel? Dost thou trust in Egypt, a staff of a broken reed, upon which if a man lean it will break, and go into his hand and pierce it? So is Pharaoh king of Egypt to all that trust in him. But if you say to me, we trust in the Lord our God. Is it not he whose high places and altars Ezekias hath taken away, and hath commanded Judah and Jerusalem, you shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem? Now therefore come over to my master, the king of the Assyrians, and I will give you two thousand horses, and see whether you be able to have riders for them. And how can you stand against one lord of the least of my master's servants? Dost thou trust in Egypt for chariots and for horsemen? Is it without the will of the Lord that I am come up to this place to destroy it? The Lord said to me, Go up to this land and destroy it. Then Eliakim the son of Helchias and Sobna and Joahi said to Rabsachus, We pray thee, speak to us thy servants, in Syriac, for we understand that tongue, and speak not to us in the Jews' language, in the hearing of the people that are upon the wall. And Rabsachus answered them, saying, Hath my master sent me to thy master and to thee to speak these words, and not rather to the men that sit upon the wall? that they may eat their own dung and drink their urine with you? Then Rebsachus stood and cried out with a loud voice in the Jews' language, and said, Hear the words of the great king, the king of the Assyrians. Thus saith the king, Let not Ezekias deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you out of my hand neither let him make you trust in the Lord, saying, The Lord will surely deliver us, and this city shall not be given into the hand of the king of the Assyrians. Do not hearken to Ezekias, 
For thus saith the king of the Assyrians, Do with me that which is for your advantage, and come out to me, and every man of you shall eat of his own vineyard, and of his own fig tree, and you shall drink water of your own cisterns, till I come, and take you away to a land like to your own land, a fruitful land, and plentiful in wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of olives and oil and honey, and you shall live and not die. Hearken not to Ezekias, who deceiveth you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. Have any of the gods of the nations delivered their land from the hand of the king of Assyria? Where is the god of Emeth and of Arphad? Where is the god of Sepharvaim, of Anna, and of Ava? Have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Who are they among all the gods of the nations that have delivered their country out of my hand, that the Lord may deliver Jerusalem out of my hand? But the people held their peace, and answered him not a word, for they had received commandment from the king that they should not answer him. And Eliakim, the son of Helchias, who was over the house, and Sobna the scribe, and Joachi, the son of Asaph the recorder, came to Ezekias with their garments rent, and told him the words of Rebsechus. End of chapter 18second kings chapters nineteen through twenty five of the bible douay rames eighteen ninety nine american edition this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter nineteen and when king ezekias heard these words he rent his garments and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of the lord and he sent Eliakim, who was over the house, and Sobna the scribe, and the ancients of the priests covered with sackcloths, to Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. And they said to him, Thus saith Ezekias, This day is a day of tribulation, and of rebuke, and of blasphemy. The children are come to the birth, and the woman in travail hath not strength. It may be the Lord thy God will hear all the words of Rabsachus, whom the king of the Assyrians, his master, hath sent to reproach the living God, and to reprove with words which the Lord thy God hath heard, and do thou offer prayer for the remnants that are found. So the servants of king Ezekias came to Isaiah, and Isaiah said to them, Thus shall you say to your master, Thus saith the Lord, Be not afraid for the words which thou hast heard, with which the servants of the king of the Assyrians have blasphemed me. Behold, I will send a spirit upon him, and he shall hear a message, and shall return into his own country, and I will make him fall by the sword in his own country. And Rabsachus returned, and found the king of the Assyrians besieging Lobna, for he had heard that he was departed from Lachis. And when he heard of Theraka, king of Ethiopia, Behold, he is come out to fight with thee, and was going against him, he sent messengers to Ezekias, saying, Thus shall you say to Ezekias, king of Judah, let not thy God deceive thee, in whom thou trustest, and do not say, Jerusalem shall not be delivered into the hands of the king of the Assyrians. Behold, thou hast heard what the kings of the Assyrians have done to all countries, how they have laid them waste, and canst thou alone be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered any of them, whom my fathers have destroyed, to wit, Gozan, and Haran, and Reseph, 
and the children of Eden that were in Thalasser? Where is the king of Emeth, and the king of Arphad, and the king of the city of Sepharvaim, of Anna, and of Eva? And when Ezekias had received the letter of the hand of the messengers, and had read it, he went up to the house of the Lord, and spread it before the Lord. And he prayed in his sight, saying, O Lord God of Israel, who sitteth upon the cherubims, thou alone art the God of all the kings of the earth, thou madest heaven and earth, incline thy ear and hear, open, O Lord, thy eyes and see, and hear all the words of Sennacherib, who hath sent to upbraid unto us the living God. Of a truth, O Lord, the kings of the Assyrians have destroyed nations, and the lands of them all, and they have cast their gods into the fire, for they were not gods, but the works of men's hands of wood and stone, and they destroyed them. Now therefore, O Lord our God, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord, the only God. And Isaiah the son of Amos sent to Ezekias, saying, Thus saith the Lord the God of Israel, I have heard the prayer thou hast made to me concerning Sennacherib, king of the Assyrians. This is the word that the Lord hath spoken of him. The virgin, the daughter of Sion, hath despised thee, and laughed thee to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem hath wagged her head behind thy back. Whom hast thou reproached, and whom hast thou blasphemed? Against whom hast thou exalted thy voice, and lifted up thy eyes on high, against the Holy One of Israel? By the hand of thy servants thou hast reproached the Lord, and hast said, With the multitude of my chariots I have gone up to the height of the mountains, to the top of Libanus, and have cut down its tall cedars, and its choice fir-trees. And I have entered into the furthest parts thereof, and the forest of its carmel. I have cut down, and I have drunk strange waters, and have dried up with the soles of my feet all the shut-up waters. Hast thou not heard what I have done from the beginning? From the days of old I have formed it, and now I have brought it to effect, that fenced cities of fighting men should be turned to heaps of ruin, and the inhabitants of them were weak of hand, they trembled and were confounded, they became like the grass of the field, and the green herb on the tops of houses, which withered before it came to maturity. Thy dwelling and thy going out, and thy coming in, and thy way I knew before, and thy rage against me. Thou hast been mad against me, and thy pride hath come up to my ears. Therefore I will put a ring in thy nose, and a bit between thy lips, and I will turn thee back by the way by which thou camest. And to thee, O Ezekias, this shall be a sign. Eat this year what thou shalt find, and in the second year such things as spring of themselves. But in the third year sow and reap, plant vineyards, and eat the fruit of them. And whatsoever shall be left of the house of Judah shall take root downward, and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and that which shall be saved out of Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord of hosts, shall do this. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the king of the Assyrians, He shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow into it, nor come before it with shield, nor cast a trench about it. By the way that he came he shall return, and into this city he shall not come, 
saith the Lord. And I will protect this city, and will save it for my own sake, and for David my servant's sake. And it came to pass that night that an angel of the Lord came and slew in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred and eighty-five thousand. And when he arose early in the morning, he saw all the bodies of the dead. And Sennacherib, king of the Assyrians, departing, went away, and he returned and abode in Nineveh. And as he was worshipping in the temple of Nezroch his god, Adramelech and Serazar his sons slew him with the sword, and they fled into the land of the Armenians, and Azarhaddon his son reigned in his stead. End of chapter 19 Chapter 20 in those days Ezekias was sick unto death, and Isaiah the son of Amos the prophet came and said to him, Thus saith the Lord God, Give charge concerning thy house, for thou shalt die and not live. And he turned his face to the wall, and prayed to the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember how I have walked before thee in truth, and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is pleasing before thee. And Ezekias wept with much weeping. And before Isaiah was gone out of the middle of the court, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go back, and tell Ezekias the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, and I have seen thy tears. And behold, I have healed thee. On the third day thou shalt go up to the temple of the Lord, and I will add to thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of the Assyrians, and I will protect this city for my own sake and for David my servant's sake. And Isaiah said, Bring me a lump of figs. And when they had brought it and laid it upon his boil, he was healed. And Ezekias had said to Isaiah, What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I shall go up to the temple of the Lord the third day? And Isaiah said to him, This shall be the sign from the Lord, that the Lord will do the word which he hath spoken. Wilt thou that the shadow go forward ten lines, or that it go back so many degrees? And Ezekiah said, It is an easy matter for the shadow to go forward ten lines, and I do not desire that this be done, but let it return back ten degrees. And Isaiah the prophet called upon the Lord, and he brought the shadow ten degrees backwards, by the lines by which it had already gone down in the dial of Echaz. At that time Beradak Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of the Babylonians, sent letters and presents to Ezekias, for he had heard that Ezekias had been sick. And Ezekias rejoiced at their coming, and he showed them the house of his aromatical spices, and the gold and the silver, and divers precious odors and ointments, and the house of his vessels, and all that he had in his treasures. There was nothing in his house, nor in all his dominions, that Ezekias showed them not. And Isaiah the prophet came to King Ezekias, and said to him, what said these men, or from whence came they to thee? And Ezekias said to him, From a far country they came to me, out of Babylon. And he said, What did they see in thy house? Ezekias said, They saw all the things that are in my house. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. And Isaiah said to Ezekias, Hear the word of the Lord. 
behold the days shall come that all that is in thy house and that thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day shall be carried into babylon nothing shall be left saith the lord and of thy sons also that shall issue from thee whom thou shalt beget they shall take away and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of babylon Ezekias said to Isaiah, The word of the Lord which thou hast spoken is good. Let peace and truth be in my days. And the rest of the acts of Ezekias, and all his might, and how he made a pool and a conduit, and brought waters into the city, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Judah? And Ezekias slept with his fathers, and Manasses his son reigned in his stead. End of chapter 20 Chapter 21 Manasses was twelve years old when he began to reign, and he reigned five and fifty years in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Hephzibah, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord, according to the idols of the nations, which the Lord destroyed from before the face of the children of Israel. And he turned and built up the high places, which Ezekias his father had destroyed. And he set up altars to Baal, and made groves, as Achab the king of Israel had done and he adored all the host of heaven, and served them. And he built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord said, In Jerusalem I will put my name. And he built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the temple of the Lord. And he made his son pass through fire, and he used divination, and observed omens, and appointed pythons, and multiplied soothsayers to do evil before the Lord, and to provoke him. He set also an idol of the grove which he had made in the temple of the Lord, concerning which the Lord said to David, and to Solomon his son, in this temple and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name for ever, and I will no more make the feet of Israel to be moved out of the land which I gave to their fathers, only if they will observe to do all that I have commanded them, according to the law which my servant Moses commanded them. But they hearkened not, but were seduced by Manasses, to do evil more than the nations which the Lord destroyed before the children of Israel. And the Lord spoke in the hand of his servants the prophets, saying, Because Manasses, king of Judah, hath done these most wicked abominations beyond all that the Amorites did before him, and hath made Judah also to sin with his filthy doings. Therefore thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring on evils upon Jerusalem and Judah, that whosoever shall hear of them, both his ears shall tingle. And I will stretch over Jerusalem the line of Samaria, and the weight of the house of Achab, and I will efface Jerusalem, as tables are wont to be effaced, and I will erase and turn it, and draw the pencil often over the face thereof, and I will leave the remnants of my inheritance, and will deliver them into the hands of their enemies, and they shall become a prey and a spoil to all their enemies. Because they have done evil before me, and have continued to provoke me from the day that their fathers came out of Egypt, even unto this day. Moreover, Manasses shed also very much innocent blood, till he filled Jerusalem up to the mouth. Besides his sins, 
wherewith he made Judah to sin, to do evil before the Lord. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh, and all that he did, and his sin which he sinned, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Judah? And Manasseh slept with his fathers, and was buried in the garden of his own house, in the garden of Oza, and Ammon his son reigned in his stead. Two and twenty years old was Ammon when he began to reign, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Meselameth, the daughter of Harus of Jetiba. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, as Manasseh his father had done. And he walked in all the way in which his father had walked and he served the abominations which his father had served, and he adored them, and forsook the Lord the God of his fathers, and walked not in the way of the Lord. And his servants plotted against him, and slew the king in his own house. But the people of the land slew all them that had conspired against king Ammon, and made Josias his son, their king in his stead. But the rest of the acts of Ammon, which he did, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Judah? And they buried him in his sepulchre in the garden of Oza, and his son Josias reigned in his stead. End of chapter 21 Chapter 22 Josias was eight years old when he began to reign. He reigned one and thirty years in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Edida, the daughter of Hadiah of Besiketh. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and walked in all the ways of David his father. He turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. And in the eighteenth year of King Josias, the king sent Siphan, the son of Esaiah, the son of Mesulam, the scribe of the temple of the Lord, saying to him, Go to Helchias, the high priest, that the money may be put together which is brought into the temple of the Lord, which the doorkeepers of the temple have gathered of the people and let it be given to the workmen by the overseers of the house of the Lord, and let them distribute it to those that work in the temple of the Lord to repair the temple, that is, to carpenters and masons, and to such as mend breaches, and that timber may be bought, and stones out of the quarries to repair the temple of the Lord. But let there be no reckoning made with them of the money which they receive, but let them have it in their power and in their trust. And Helchias the high priest said to Sephan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Helchias gave the book to Sephan, and he read it. And Sephan the scribe came to the king and brought him word again, concerning that which he had commanded, and said, Thy servants have gathered together the money that was found in the house of the Lord, and they have given it to be distributed to the workmen by the overseers of the works of the temple of the Lord. And Sephan the scribe told of the king, saying, Helchias the priest hath delivered to me a book, and when Sephan had read it before the king, and the king had heard the words of the law of the Lord, he rent his garments. And he commanded Helchias the priest, and Ahikam the son of Sephan, and Echabor the son of Micah, and Sephan the scribe, and Esaiah the king's servant, saying, Go and consult the Lord for me, and for the people, and for all Judah, concerning the words of this book which is found, for the great wrath of the Lord is kindled against us, because our fathers have not hearkened to the words of this book, to do all that is written for us. 
So Helchias the priest, and Ahikam, and Achabor, and Siphan, and Asiah, went to Holdah the priestess, the wife of Siloam, the son of Thakua, the son of Arias, keeper of the wardrobe who dwelt in Jerusalem, in the second, and they spoke to her. And she said to them, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Tell the man that sent you to me, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evils upon this place, and upon the inhabitants thereof, all the words of the law which the king of Judah hath read, because they have forsaken me, and have sacrificed to strange gods, provoking me by all the works of their hands, therefore my indignation shall be kindled against this place, and shall not be quenched. But to the king of Judah, who sent you to consult the Lord, thus shall you say, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Forasmuch as thou hast heard the words of the book, and thy heart hath been moved to fear, and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord, hearing the words against this place, and the inhabitants thereof, to wit, that they should become a wonder and a curse, and thou hast rent thy garments and wept before me, I also have heard thee, saith the Lord. Therefore I will gather thee to thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered to thy sepulchre in peace, that thy eyes may not see all the evils which I will bring upon this place. End of chapter 22 Chapter 23 and they brought the king word again what she had said. And he sent, and all the ancients of Judah and Jerusalem were assembled to him. And the king went up to the temple of the Lord, and all the men of Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him, the priests and the prophets, and all the people both little and great, and in the hearing of them all he read all the words of the book of the covenant, which was found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood upon the step, and made a covenant with the Lord, to walk after the Lord, and to keep his commandments, and his testimonies, and his ceremonies, with all their heart, and with all their soul, and to perform the words of this covenant, which were written in that book, and the people agreed to the covenant. And the king commanded Helchias the high priest, and the priests of the second order, and the doorkeepers, to cast out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that had been made for Baal, and for the grove, and for all the host of heaven. And he burnt them without Jerusalem in the valley of Kedron, and he carried the ashes of them to Bethel. And he destroyed the soothsayers whom the kings of Judah had appointed to sacrifice in the high places in the cities of Judah and round about Jerusalem, them also that burnt incense to Baal, and to the sun, and to the moon, and to the twelve signs, and to all the host of heaven. And he caused the grove to be carried out from the house of the Lord without Jerusalem to the valley of Kedron, and he burnt it there, and reduced it to dust, and cast the dust upon the graves of the common people. He destroyed also the pavilions of the effeminate, which were in the house of the Lord, for which the women wove, as it were, little dwellings for the grove. And he gathered together all the priests out of the cities of Judah, and he defiled the high places where the priests offered sacrifice from Gabeah to Berzebee, and he broke down the altars of the gates that were in the entering in of the gate of Joshu, governor of the city, which was on the left hand of the gate of the city. However, the priests of the high places came not up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, 
but only ate of the unleavened bread among their brethren. And he defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the son of Enom, that no man should consecrate there his son or his daughter through fire to Moloch. And he took away the horses which the kings of Judah had given to the sun at the entering in of the temple of the Lord near the chamber of Nathanmelech, the eunuch who was in Ferurim, and he burnt the chariots of the sun with fire. And the altars that were upon the top of the upper chamber of Achaz, which the kings of Judah had made, and the altars which Manasses had made in the two courts of the temple of the Lord, the king broke down, and he ran from thence, and cast the ashes of them into the torrent Kedron. The high places also that were at Jerusalem on the right side of the Mount of Offense, which Solomon king of Israel had built to Astaroth the idol of the Sidonians, and to Chemos the scandal of Moab, and to Melcom the abomination of the children of Ammon the king defiled. And he broke in pieces the statues, and cut down the groves, and he filled their places with the bones of dead men. Moreover, the altar also that was at Bethel, and the high place, which Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, had made, both the altar and the high place he broke down and burnt, and reduced to powder, and burnt the grove. And as Josias turned himself, he saw there the sepulchres that were in the mount and he sent and took the bones out of the sepulchres, and burnt them upon the altar, and defiled it, according to the word of the Lord, which the man of God spoke, who had foretold these things. And he said, What is that monument which I see? And the men of that city answered, It is the sepulchre of the man of God, who came from Judah, and foretold these things, which thou hast done upon the altar of Bethel. And he said, Let him alone, let no man move his bones. So his bones were left untouched with the bones of the prophet that came out of Samaria. Moreover, all the temples of the high places, which were in the cities of Samaria, which the kings of Israel had made to provoke the Lord, Josias took away, and he did to them according to all the acts that he had done in Bethel. And he slew all the priests of the high places that were there, upon the altars, and he burnt men's bones upon them, and returned to Jerusalem. And he commanded all the people, saying, Keep the Fazi to the Lord your God, according as it is written in the book of this covenant, now there was no such a fazi kept from the days of the judges who judged Israel, nor in all the days of the kings of Israel and of the kings of Judah, as was this fazi that was kept to the Lord in Jerusalem in the eighteenth year of King Josias. Moreover, the diviners by spirits and soothsayers and the figures of idols and the uncleannesses, and the abominations that had been in the land of Judah and Jerusalem, Josias took away, that he might perform the words of the law that were written in the book which Helchias the priest had found in the temple of the Lord. There was no king before him like unto him, that returned to the Lord with all his heart, and with all his soul, and with all his strength, according to all the law of Moses. Neither after him did there arise any like him. But yet the Lord turned not away from the wrath of his great indignation, wherewith his anger was kindled against Judah, because of the provocations wherewith Manasses had provoked him. And the Lord said, I will remove Judah also from before my face, 
as I have removed Israel, and I will cast off this city Jerusalem, which I chose, and the house of which I said, My name shall be there. Now the rest of the acts of Josias, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Judah? In his days Pharaoh Nacao, king of Egypt, went up against the king of Assyria to the river Euphrates. And king Josias went to meet him, and was slain at Megiddo, when he had seen him. And his servants carried him dead from Megiddo, and they brought him to Jerusalem, and buried him in his own sepulchre. And the people of the land took Joachaz, the son of Josias, and they anointed him and made him king in his father's stead. Joachaz was three and twenty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Amital, the daughter of Jeremias of Lobna, and he did evil before the Lord according to all that his fathers had done. And Pharaoh Nicao bound him at Rebla, which is in the land of Emath, that he should not reign in Jerusalem. And he set a fine upon the land of a hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. And Pharaoh Nicao made Eliakim, the son of Josias, king in the room of Josias his father, and turned his name to Joachim. And he took Joachaz away, and carried him into Egypt, and he died there. And Joachim gave the silver and the gold to Pharaoh, after he had taxed the land for every man, to contribute according to the commandment of Pharaoh, and he exacted both the silver and the gold of the people of the land, of every man according to his ability, to give to Pharaoh Nacao. Joachim was five and twenty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Zabida, the daughter of Fediah of Rumah, and he did evil before the Lord according to all that his fathers had done. End of chapter 23 Chapter 24 In his days Nabuchodonosor, king of Babylon, came up, and Joachim became his servant three years. Then again he rebelled against him. And the Lord sent against him the rovers of the Chaldees, and the rovers of Syria, and the rovers of Moab, and the rowers of the children of Ammon, and he sent them against Judah, to destroy it, according to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken by his servants, the prophets. And this came by the word of the Lord against Judah, to remove them from before him for all the sins of Manasseh's which he did and for the innocent blood that he shed, filling Jerusalem with innocent blood, and therefore the Lord would not be appeased. But the rest of the acts of Joachim, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the words of the days of the kings of Judah? And Joachim slept with his fathers. And Joachim his son reigned in his stead, and the king of Egypt came not again any more out of his own country, for the king of Babylon had taken all that had belonged to the king of Egypt, from the river of Egypt unto the river Euphrates. Joachim was eighteen years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Nohesta, the daughter of Elnathan, of Jerusalem, and he did evil before the Lord according to all that his father had done. At that time the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, 
king of Babylon, came up against Jerusalem, and the city was surrounded with their forts. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to the city with his servants to assault it. And Joachim, king of Judah, went out to the king of Babylon, he and his mother, and his servants, and his nobles, and his eunuchs. And the king of Babylon received him in the eighth year of his reign. And he brought out from thence all the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king's house, and he cut in pieces all the vessels of gold which Solomon king of Israel had made in the temple of the Lord, according to the word of the Lord. And he carried away all Jerusalem, and all the princes and all the valiant men of the army, to the number of ten thousand into captivity, and every artificer and smith, and none were left but the poor sort of the people of the land. And he carried away Joachim into Babylon, and the king's mother and the king's wives, and his eunuchs, and the judges of the land he carried into captivity from Jerusalem into Babylon. And all the strong men, seven thousand, and the artificers and the smiths, a thousand, all that were valiant men and fit for war, and the king of Babylon led them captives into Babylon. And he appointed Mathanias his uncle in his stead, and called his name Sedechias. Sedechias was one and twenty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Amital, the daughter of Jeremias, of Lobna, and he did evil before the Lord according to all that Joachim had done. For the Lord was angry against Jerusalem and against Judah, till he cast them out from his face. And Sedechias revolted from the king of Babylon. End of chapter 24 Chapter 25 And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came, he and all his army against Jerusalem. And they surrounded it, and raised works round about it. And the city was shut up and besieged till the eleventh year of King Sedechias the ninth day of the month, and a famine prevailed in the city, and there was no bread for the people of the land. And a breach was made into the city, and all the men of war fled in the night between the two walls by the king's garden. Now the Chaldees besieged the city round about, and Sedechias fled by the way that leadeth to the plains of the wilderness. And the army of the Chaldees pursued after the king, and overtook him in the plains of Jericho, and all the warriors that were with him were scattered and left him. So they took the king, and brought him to the king of Babylon, to Reblatha, and he gave judgment upon him. And he slew the sons of Sedechias before his face, and he put out his eyes, and bound him with chains, and brought him to Babylon. In the fifth month, the seventh day of the month, that is, the nineteenth year of the king of Babylon, came Nebuzaradan, commander of the army, a servant of the king of Babylon, into Jerusalem. And he burnt the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and the houses of Jerusalem, and every house he burnt with fire. And all the army of the Chaldees, which was with the commander of the troops, broke down the walls of Jerusalem round about. And Nebuzaradan, the commander of the army, carried away the rest of the people that remained in the city. 
and the fugitives that had gone over to the king of Babylon, and the remnant of the common people. But of the poor of the land he left some dressers of vines and husbandmen, and the pillars of brass that were in the temple of the Lord, and the bases and the sea of brass which was in the house of the Lord, the Chaldees broke in pieces, and carried all the brass of them to Babylon. They took away also the pots of brass, and the mazers, and the forks, and the cups, and the mortars, and all the vessels of brass with which they ministered. Moreover also the censers and the bowls, such as were of gold in gold, and such as were of silver in silver, the general of the army took away. That is, two pillars, one sea, and the bases which Solomon had made in the temple of the Lord, the brass of all these vessels was without weight. One pillar was eighteen cubits high, and the capiter of brass which was upon it was three cubits high, and the network and the pomegranates that were upon the capiter of the pillar were all of brass, and the second pillar had the like adorning. And the general of the army took Sarias, the chief priest, and Sophonias, the second priest, and three doorkeepers. And out of the city one eunuch, who was captain over the men of war, and five men of them that had stood before the king, whom he found in the city, and Sophur, the captain of the army, who exercised the young soldiers of the people of the land, and threescore men of the common people who were found in the city. These Nebuzardan, the general of the army, took away, and carried them to the king of Babylon, to Reblatha. And the king of Babylon smote them, and slew them at Reblatha, in the land of Emath, so Judah was carried away out of their land. But over the people that remained in the land of Judah, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had left, he gave the government to go to Laius, the son of Ahiakam, the son of Saphan. And when all the captains of the soldiers had heard this, they and the men that were with them, to wit, that the king of Babylon had made Godalias governor, they came to Godalias to Masfa, Ismael the son of Nathanias, and Johanan the son of Cari, and Sariah the son of Theniamoth the Neophathite, and Jezanias the son of Maacathai, they and their men. And Godalias swore to them and to their men, saying, be not afraid to serve the Chaldees. Stay in the land, and serve the king of Babylon, and it shall be well with you. But it came to pass in the seventh month that Ismael, the son of Nathanias, the son of Elisima, of the seed royal, came, and ten men with him, and smote Godalias, so that he died, and also the Jews and the Chaldees that were with him in Masfa. And all the people, both little and great, and the captains of the soldiers rising up, went to Egypt, fearing the Chaldees. And it came to pass, in the seven and thirtieth year of the captivity of Joachim, king of Judah, in the twelfth month, the seven and twentieth day of the month, evil Merodach, king of Babylon, in the year that he began to reign, lifted up the head of Joachim, king of Judah, out of prison. And he spoke kindly to him, and he set his throne above the throne of the kings that were with him in Babylon. And he changed his garments which he had in prison, and he ate bread always before him all the days of his life. And he appointed him a continual allowance, which was also given him by the king day by day all the days of his life. End of chapter 25
First Chronicles chapters 1 through 10 of the Bible, Dewey Rames, 1899 American Edition. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 1 Adam, Seth, Enos, Canaan, Malaliel, Jared, Hinoch, Methusele, Lamech, Noe, Sem, Cam, and Japheth. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Medei, and Javan, Thubal, Mosok, Thiris. And the sons of Gomer, Askenaz, and Riphath, and Thogorma. And the sons of Javan, Elisa, and Tharsis, Kithim, and Dodanim, the sons of Cam, Cus, and Mesrei, and Phut, and Canaan, and the sons of Cus, Seba, and Hevela, Sebatha, and Regma, and Sebathaka, and the sons of Regma, Seba, and Dedan. Now Cus begot Nemrod, he began to be mighty upon earth. But Mezraim begot Ludim, and Anamim, and Leabim, and Nephtuim, Phetrisim also, and Casluim, from whom came the Philistines, and Kaphtorim. And Canaan begat Sidon his firstborn, and the Hittite, and the Jebusite, and the Amorite, and the Gergesite, and the Hivite, and the Arachite, and the Sinite, and the Aradian, and the Samarite, and the Hamathite. The sons of Sem, Elam, and Azer, and Arphaxad, and Lud, and Aram, and Hus, and Hul, and Gither, and Mosok. And Arphaxad beget Seli, and Seli beget Heber. And to Heber were born two sons, the name of the one was Phaleg, because in his days the earth was divided, and the name of his brother was Jactan. And Jactan begat Elmodad, and Seleph, and Asermoth, and Jeri, and Adoram, and Usel, and Dekla, and Hibal, and Abimiel, and Seba, and Ophir, and Hevela, and Jobab. All these are the sons of Jactan. Sem, Arphaxad, Seli, Heber, Phileg, Regeu, Serug, Nekor, Thari, Abram, this is Abraham. And the sons of Abraham, Isaac and Ishmael, and these are the generations of them. The firstborn of Ishmael, Nebajoth, then Kedar, and Adbiel, and Mabsam, and Masma, and Duma, Massa, Hadad, and Thema, Jetur, Nephis, Kedma, these are the sons of Ismael. And the sons of Keturah, Abraham's concubine, whom she bore, Zemran, Jexan, Medan, Medayan, Jezbach, and Sui. And the sons of Jexan, Seba, and Dedan. And the sons of Dedan, Asurim, and Letusim, and Laomin. And the sons of Medayan, Epha, and Epher, and Hinoch, and Abida, and Eldea, all these are the sons of Keturah. And Abraham begat Isaac, and his sons were Esau and Israel. The sons of Esau, Eliphaz, Reuel, Jehus, Ahilam, and Kori, the sons of Eliphaz, Theman, Omar, Sephi, Gethan, Kinez, and by Thamna, Amalek. The sons of Reuel, Nahath, Zerah, Sama, Miza. The sons of Seir, Lotan, Sobal, Sabian, Anna, Dasan, Isser, Desan. The sons of Lotan, Hore, Homam. And the sister of Lotan was Thamna. 
the sons of Sobal, Elian, and Manahath, and Ibal, Sephi, and Onam, the sons of Sabean, Aya, and Anna, the son of Anna, Desan, the sons of Desan, Hamram, and Ezaban, and Jethren, and Keran, the sons of Iser, Balean, and Zavan, and Jachan, the sons of Desan, Hus, and Aran. Now these are the kings that reigned in the land of Edom before there was a king over the children of Israel. Bali, the son of Beer, and the name of his city was Denaba. And Bali died, and Jobab, the son of Zeri of Bosra, reigned in his stead. And when Jobab also was dead, Husam of the land of the Themanites reigned in his stead. And Husam also died, and Adad the son of Bedad reigned in his stead, and he defeated the Madianites in the land of Moab, and the name of his city was Avith. And when Adad also was dead, Semla of Masrika reigned in his stead. Semla also died, and Saul of Rehoboth, which is near the river, reigned in his stead. And when Saul was dead, Balanan, the son of Achabor, reigned in his stead. He also died, and Adad reigned in his stead. And the name of his city was Fau, and his wife was called Meatabel, the daughter of Matred, the daughter of Mizeab. And after the death of Adad, there began to be dukes in Edom instead of kings, Duke Thamna, Duke Alva, Duke Jetheth, Duke Oolabama, Duke Elah, Duke Finon, Duke Kinez, Duke Theman, Duke Mabsar, Duke Magdiel, Duke Hiram. These are the dukes of Edom. End of chapter 1 Chapter 2 And these are the sons of Israel, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zabulon, Dan, Joseph, Benjamin, Nephtali, Gad, and Azer. The sons of Judah, Her, Onan, and Selah. These three were born to him of the Canaanitess, the daughter of Sui, and her firstborn of Judah was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and he slew him. And Thamar his daughter-in-law bore him Phares and Zerah. So all the sons of Judah were five. And the sons of Phares were Hezron and Hamul, and the sons also of Zeri, Zamri and Ethan and Eman and Calcal and Dera, five in all. And the sons of Akarmai, Ekar, who troubled Israel and sinned by the theft of the anathema. The sons of Ethan, Azarias, and the sons of Hezron that were born to him, Jeremiel and Ram and Kalubi. And Ram beget Aminadab, and Aminadab beget Nehesim, prince of the children of Judah. And Nehesim beget Salma, the father of Boat. And Boat beget Obed, and Obed beget Isai. And Isai beget Eliab, his firstborn, the second Abinadab, the third Simea, the fourth Nathaniel, the fifth Redai, the sixth Asam, the seventh David. And their sisters were Sarvia and Abigail. The sons of Sarvia, Abisai, Joab, and Asiel, three. And Abigail bore Amasa, whose father was Jether, the Ismaelite. And Caleb, the son of Hezron, took a wife named Azuba, of whom he had Jerioth. And her sons were Jazer, and Sobab, and Ardon. And when Azuba was dead, Caleb took to wife Ephrata, who bore him her. 
and her beget Uri, and Uri beget Bezaliel. And afterwards Hezron went in to the daughter of Mekur, the father of Galead, and took her to wife, when he was threescore years old, and she bore him Segub. And Segub beget Jair, and he had three and twenty cities in the land of Galead. And he took Gezer, and Aram, the towns of Jair, and Kenath, and the villages thereof, threescore cities, all these the sons of Mekur, father of Galead. And when Hezron was dead, Caleb went into Ephrata. Hezron also had to wife Abiah, who bore him Asher, the father of Thekua. And the sons of Jeremiel, the firstborn of Hezron, were Ram, his firstborn, and Bunna, and Aram, and Esam, and Achaia. And Jeremiel married another wife named Atara, who was the mother of Onam. And the sons of Ram, the firstborn of Jeremiel, were Moz, Jamin, and Ekar. And Onam had sons Semei and Jada. And the sons of Semei, Nadab, and Abiser. And the name of Abiser's wife was Abihail, who bore him Ahoban and Molid. And the sons of Nadab were Seled and Ephiam. And Seled died without children. But the son of Ephiam was Jesse. And Jesse beget Sisan, and Sisan beget Oholiah. And the sons of Jada, the brother of Semei, Jether and Jonathan. And Jether also died without children. But Jonathan beget Phileth and Ziza. These were the sons of Jeremiel. And Sisan had no sons but daughters, and a servant, an Egyptian named Jerea. And he gave him his daughter to wife, and she bore him Ethiai. And Ethiai begot Nathan, and Nathan begot Zebad. And Zebad begot Ophlau, and Ophlau begot Obed. Obed begot Jehu, Jehu begot Azarias. Azarias begot Helas, and Helas begot Elasa. Elasa begat Sisamoi, Sisamoi begat Silum, Silum begat Ikamiah, and Ikamiah begat Elisima. Now the sons of Caleb, the brother of Jeremiel, were Mesa, his firstborn, who was the father of Sif, and the sons of Marisa, father of Hebron, and the sons of Hebron, Kori and Thaphua, and Rechem, and Sema. And Sema beget Raham, the father of Jerkaim, and Rechem beget Samei, the son of Samei, Maon, and Maon, the father of Bethsur. And Ephah, the concubine of Caleb, bore Haran, and Mesa, and Gezez, and Haran beget Gezez. And the sons of Jehadiai, Rogom, and Joathan, and Gesan, and Phalet, and Ephah, and Saif. And Maacah the concubine of Caleb bore Saber, and Tharana. And Saif, the father of Madmina, beget Sui, the father of Machbina, and the father of Gabeah. And the daughter of Caleb was Aksa. These were the sons of Caleb the son of Hur, the firstborn of Ephrata, Sobal, the father of Kiriathiarim, Salma, the father of Bethlehem, Harif, the father of Bethgader. And Sobal, the father of Kiriathiarim, had sons, he that saw half of the places of rest. And of the kindred of Kiriathiarim, the Jethrites and Ephuthites, and Semathites, and Mazarites. Of them came the Sariites and Estheolites. The sons of Salma, Bethlehem, and Netophethi, 
the crowns of the house of Joab, and half of the place of rest of Sarai, and the families of the scribes that dwell in Jabez, singing and making melody, and abiding in tents. These are the Kenites who came of Kalor, Kameth, father of the house of Rechab. End of chapter 2 Chapter 3 Now these were the sons of David that were born to him in Hebron. The firstborn, Amnon of Echanoam the Jezreelitess, the second, Daniel of Abigail the Carmelitess, the third, Absalom the son of Maacah, the daughter of Tolmai, king of Geser, the fourth, Adonias the son of Agath, the fifth, Saphatias of Abital, the sixth Jethraim of Egla, his wife. So six sons were born to him in Hebron, where he reigned seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem he reigned three and thirty years. And these sons were born to him in Jerusalem, Simea, and Sobab, and Nathan, and Solomon, four of Bethsabi, the daughter of Amiel, Jebeir also, and Elisima, and Eliphalia, and Noga, and Nepheg, and Japhiah, and Elisima, and Eliada, and Eliphaleth, nine. All these sons of David, beside the sons of the concubines, and they had a sister, Thamar, and Solomon's son was Reboam, whose son Abiah begat Asa, and his son was Josaphat, the father of Joram. And Joram begat Ochazias, of whom was born Joaz, and his son Amasias begat Azarias. And Joathan, the son of Azarias, begat Achaz, the father of Ezekias, of whom was born Manasses, and Manasses begat Amen, the father of Josias. And the sons of Josias were the firstborn Johanan, the second Joachim, the third Sedechias, the fourth Selam. Of Joachim was born Jeconias and Sedechias. The sons of Jeconias were Aser, Selathiel, Melchiram, Fediah, Seneser, and Jechamiah, Sema, and Nadabiah. Of Fediah were born Zerubbabel and Semei. Zerubbabel beget Mosolam, Hananias, and Salomith, their sister. Hesaba also, and Ohoel, and Barachias, and Hesedias, Josabased, five. And the son of Hananias was Feltias, the father of Jesias, whose son was Rephiah, and his son was Arnan, of whom was born Obdiah, whose son was Sechanias. The son of Sechanias was Semaiah, whose sons were Hattus, and Jegael, and Bariah, and Neariah, and Siphat, six in number. The sons of Neariah, Elioni, and Ezekias, and Ezrechem, three. The sons of Elioni, Oduiah, and Eliasub, and Philiah, and Akub, and Johanan, and Deliah, and Anani, seven. End of chapter three. Chapter four. The sons of Judah. Phares, Hezron, and Carmi, and Hur, and Sobal. And Raya, the son of Sobal, begat Jehath, of whom were born Ahumai and Laed. These are the families of Serathe. And this is the posterity of Etam, Jezreel, and Jesima, and Jedibus. And the name of their sister was Asalelphani. And Phanuel, the father of Gedor, and Izar, the father of Hosea, these are the sons of Hur, the firstborn of Ephrathah, the father of Bethlehem. 
and Esur the father of Thekua had two wives, Halea and Neara, and Neara bore him Ozam, and Hefer, and Themene, and Ahasthari, these are the sons of Neara, and the sons of Halea, Sereth, Isaiah, and Ethnan. And Kos begot Anab and Saboda, the kindred of Ahariel, the son of Arum. And Jabez was more honorable than any of his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him with sorrow. And Jabez called upon the God of Israel, saying, If blessing thou wilt bless me, and wilt enlarge my borders, and thy hand be with me, and thou save me from being oppressed by evil. And God granted him the things he prayed for. And Caleb, the brother of Sua, beget Meher, who was the father of Esthon. And Esthon beget Bethrephah, and Phesi, and Tehinnah, father of the city of Naas. These are the men of Rechah. And the sons of Kenez were Othoniel and Sariah, and the sons of Othoniel, Hathath and Meonathai. Meonathai beget Ophrah, and Sariah begot Joab, the father of the valley of artificers, for artificers were there. And the sons of Caleb, the son of Jephone, were Hur, and Elah, and Naham, and the sons of Elah, Kinez, the sons also of Jalaliel, Ziph, and Zipha, Thiriah, and Azriel, and the sons of Ezra, Jether, and Mered, and Epher, and Jalon, and he beget Miriam, and Sami, and Jezba, the father of Esthamo. And his wife Judiah bore Jared, the father of Gidor, and Heber, the father of Soko, and Ikuthiel, the father of Zanoi, and these are the sons of Bethiah, the daughter of Pharaoh, whom Mered took to wife. And the sons of his wife Odiah, the sister of Naam, the father of Keliah, Garmi, and Esthamo, who was of Machathai. The sons also of Simon, Amnon, and Rinna, the son of Hanan, and Thilon, and the sons of Jesse, Zoheth, and Benzoheth, the sons of Sela, the son of Judah, Her, the father of Lika, and Leada, the father of Marisa, and the families of the house of them that wrought fine linen in the house of Oath. And he that made the sun to stand, and the men of lying and secure and burning who were princes in Moab, and who returned into Laim, now these are things of old. These are the potters, and they dwelt in plantations and hedges, with the king for his works, and they abode there. The sons of Simeon, Nemuel, and Jamin, Jerib, Zerah, Saul, Selim his son, Mepsam his son, Masma his son. The sons of Masma, Hemuel his son, Zechur his son, Semei his son. The sons of Semei were sixteen, and six daughters. But his brethren had not many sons, and the whole kindred could not reach to the sum of the children of Judah. And they dwelt in Berzebi, and Molada, and Hesarsual, and in Bela, and in Asam, and in Tholad, and in Bethuel, and in Horma, and in Sikaleg, and in Bethmarkaboth, and in Hesarsusim, and in Bethberai, and in Searim, these were their cities unto the reign of David. Their towns also were Etam, and Ain, Rimon, and Thoken, and Esan, five cities. And all their villages round about these cities, as far as Baal, 
This was their habitation, and the distribution of their dwellings. And Mosabab, and Jemlech, and Josa the son of Amasias, and Joel, and Jehu the son of Josabiah, the son of Sariah, the son of Asiel, and Elioni, and Jacoba, and Isuhiah, and Asiah, and Adiel, and Ismael, and Benaiah, Ziza also the son of Sephiah, the son of Elon, the son of Adiah, the son of Semri, the son of Samiah. These were named princes in their kindreds, and in the houses of their families were multiplied exceedingly. And they went forth to enter into Gedor as far as to the east side of the valley to seek pastures for their flocks. And they found fat pastures, and very good, and a country spacious and quiet and fruitful, in which some of the race of Cam had dwelt before. And these whose names are written above came in the days of Ezekias king of Judah, and they beat down their tents, and slew the inhabitants that were found there, and utterly destroyed them unto this day. And they dwelt in their place, because they found there fat pastures. Some also of the children of Simeon, five hundred men, went into Mount Seir, having for their captains Feltias, and Neariah, and Rephiah, and Oziel, the sons of Jesse. And they slew the remnant of the Amalekites, who had been able to escape, and they dwelt there in their stead unto this day. End of chapter 4 Chapter 5 now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was his firstborn, but forasmuch as he defiled his father's bed, his first birthright was given to the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel, and he was not accounted for the firstborn. But of the race of Judah, who was the strongest among his brethren, came the princes. But the first birthright, was accounted to Joseph. The sons then of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, were Enoch and Phalu, Ezran and Carmi. The sons of Joel, Semiah his son, Gog his son, Semiah his son, Micah his son, Rhea his son, Baal his son, Beera his son, whom Thalgath Falnazar, king of the Assyrians, carried away captive, and he was prince in the tribe of Reuben. And his brethren and all his kindred, when they were numbered by their families, had for princes Jael and Zacharias, and Bela, the son of Azaz, the son of Sema, the son of Joel, dwelt in Aroer as far as Nebo and Beomion and eastward he had his habitation as far as the entrance of the desert and the river Euphrates. For they possessed a great number of cattle in the land of Galead. And in the days of Saul they fought against the Agarites and slew them, and dwelt in their tents in their stead in all the country that looketh to the east of Galead. And the children of Gad dwelt over against them in the land of Bessan, as far as Selkah. Joel the chief, and Sephan the second, and Jani, and Sephat in Bessan. And their brethren, according to the houses of their kindreds, were Michael, and Mosolam, and Sibi, and Jorai, and Jachan, and Zai, and Heber, seven. These were the sons of Abihel, the son of Hurl, the son of Jera, the son of Galead, the son of Michael, the son of Jesisi, the son of Jedo, the son of But. And their brethren, the sons of Ebdiel, the son of Gunai, chief of the house in their families, and they dwelt in Galead, and in Basan, and in the towns thereof, 
and in all the suburbs of Saron unto the borders. All these were numbered in the days of Joathan, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, king of Israel. The sons of Reuben and of Gad, and of the half-tribe of Manasses, fighting men bearing shields and swords, and bending the bow, and trained up to battles, four and forty thousand seven hundred and threescore that went out to war. They fought against the Agarites, but the Aturians and Naphis and Nodab gave them help. And the Agarites were delivered into their hands, and all that were with them, because they called upon God in the battle, and he heard them, because they had put their faith in him. And they took all that they possessed, of camels fifty thousand, and of sheep two hundred and fifty thousand, and of asses two thousand, and of men a hundred thousand souls. And many fell down slain, for it was the battle of the Lord, and they dwelt in their stead till the captivity. And the children of the half-tribe of Manasses possessed the land, from the borders of Basan unto Baal, Hermon and Sanir, and Mount Hermon, for their number was great. And these were the heads of the house of their kindred, Ephur, and Jesse, and Eliel, and Ezreel, and Jeremiah, and Odoia, and Jediel, most valiant and powerful men, and famous chiefs in their families. But they forsook the God of their fathers, and went astray after the gods of the people of the land, whom God destroyed before them. And the God of Israel stirred up the spirit of Phul, king of the Assyrians, and the spirit of Thelgathphelnazar, king of Esser, and he carried away Reuben and Gad and the half-tribe of Manasses, and brought them to Lahila and to Habor and to Era and to the river of Gozan unto this day. End of chapter 5 Chapter 6 The sons of Levi were Gerson, Kayath, and Merari, the sons of Kayath, Amram, Isaiah, Hebron, and Oziel, the children of Amram, Aaron, Moses, and Mary, the sons of Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. Eleazar beget Phinehas, and Phinehas beget Abishu, and Abishu beget Bokai, and Bokai begot Ozai. Ozai beget Zarias, and Zarias beget Marioth, and Marioth beget Amarias, and Amarias beget Akatob. Akatob beget Sadoc, and Sadoc begot Achimaeus. Achimaeus beget Azarias, Azarias begot Johanan. Johanan beget Azarias. This is he that executed the priestly office in the house which Solomon built in Jerusalem. And Azarias beget Amarias, and Amarias beget Akatob, and Akatob beget Sadoc, and Sadoc beget Silum, Silum beget Helkias, and Helkias beget Azarias, Azarias beget Serias, and Serias beget Josedek. Now Josedek went out when the Lord carried away Judah and Jerusalem by the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. So the sons of Levi were Gerson, Kayath, and Merari, and these are the names of the sons of Gerson, Lobni and Semei, the sons of Kayath, Amram, and Isaiah, and Hebron, and Oziel, the sons of Merari, Moholi, and Mercy, and these are the kindreds of Levi according to their families. Of Gerson, Lobni his son, Jehath his son, Zama his son, Joah his son, Edo his son, Zerah 
his son, Jethrai, his son. The sons of Kaph, Aminadab, his son, Kori, his son, Eser, his son, Elkanah, his son, Abiasaph, his son, Eser, his son, Thehath, his son, Uriel, his son, Ozias, his son, Saul, his son. The sons of Elkanah, Amasai, and Achamoth, and Elkanah. The sons of Elkanah, Sophai, his son, Nahath, his son, Eliab, his son, Jeraham, his son, Elkanah, his son. The sons of Samuel, the firstborn Veseni, and Abiah, and the sons of Merere, Maholi, Lobni, his son, Semei, his son, Oza, his son, Samea, his son, Hegiah, his son, Esaiah, his son. These are they whom David set over the singing men of the house of the Lord, after that the ark was placed. And they ministered before the tabernacle of the testimony with singing, until Solomon built the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, and they stood according to their order in the ministry. And these are they that stood with their sons, of the sons of Kaath, Hemam, a singer, the son of Joel, the son of Samuel, the son of Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Eliel, the son of Thohu, the son of Suf, the son of Elkanah, the son of Mahath, the son of Amasai, the son of Elkanah, the son of Joel, the son of Azarias, the son of Sophonias, the son of Thehath, the son of Eser, the son of Abasiath, the son of Kori, the son of Isaiah, the son of Kaath, the son of Levi, the son of Israel. And his brother Asaph, who stood on his right hand, Asaph, the son of Berechias, the son of Samea, the son of Michael, the son of Bessiah, the son of Melchiah, the son of Athani, the son of Zerah, the son of Adea, the son of Ethan, the son of Zama, the son of Semei, the son of Jeth, the son of Gerson, the son of Levi, and the sons of Merari, their brethren on the left hand, Ethan, the son of Cuse, the son of Abdi, the son of Melach, the son of Hasabiah, the son of Amasai, the son of Helchias, the son of Amasai, the son of Boni, the son of Somer, the son of Moholi, the son of Mud, the son of Merari, the son of Levi. Their brethren also, the Levites, who were appointed for all the ministry of the tabernacle of the house of the Lord. But Aaron and his sons offered burnt offerings upon the altar of holocausts, and upon the altar of incense, for every work of the holy of holies, and to pray for Israel according to all that Moses the servant of God had commanded. And these are the sons of Aaron, Eleazar his son, Phinehas his son, Abishu his son, Bokai his son, Ozai his son, Zerahiah his son, Marioth his son, Amarias his son, Akatob his son, Sedak his son, Achameas his son. And these are their dwelling places by the towns and confines, to wit, of the sons of Aaron, of the families of the Caithites, for they fell to them by lot. And they gave them Hebron and the land of Judah, and the suburbs thereof round about. But the fields of the city and the villages to Caleb, son of Jephoni, and to the sons of Aaron, they gave the cities for refuge, Hebron and Lobna, and the suburbs thereof, and Jether and Estimo with their suburbs, and Helan and Deber with their suburbs, Esan also, 
and beth with their suburbs. And out of the tribe of Benjamin, Gebe'i and its suburbs, Almeth with its suburbs, Anathoth also with its suburbs, all their cities throughout their families were thirteen. And to the sons of Kaath that remained of their kindred, they gave out of the half-tribe of Manasseh ten cities in possession. And to the sons of Gerson by their families out of the tribe of Issachar, and out of the tribe of Aser, and out of the tribe of Nephtali, and out of the tribe of Manasseh in Basan, thirteen cities. And to the sons of Merari by their families out of the tribe of Reuben, and out of the tribe of Gad, and out of the tribe of Zabulon, they gave by lot twelve cities. And the children of Israel gave to the Levites the cities and their suburbs, and they gave them by lot out of the tribe of the sons of Judah, and out of the tribe of the sons of Simeon, and out of the tribe of the sons of Benjamin, these cities, which they called by their names. And to them that were of the kindred of the sons of Kaath, and the cities in their borders were of the tribe of Ephraim. And they gave the cities of refuge, Sichem with its suburbs in Mount Ephraim, and Gezer with its suburbs, Jachmaean also with its suburbs, and Beth Horon in like manner, Helan also with its suburbs, and Gethrimon in like manner, and out of the half tribe of Manasseh, Aner and its suburbs, Baalim and its suburbs, to wit, to them that were left of the family of the sons of Kaath. And to the sons of Gersom, out of the kindred of the half-tribe of Manasses, Gaulon in Basan and its suburbs, and Astharoth with its suburbs, out of the tribe of Issachar, Kedes and its suburbs, and Debereth with its suburbs, Remoth also and its suburbs, and Anem with its suburbs. And out of the tribe of Aser, Mesal with its suburbs, and Abdon in like manner, Hukak also and its suburbs, and Rahol with its suburbs. And out of the tribe of Nephtali, Kedes in Galilee and its suburbs, Hamon with its suburbs, and Kariathayim and its suburbs. And to the sons of Merari that remained, out of the tribe of Zabulon, Remono and its suburbs, and Thebor with its suburbs. Beyond the Jordan also, over against Jericho, on the east side of the Jordan, out of the tribe of Reuben, Bosor in the wilderness with its suburbs, and Jesa with its suburbs, Kadimoth also and its suburbs, and Mephaeth with its suburbs. Moreover also out of the tribe of Gad, Ramoth in Galead and its suburbs, and Menaim with its suburbs, Hesabon also with its suburbs, and Jazer with its suburbs. End of chapter 6 Chapter 7 now the sons of Issachar were Thola, and Phua, Jasub, and Cimarron, four. The sons of Thola, Ozi, and Rephiah, and Jeriel, and Jemai, and Jebsem, and Samuel, chiefs of the houses of their kindreds. Of the posterity of Thola were numbered in the days of David two and twenty thousand six hundred most valiant men. The sons of Ozi, Israhiah, of whom were born Michael, and Obadiah, and Joel, and Josiah, five, all great men. And there were with them, by their families and peoples, six and thirty thousand most valiant men ready for war. For they had many wives and children. 
their brethren also throughout all the house of issachar were numbered fourscore and seven thousand most valiant men for war the sons of benjamin were bela and bekor and jediel three the sons of bela esban and ozi and ozile and jeremoth and uri five chiefs of their families and most valiant warriors and their number was twenty two thousand and thirty four and the sons of bekor were zamira and joaz and eliezer and elioenai and emai and jeremoth and abiah and anathoth and almath all these were the sons of bekor and they were numbered by the families heads of their kindreds most valiant men for war twenty thousand and two hundred and the son of jediel balan and the sons of balan jeus and benjamin and aod and canana and zethan and tharsis and ahissahar all these were sons of jediel heads of their kindreds most valiant men seventeen thousand and two hundred fit to go out to war sepham also and hepham the sons of her and hasim the sons of eher and the sons of nephtali were jesiel and guni and jezer and selom sons of bela and the son of manasses ezriel and his concubine the syrian bore mekir the father of galead and Mekir took wives for his sons Hafim and Sephan, and he had a sister named Maaka. The name of the second was Salphiad, and Salphiad had daughters. And Maaka, the wife of Mekir, bore a son, and she called his name Phares, and the name of his brother was Sares, and his sons were Ulem and Rechem, and the son of Ulem, Baden. These are the sons of Galead, the son of Mechir, the son of Manasses. And his sister, named Queen, bore goodly men, and Abiezer, and Mohola. And the sons of Semida were Ahayu, and Sichem, and Lichai, and Aniam. And the sons of Ephraim were Suthala, Bared his son, Thehath his son, Elada his son, Thehath his son, and his son Zabad, and his son Suthala, and his son Ezer, and Elad, and the men of Geth, born in the land, slew them, because they came down to invade their possessions. And Ephraim their father mourned many days, and his brethren came to comfort him. And he went in to his wife, and she conceived, and bore a son, and he called his name Beriah, because he was born when it went evil with his house. And his daughter was Sarah, who built Bethoran, the nether and the upper, and Ozansara. And Repha was his son, and Reseph, and Thali, of whom was born Thean, who begot Laadan, and his son was Amayud, who begat Elisama, of whom was born Nun, who had Joshu for his son. And their possessions and habitations were Bethel with her daughters, and eastward Noran, and westward Gezer, and her daughters Sichem also with her daughters, as far as As with her daughters. And by the borders of the sons of Manasses, Bethsan and her daughters, Thanak and her daughters, Megiddo and her daughters, Dor and her daughters, in these dwelt the children of Joseph, the son of Israel. The children of Ezer were Jemna, and Jeshua, and Jeshui, and Bariah, and Sarah their sister. And the sons of Bariah, Heber, and Melchiel. He is the father of Barsaith. And Heber begat Jephlat, and Somer, and Hotham, and Suea their sister. The sons of Jephlat, Phosek, and Cameo, and Esoth, these are the sons of Jephlat. And the sons of Somer, Ahai, and Roagah, and Heba, and Aram. 
and the sons of Helem his brother, Sufa and Jemna, and Siles, and Emal, the sons of Sufa, Sui, Hirnefer, and Sual, and Berai, and Jemra, Bosor, and Hod, and Sama, and Seluza, and Jethran, and Bera, the sons of Jether, Jephoni, and Phasfa, and Era, and the sons of Ola, Ari, and Haniel, and Resiah. All these were sons of Aser, heads of their families, choice and most valiant captains of captains, and the number of them that were of the age that was fit for war was six and twenty thousand. End of chapter 7 Chapter 8 Now Benjamin beget Bali his firstborn, Asbel the second, Ahara the third, Nohea the fourth, and Rapha the fifth. And the sons of Bali were Adar, and Gira, and Abayud, and Abishu, and Naamar, and Ahoi, and Gira, and Sifufan, and Huram. These are the sons of Ahad, heads of families that dwelt in Gabeah, who were removed into Manaheth. And Naaman, and Achiah, and Gira, he removed them, and beget Oza, and Ahayud. And Saharim begot in the land of Moab, after he sent away Husim and Bera his wives. And he begat of Hodes his wife, Jobab, and Sibiah, and Misa, and Molcom, and Jehus, and Sikiah, and Marma. These were his sons, heads of their families. And Mehuzim begat Abitob, and Elphael, and the sons of Elphael, were Heber, and Misaim, and Samad, who built Oni, and Led, and its daughters. And Bariah and Sama were heads of their kindreds that dwelt in Ayalon. These drove away the inhabitants of Geth. And Ahio, and Sisak, and Jeremoth, and Zabadiah, and Arad, and Heder, and Michael, and Jespha and Joha, the sons of Bariah, and Zabadiah, and Mosolom, and Hezekiah, and Heber, and Jesamari, and Jezliah, and Jobab, sons of Elphael, and Jachim, and Zechre, and Zabdi, and Elioni, and Selithai, and Elial, and Adiah, and Bariah, and Samareth, the sons of Semei and Jespham, and Heber, and Eliel, and Abdon, and Zechre, and Hanan, and Hananiah, and Elam, and Anathothiah, and Jephdiah, and Phanuel, the sons of Sisak, and Samsarse, and Sohoriah, and Otholiah, and Jersiah, and Eliah, and Zechre, the sons of Jeroham. These were the chief fathers and heads of their families who dwelt in Jerusalem. And at Gebeon dwelt Abagabeon, and the name of his wife was Maaka. And his firstborn son Abdon, and Sir, and Kia, and Baal, and Nadab, and Gedor, and Ahio, and Zachar, and Macheloth. And Macheloth beget Samea and they dwelt over against their brethren in Jerusalem with their brethren. And Ner begat Kia, and Kia begat Saul, and Saul begat Jonathan, and Melchishua, and Abinadab, and Esbael. And the son of Jonathan was Merabael, and Merabael begat Micah. And the sons of Micah were Phithon, and Melech, and Thareah, and Ahaz. And Ahaz beget Joada, and Joada beget Alamath, and Asmoth, and Zamri. And Zamri beget Misa, and Misa beget Benea, whose son was Repha, of whom was born Elasa, who beget Asel. And Asel had six sons, whose names were Ezrakam, Bokru, Ismael, Sariah, Obdiah, and Hanan. 
all these were the sons of Asel. And the sons of Esek his brother were Ulam the firstborn, and Jehus the second, and Eliphalet the third. And the sons of Ulam were most valiant men, and archers of great strength, and they had many sons and grandsons, even to a hundred and fifty. All these were children of Benjamin. End of chapter 8 Chapter 9 And all Israel was numbered, and the sum of them was written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah, and they were carried away to Babylon for their transgression. Now the first that dwelt in their possessions and in their cities were the Israelites, and the priests and the Levites and the Nathanians. And in Jerusalem dwelt of the children of Judah, and of the children of Benjamin, and of the children of Ephraim, and of Manasses. Othai, the son of Amiad, the son of Amri, the son of Omri, the son of Boni, of the sons of Phares, the son of Judah. And of Salone, Asaiah, the firstborn, and his sons. And of the sons of Zerah, Jehu, and their brethren, six hundred and ninety. And of the sons of Benjamin, Sali, the son of Mosolom, the son of Oduya, the son of Asana. And Jobaniah, the son of Jeroham, and Elah, the son of Oze, the son of Mokore, and Mosalom, the son of Saphatias, the son of Rehul, the son of Jabaniah, and their brethren by their families, nine hundred and fifty-six. All these were heads of their families by the houses of their fathers, and of the priests, Jediah, Joyarib, and Jachin. And Azarias, the son of Helchias, the son of Mosolom, the son of Sadak, the son of Merioth, the son of Akatob, high priest of the house of God. And Adias, the son of Jeroham, the son of Phaser, the son of Malchias, and Maasai, the son of Adiel, the son of Jezra, the son of Mosolom, the son of Mosolomith, the son of Emer and their brethren, heads in their families, a thousand seven hundred and threescore, very strong and able men for the work of the ministry in the house of God. And of the Levites, Semiah, the son of Hasub, the son of Ezrakam, the son of Hasabiah, of the sons of Merari, and Bakbakar, the carpenter, and Galal, and Mathaniah, the son of Micah, the son of Zechri, the son of Asaph, and Obdiah, the son of Semiah, the son of Galal, the son of Idithum, and Berechiah, the son of Asa, the son of Elkanah, who dwelt in the suburbs of Netophatai. And the porters were Selim, and Akub, and Telman, and Ahiman, and their brother Selim was the prince. Until that time in the king's gate eastward the sons of Levi waited by their turns. But Selim, the son of Kori, the son of Abiasaph, the son of Kori, with his brethren and his father's house, the Korites, were over the works of the service, keepers of the gates of the tabernacle, and their families in turns were keepers of the entrance of the camp of the Lord. And Phineas, the son of Eleazar, was their prince before the Lord, and Zacharias, the son of Mosolomiah, was porter of the gate of the tabernacle of the testimony. All these that were chosen to be porters at the gates were two hundred and twelve, and they were registered in their proper towns, whom David and Samuel the seer appointed in their trust as well them as their sons, to keep the gates of the house of the Lord and the tabernacle by their turns. In four quarters were the porters, that is to say, toward the east and west and north and south. 
and their brethren dwelt in villages and came upon their sabbath days from time to time to these four levites were committed the whole number of the porters and they were over the chambers and treasures of the house of the lord and they abode in their watches round about the temple of the lord that when it was time they might open the gates in the morning and some of their stock had the charge of the vessels for the ministry for the vessels were both brought in and carried out by number some of them also had the instruments of the sanctuary committed unto them and the charge of the fine flour and wine and oil and frankincense and spices and the sons of the priests made the ointments of the spices and Mathathias, a Levite, the firstborn of Siloam the Korite, was overseer of such things as were fried in the frying pan. And some of the sons of Kaath, their brethren, were over the leaves of proposition, to prepare always new for every Sabbath. These are the chief of the singing men of the families of the Levites, who dwelt in the chambers by the temple, that they might serve continually day and night in their ministry the heads of the levites princes in their families abode in jerusalem and in gabaon dwelt jehiel the father of gabaon and the name of his wife was maaca his first-born son abdon and sir and kis and baal and ner and nadab Gedor also, and Ahio, and Zacharias, and Macheloth, and Macheloth beget Samaean. These dwelt over against their brethren in Jerusalem with their brethren. Now Ner beget Kia, and Kis begot Saul, and Saul beget Jonathan, and Melchishua, and Abinadab, and Ezbaal. And the son of Jonathan was Merabael and Merabael beget Micah, and the sons of Micah were Phithon, and Melech, and Thereah, and Ahaz, and Ahaz beget Jerah, and Jerah beget Alamath, and Asmoth, and Zamri, and Zamri beget Mesa, and Mesa beget Benaiah, whose son Rephiah beget Elasa, of whom was born Asel. And Asel had six sons, whose names are Ezrakam, Bokru, Ishmael, Sariah, Obdiah, Hanan. These are the sons of Asel. End of chapter 9 Chapter 10 Now the Philistines fought against Israel and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines, and fell down wounded in Mount Galboi. And the Philistines drew near, pursuing after Saul and his sons, and they killed Jonathan and Abinadab, and Melchishua, the sons of Saul. And the battle grew hard against Saul, and the archers reached him and wounded him with arrows. And Saul said to his armor-bearer, Draw thy sword and kill me, lest these uncircumcised come and mock me. But his armor-bearer would not, for he was struck with fear. So Saul took his sword and fell upon it. And when his armor-bearer saw it, to wit that Saul was dead, he also fell upon his sword and died. So Saul died, and his three sons, and all his house fell together. And when the men of Israel that dwelt in the plains saw this, they fled, and Saul and his sons being dead, they forsook their cities, and were scattered up and down, and the Philistines came and dwelt in them. And the next day the Philistines, taking away the spoils of them that were slain, found Saul and his sons lying on Mount Galboi. And when they had stripped him, and cut off his head, and taken away his armor, 
they sent it into their land to be carried about and shown in the temples of the idols and to the people and his armor they dedicated in the temple of their god and his head they fastened up in the temple of dagon and when the men of jabez galead had heard this to wit all that the philistines had done to saul all the valiant men of them arose and took the bodies of saul and of his sons and brought them to jabez and buried their bones under the oak that was in jabez and they fasted seven days so saul died for his iniquities because he transgressed the commandment of the lord which he had commanded and kept it not and moreover consulted also a witch and trusted not in the lord therefore he slew him and transferred his kingdom to david the son of isai end of chapter 10First Chronicles chapters 11 through 20 of the Bible Douay Rheims 1899 American Edition. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 11 Then all Israel gathered themselves to David in Hebron, saying, We are thy bone and thy flesh. Yesterday also, and the day before, when Saul was king, thou wast he that leddest out, and broughtest in Israel. For the Lord thy God said to thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be ruler over them. So all the ancients of Israel came to the king to Hebron, and David made a covenant with them before the Lord, and they anointed him king over Israel, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke in the hand of Samuel. And David and all Israel went to Jerusalem, which is Jebus, where the Jebusites were the inhabitants of the land. And the inhabitants of Jebus said to David, Thou shalt not come in here, but David took the castle of Sion, which is the city of David. And he said, Whosoever shall first strike the Jebusites shall be the head and chief captain. And Joab the son of Sarvia went up first, and was made the general. And David dwelt in the castle, and therefore it was called the city of David. And he built the city round about from Melo all round, and Joab built the rest of the city. And David went on growing and increasing, and the Lord of hosts was with him. These are the chief of the valiant men of David, who helped him to be made king over all Israel, according to the word of the Lord which he spoke to Israel. And this is the number of the heroes of David. Jezbeam, the son of Hakamoni, the chief among the thirty, he lifted up his spear against three hundred wounded by him at one time. And after him was Eleazar, his uncle's son, the Ahohite, who was one of the three mighties. He was with David in Phesdomim, when the Philistines were gathered to that place to battle and the field of that country was full of barley, and the people fled from before the Philistines. But these men stood in the midst of the field and defended it, and they slew the Philistines, and the Lord gave a great deliverance to his people. And three of the thirty captains went down to the rock wherein David was, to the cave of Odolam, when the Philistines encamped in the valley of Rephaim. And David was in a hold, and the garrison of the Philistines in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that some man would give me water of the cistern of Bethlehem, which is in the gate. And these three broke through the midst of the camp of the Philistines, 
and drew water out of the cistern of Bethlehem, which was in the gate, and brought it to David to drink. And he would not drink of it, but rather offered it to the Lord, saying, God forbid that I should do this in the sight of my God, and should drink the blood of these men, for with the danger of their lives they have brought me the water, and therefore he would not drink. These things did the three most valiant. And Abishai, the brother of Joab, he was chief of three, and he lifted up his spear against three hundred, whom he slew, and he was renowned among the three, and illustrious among the second three, and their captain. But yet he attained not to the first three. Benias, the son of Joiada, a most valiant man of Kabzeel, who had done many acts, he slew the two Ariels of Moab, and he went down and killed a lion in the midst of a pit in the time of snow. And he slew an Egyptian, whose stature was of five cubits, and who had a spear like a weaver's beam, and he went down to him with a staff, and plucked away the spear that he held in his hand, and slew him with his own spear. These things did Benias the son of Joiada, who was renowned among the three valiant ones, and the first among the thirty, but yet to the three he attained not. And David made him of his counsel. Moreover the most valiant men of the army were Asahel, brother of Joab, and Elkanan, the son of his uncle of Bethlehem, Semoth, an Ararite, Heles, a Phalanite, Ira, the son of Eches, a Thekuite, Abiezer, an Anathathite, Sobokai, a Hushthite, Eli, an Ahohite, Meharai, an Atophathite, Heled, the son of Baana, a Netophathite, Ethai, the son of Ribai of Gabaoth, of the sons of Benjamin, Banal, a Pharathonite, Hurai, of the torrent Gaes, Abiel, an Arbathite, Asmoth, a Baruamite, Eliaba, a Salabonite, the sons of Asem, a Gisanite, Jonathan, the son of Sagi, an Ararite, Ahiam, the son of Sekar, an Ararite, Eliphal, the son of Ur, Hefer, a Mekirathite, Ahia, a Philonite, Hezro, a Carmelite, Neari, the son of Azbai, Joel, the brother of Nathan, Mibahar, the son of Agari, Selek, an Ammonite, Neherai, a Berathite, the armor-bearer of Joab, the son of Sarvia. Ira, a Jethrite, Gareb, a Jethrite, Urias, a Hithite, Zabad, the son of Ohole, Adina, the son of Siza, a Reubenite, the prince of the Reubenites, and thirty with him, Hanan, the son of Maaka, and Josephat, a Mathanite, Oziah, an Astarothite, Sema, and Jehiel, the sons of Hotham, an Erorite, Jedahel, the son of Zamri, and Jobs, his brother, a Thosite, Eliel, a Methumite, and Jerabai, and Josiah, the sons of Elnaim, and Jethma, a Moabite, Eliel, and Obed, and Josiah, of Mosobia. End of chapter 11 Chapter 12 Now these are they that came to David to Sikeleg, while he yet fled from Saul, the son of Kia, and they were most valiant and excellent warriors, bending the bow, and using either hand in hurling stones with slings, and shooting arrows, of the brethren of Saul of Benjamin. The chief was Ahiazer, and Joas, the sons of Samea of Gabaoth, 
and Jaziel, and Phalet, the sons of Asmoth, and Baraka, and Jehu, and Anathothite, and Samias of Gabaon, the stoutest among the thirty and over the thirty, Jeremias, and Jehaziel, and Johanan, and Jezebad, of Gadaroth, and Eluzai, and Jeremoth, and Bealia, and Samaria, and Sephatiah, the Herufite, Elkanah, and Josiah, and Azareel, and Joezer, and Jezbeam of Karihim, and Joela, and Zabadiah, the sons of Jeraham, of Gedor. From Gadai also there went over to David, when he lay hid in the wilderness, most valiant men, and excellent warriors, holding shield and spear, whose faces were like the faces of a lion, and they were swift like the roebucks on the mountains. Ezer the chief, Obdias the second, Eliab the third, Masmana the fourth, Jeremias the fifth, Ethe the sixth, Eliel the seventh, Johanan the eighth, Elzabad the ninth, Jeremias the tenth, Macbani the eleventh, these were of the sons of Gad, captains of the army. The least of them was captain over a hundred soldiers, and the greatest over a thousand. These are they who passed over the Jordan in the first month, when it is used to flow over its banks, and they put to flight all that dwelt in the valleys, both toward the east and toward the west. And there came also of the men of Benjamin and of Judah to the hold in which David abode. And David went out to meet them, and said, If you are come peaceably to me to help me, let my heart be joined to you. But if you plot against me for my enemies, whereas I have no iniquity in my hands, let the God of our fathers see and judge. But the spirit came upon Amasai, the chief among thirty, and he said, We are thine, O David, and for thee, O son of Isaiah. Peace, peace be to thee, and peace to thy helpers, for thy God helpeth thee. So David received them, and made them captains of the band. And there were some of Manasses that went over to David when he came with the Philistines against Saul to fight, but he did not fight with them, because the lords of the Philistines taking counsel sent him back, saying, With the danger of our heads he will return to his master Saul. So when he went back to Sikeleg, there fled to him of Manasses, Ednas, and Josabad, and Jediel, and Michael, and Ednes, and Josabed, and Eliu, and Salathi, captains of thousands in Manasses. These helped David against the rovers, for they were all most valiant men, and were made commanders in the army. Moreover, day by day there came some to David to help him, till they became a great number like the army of God. And this is the number of the chiefs of the army who came to David when he was in Hebron to transfer to him the kingdom of Saul, according to the word of the Lord. The sons of Judah bearing shield and spear, six thousand eight hundred well appointed to war. Of the sons of Simeon, valiant men for war, seven thousand one hundred. Of the sons of Levi, four thousand six hundred. And Joiada, prince of the race of Aaron, and with him three thousand seven hundred. Sadok, also a young man of excellent disposition, and the house of his father, twenty-two principal men. And of the sons of Benjamin, the brethren of Saul, three thousand for hitherto a great part of them followed the house of Saul. And of the sons of Ephraim, twenty thousand eight hundred, men of great valor, renowned in their kindreds. 
and of the half-tribe of Manassas eighteen thousand, every one by their names came to make David king. Also of the sons of Issachar, men of understanding that knew all times to order what Israel should do, two hundred principal men, and all the rest of the tribe followed their counsel and of zabulon such as went forth to battle and stood in array well appointed with armour for war there came fifty thousand to his aid with no double heart and of nephtali a thousand leaders and with them seven and thirty thousand furnished with shield and spear of dan also twenty eight thousand six hundred prepared for battle and of Aser, forty thousand going forth to fight and challenging in battle. And on the other side of the Jordan of the sons of Reuben and of Gad, and of the half of the tribe of Manasses, a hundred and twenty thousand furnished with arms for war. All these men of war well appointed to fight came with a perfect heart to Hebron, to make David king over all Israel, and all the rest also of Israel were of one heart to make David king. And they were there with David three days eating and drinking, for their brethren had prepared for them. Moreover they that were near them, even as far as Issachar and Zebulon and Naphtali, brought leaves on asses and on camels and on mules and on oxen to eat meal figs raisins wine oil and oxen and sheep in abundance for there was joy in israel end of chapter twelve chapter thirteen and david consulted with the captains of thousands and of hundreds and with all the commanders. And he said to all the assembly of Israel, If it please you, and if the words which I speak come from the Lord our God, let us send to the rest of our brethren into all the countries of Israel, and to the priests and the Levites that dwell in the suburbs of the cities, to gather themselves to us, and let us bring again the ark of our God to us, for we sought it not in the days of Saul. And all the multitude answered that it should be so, for the word pleased all the people. So David assembled all Israel from Sehor of Egypt, even to the entering into Emath, to bring the ark of God from Kerioth-Iarim. And David went up with all the men of Israel to the hill of Kerioth-Iarim, which is in Judah, to bring thence the ark of the Lord God sitting upon the cherubims, where his name is called upon. And they carried the ark of God upon a new cart, out of the house of Abinadab, and Ozah and his brother drove the cart. And David and all Israel played before God with all their might, with hymns and with harps, and with psalteries and timbrels and cymbals and trumpets. And when they came to the floor of Kidon, Ozah put forth his hand to hold up the ark, for the ox being wanton had made it lean a little on one side. And the Lord was angry with Ozah, and struck him because he had touched the ark, and he died there before the Lord. And David was troubled because the Lord had divided Ozah, and he called that place the breach of Ozah to this day. And he feared God at that time, saying, How can I bring in the ark of God to me? And therefore he brought it not home to himself, that is, into the city of David, but carried it aside into the house of Obedidom the Gethite. And the ark of God remained in the house of Obedidom three months, and the Lord blessed his house, 
and all that he had. End of chapter 13 Chapter 14 And Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David, and cedar trees, and masons, and carpenters, to build him a house. And David perceived that the Lord had confirmed him king over Israel, and that his kingdom was exalted over his people Israel. And David took other wives in Jerusalem, and he begat sons and daughters. Now these are the names of them that were born to him in Jerusalem, Samua and Sobad, Nathan and Solomon, Jibahar and Elishua, and Eliphalet, and Noga, and Napheg, and Jophiah, Elisima, and Baaliada, and Eliphalet. And the Philistines, hearing that David was anointed king over all Israel, went all up to seek him. And David heard of it, and went out against them. And the Philistines came, and spread themselves in the vale of Rephaim. And David consulted the Lord, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines, and wilt thou deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to him, Go up, and I will deliver them into thy hand. And when they were come to baal Pharasim, David defeated them there, and he said, God hath divided my enemies by my hand, as waters are divided. And therefore the name of that place was called baal Pharasim. And they left there their gods, and David commanded that they should be burnt. Another time also the Philistines made an eruption, and spread themselves abroad in the valley. And David consulted God again, and God said to him, Go not up after them, turn away from them, and come upon them over against the pear-trees. And when thou shalt hear the sound of one going in the tops of the pear-trees, then shalt thou go out to battle. For God is gone out before thee to strike the army of the Philistines. And David did as God had commanded him, and defeated the army of the Philistines, slaying them from Gabaon to Gezira. And the name of David became famous in all countries, and the Lord made all nations fear him. End of chapter 14 Chapter 15 He made also houses for himself in the city of David, and built a place for the ark of God, and pitched a tabernacle for it. Then David said, No one ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites, whom the Lord hath chosen to carry it, and to minister unto himself for ever. And he gathered all Israel together into Jerusalem, that the ark of God might be brought into its place, which he had prepared for it. And the sons of Aaron also, and the Levites. Of the children of Kaath, Uriel was the chief, and his brethren a hundred and twenty. Of the sons of Merari, Asiah the chief, and his brethren two hundred and twenty. Of the sons of Gersom, Joel the chief, and his brethren a hundred and thirty. Of the sons of Elisaphan, Semaias the chief, and his brethren two hundred. Of the sons of Hebron, Eliel the chief, and his brethren eighty. Of the sons of Oziel, Aminadab the chief, and his brethren a hundred and twelve. And David called Sadok and Abiathar, the priests, and the Levites, Uriel, Asiah, Joel, Semaiah, Eliel, and Aminadab. And he said to them, You that are the heads of the Levitical families, be sanctified with your brethren, and bring the ark of the Lord the God of Israel to the place which is prepared for it. Lest, as the Lord at first struck us, because you were not present, the same should now also come to pass by our doing something against the law. 
So the priests and the Levites were sanctified to carry the ark of the Lord, the God of Israel. And the sons of Levi took the ark of God, as Moses had commanded, according to the word of the Lord, upon their shoulders with the staves. And David spoke to the chiefs of the Levites, to appoint some of their brethren to be singers with musical instruments, to wit, on psalteries and harps and cymbals, that the joyful noise might resound on high. And they appointed Levites, Hemam, the son of Joel, and of his brethren Asaph, the son of Berechias, and of the sons of Merari, their brethren, Ethan, the son of Kesiah and with them their brethren in the second rank, Zacharias, and Ben, and Jaziel, and Semiramoth, and Jehiel, and Ani, and Eliab, and Benias, and Maasias, and Mathathias, and Eliphalu, and Machanias, and Obedidim, and Jehiel, the porters. Now the singers, Heman, Asaph, and Ethan, sounded with cymbals of brass, and Zacharias, and Oziel, and Semiramoth, and Jehiel, and Anni, and Eliab, and Maasias, and Benias, sung mysteries upon psalteries. And Mathathias, and Eliphalu, and Machanias, and Obedidim, and Jehiel, and Ozaziu, sung a song of victory for the octave, upon harps. And Conanias, chief of the Levites, presided over the prophecy to give out the tunes, for he was very skillful. And Berechias and Elkanah were doorkeepers of the ark, and Sebanias and Josaphat, and Nathaniel, and Amasai, and Zacharias, and Benias, and Eliezer, the priests, sounded with trumpets before the ark of God, and Obedidim and Jehias were porters of the ark. So David and all the ancients of Israel, and the captains over thousands, went to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the house of Obedidim with joy. And when God had helped the Levites who carried the ark of the covenant of the Lord, they offered in sacrifice seven oxen and seven rams. And David was clothed with a robe of fine linen, and all the Levites that carried the ark, and the singing men, and Conanias the ruler of the prophecy among the singers, and David also had on him an ephod of linen. And all Israel brought the ark of the covenant of the Lord with joyful shouting and sounding with the sound of the cornet and with trumpets and cymbals and psalteries and harps. And when the ark of the covenant of the Lord was come to the city of David, Michal, the daughter of Saul, looking out at a window, saw King David dancing and playing, and she despised him in her heart. End of chapter 15 Chapter 16 So they brought the ark of God, and set it in the midst of the tent which David had pitched for it, and they offered holocausts and peace offerings before God. And when David had made an end of offering holocausts and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord, and he divided to all and every one, both men and women, a loaf of bread and a piece of roasted beef and flour fried with oil. And he appointed Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord and to remember his works and to glorify and praise the Lord God of Israel. Asaph the chief, and next after him Zacharias, moreover Jehiel, and Semiramoth, and Jehiel, and Mathathias, and Eliab, and Benias, and Obedidim, and Jehiel over the instruments of psaltery and harps, 
and Asaph sounded with cymbals, but Benias and Jeziel the priests to sound the trumpet continually before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. In that day David made Asaph the chief to give praise to the Lord with his brethren. Praise ye the Lord, and call upon his name, make known his doings among the nations. Sing to him, yea, sing praises to him, and relate all his wondrous works. Praise ye his holy name, let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek ye the Lord and his power, seek ye his face evermore. Remember his wonderful works, which he hath done, his signs and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Israel his servants, ye children of Jacob his chosen. He is the Lord our God, his judgments are in all the earth. Remember for ever his covenant, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Abraham, and his oath to Isaac. And he appointed the same to Jacob for a precept, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying, To thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance. When they were but a small number, very few and sojourners in it, and they passed from nation to nation, and from a kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong, and reproved kings for their sake. Touch not my anointed, and do no evil to my prophets. Sing ye to the Lord all the earth, show forth from day to day his salvation, declare his glory among the Gentiles, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and exceedingly to be praised, and he is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Praise and magnificence are before him, strength and joy in his place. Bring ye to the Lord, O ye families of the nations, bring ye to the Lord glory and empire. Give to the Lord glory to his name, bring up sacrifice, and come ye in his sight, and adore the Lord in holy becomingness. Let all the earth be moved at his presence, for he hath founded the world immovable. Let the heavens rejoice, and the earth be glad, and let them say among the nations, The Lord hath reigned. Let the sea roar, and the fullness thereof. Let the fields rejoice, and all things that are in them. Then shall the trees of the wood give praise before the Lord, because he is come to judge the earth. Give ye glory to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth for ever. And say ye, Save us, O God our Saviour, and gather us together, and deliver us from the nations, that we may give glory to thy holy name and may rejoice in singing thy praises. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from eternity to eternity, and let all the people say, Amen, and a hymn to God. So he left there before the ark of the covenant of the Lord Asaph and his brethren to minister in the presence of the ark, continually day by day, and in their courses. And Obededom with his brethren sixty-eight, and Obededom the son of Edithun, and Hosa he appointed to be porters, and Sadok the priest, and his brethren priests, before the tabernacle of the Lord in the high place, which was in Gabeon. 
that they should offer holocausts to the Lord upon the altar of holocausts continually, morning and evening, according to all that is written in the law of the Lord, which he commanded Israel. And after him Heman, and Edithun, and the rest that were chosen, every one by his name to give praise to the Lord because his mercy endureth for ever. And Heman and Edithun sounded the trumpet, and played on the cymbals and all kinds of musical instruments to sing praises to God, and the sons of Edithun he made porters. And all the people returned to their houses, and David to bless also his own house. End of chapter 16 Chapter 17 Now when David was dwelling in his house, he said to Nathan the prophet, Behold, I dwell in a house of cedar, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord is under skins. And Nathan said to David, Do all that is in thy heart, for God is with thee. Now that night the word of God came to Nathan, saying, Go and speak to David my servant. Thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not build me a house to dwell in. For I have not remained in a house from the time that I brought up Israel to this day, but I have been always changing places in a tabernacle and in a tent, abiding with all Israel. Did I ever speak to any one of all the judges of Israel whom I charged to feed my people, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus shalt thou say to my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the pastures, from following the flock, that thou shouldst be ruler of my people Israel. And I have been with thee whithersoever thou hast gone, and have slain all thy enemies before thee, and have made thee a name like that of one of the great ones that are renowned in the earth. And I have given a place to my people Israel. They shall be planted, and shall dwell therein, and shall be moved no more neither shall the children of iniquity waste them as at the beginning, since the days that I gave judges to my people Israel, and have humbled all thy enemies. And I declare to thee that the Lord will build thee a house, and when thou shalt have ended thy days to go to thy fathers, I will raise up thy seed after thee, which shall be of thy sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build me a house, and I will establish his throne for ever. I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son, and I will not take my mercy away from him, as I took it from him that was before thee. But I will settle him in my house, and in my kingdom for ever, and his throne shall be most firm for ever. According to all these words, and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak to David. And King David came and sat before the Lord, and said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my house, that thou shouldst give such things to me? but even this hath seemed little in thy sight, and therefore thou hast also spoken concerning the house of thy servant for the time to come, and hast made me remarkable above all men, O Lord God. What can David add more, seeing thou hast thus glorified thy servant, and known him? O Lord, for thy servant's sake, According to thy own heart, thou hast shown all this magnificence, 
and wouldst have all the great things to be known. O Lord, there is none like thee, and there is no other God beside thee, of all whom we have heard of with our ears. For what other nation is there upon earth like thy people Israel, whom God went to deliver and make a people for himself, and by his greatness and terrors cast out nations before their face whom he had delivered out of Egypt. And thou hast made thy people Israel to be thy own people for ever, and thou, O Lord, art become their God. Now therefore, O Lord, let the word which thou hast spoken to thy servant, and concerning his house, be established for ever, and do as thou hast said and let thy name remain, and be magnified for ever, and let it be said, The Lord of hosts is God of Israel, and the house of David his servant remaineth before him. For thou, O Lord my God, hast revealed to the ear of thy servant that thou wilt build him a house, and therefore thy servant hath found confidence to pray before thee. And now, O Lord, thou art God, and thou hast promised to thy servant such great benefits, and thou hast begun to bless the house of thy servant, that it may be always before thee, for seeing thou blessest it, O Lord, it shall be blessed for ever. End of chapter 17 Chapter 18 And it came to pass after this, that David defeated the Philistines, and humbled them, and took away Geth and her daughters out of the hands of the Philistines. And he defeated Moab, and the Moabites were made David's servants, and brought him gifts. At that time David defeated also Adarezer, king of Soba, of the land of Hemeth, when he went to extend his dominions as far as the river Euphrates. And David took from him a thousand chariots, and seven thousand horsemen, and twenty thousand footmen. And he hoed all the chariot horses, only a hundred chariots, which he reserved for himself. And the Syrians of Damascus came also to help Adarezer king of Soba, and David slew of them likewise two and twenty thousand men. And he put a garrison in Damascus, that Syria also should serve him and bring gifts. And the Lord assisted him in all things to which he went. And David took the golden quivers which the servants of Adarezer had, and he brought them to Jerusalem. Likewise, out of Thibath and Kun, cities of Adarezer, he brought very much brass, of which Solomon made the brazen sea, and the pillars and the vessels of brass. Now when Tho, king of Hemeth, heard that David had defeated all the army of Adarezer, king of Soba, he sent Adoram his son to king David, to desire peace of him, and to congratulate him that he had defeated and overthrown Adarezer, for To was an enemy to Adarezer. And all the vessels of gold and silver and brass king David consecrated to the Lord, with the silver and gold which he had taken from all the nations, as well from Edom and from Moab, and from the sons of Ammon, as from the Philistines, and from Amalek. And Abasai, the son of Sarvia, slew of the Edomites in the vale of the salt pits eighteen thousand. And he put a garrison in Edom, that Edom should serve David. And the Lord preserved David in all things to which he went. So David reigned over all Israel, 
and executed judgment and justice among all his people. And Joab, the son of Sarvia, was over the army, and Josaphat, the son of Ahilud, recorder, and Sadoc, the son of Echotob, and Achimelech, the son of Abiathar, were the priests, and Susa, scribe. And Benias, the son of Joiada, was over the bands of the Kerithi, and the Felathi, and the sons of David were chief about the king. End of chapter 18 Chapter 19 Now it came to pass that Naas, the king of the children of Ammon, died, and his son reigned in his stead. And David said, I will show kindness to Hanan, the son of Naas, for his father did a favor to me. And David sent messengers to comfort him upon the death of his father. But when they were come into the land of the children of Ammon to comfort Hanan, the princes of the children of Ammon said to Hanan, Thou thinkest perhaps that David, to do honor to thy father, hath sent comforters to thee. And thou dost not take notice that his servants are come to thee to consider and search and spy out thy land. Wherefore Hanan shaved the heads and beards of the servants of David, and cut away their garments from the buttocks to the feet, and sent them away. And when they were gone they sent word to David, who sent to meet them, for they had suffered a great affront and ordered them to stay at Jericho till their beards grew, and then to return. And when the children of Ammon saw that they had done an injury to David, Hanan and the rest of the people sent a thousand talents of silver to hire them chariots and horsemen out of Mesopotamia, and out of Syria Maica, and out of Soba. And they hired two and thirty thousand chariots, and the king of Maica with his people. And they came and camped over against Medaba. And the children of Ammon gathered themselves together out of their cities, and came to battle. And when David heard of it, he sent Joab and all the army of valiant men. And the children of Ammon came out and put their army in array before the gate of the city. And the kings that were come to their aid stood apart in the field. Wherefore Joab, understanding that the battle was set against him before and behind, chose out the bravest men of all Israel, and marched against the Syrians, and the rest of the people he delivered into the hand of Abisai his brother, and they went against the children of Ammon. And he said, if the Syrians be too strong for me, then thou shalt help me. But if the children of Ammon be too strong for thee, I will help thee. Be of good courage, and let us behave ourselves manfully for our people, and for the cities of our God, and the Lord will do that which is good in his sight. So Joab and the people that were with him went against the Syrians to the battle, and he put them to flight. And the children of Ammon, seeing that the Syrians were fled, they likewise fled from Abisai his brother, and went into the city. And Joab also returned to Jerusalem. But the Syrians, seeing that they had fallen before Israel, sent messengers, and brought to them the Syrians that were beyond the river, and Sophak, general of the army of Edereser, was their leader. And it was told David, and he gathered together all Israel, and passed the Jordan, and came upon them, and put his army in array against them, and they fought with him. But the Syrian fled before Israel, and David slew of the Syrians seven thousand chariots and forty thousand footmen, and Sophak, the general of the army. And when the servants of Adarezer saw themselves overcome by Israel, they went over to David and served him. And Syria would not help the children of Ammon, 
any more. End of chapter 19 Chapter 20 And it came to pass after the course of a year, at the time that kings go out to battle, Joab gathered together an army and the strength of the troops, and wasted the land of the children of Ammon, and went and besieged Rabbah. But David stayed at Jerusalem when Joab smote Rabbah and destroyed it. And David took the crown of Melcom from his head, and found in it a talent weight of gold, and most precious stones, and he made himself a diadem of it. He took also the spoils of the city, which were very great. And the people that were therein he brought out, and made harrows, and sleds, and chariots of iron to go over them, so that they were cut and bruised to pieces. In this manner David dealt with all the cities of the children of Ammon, and he returned with all his people to Jerusalem. After this there arose a war at Gezer against the Philistines, in which Sabakai the Husathite slew Saphai of the race of Rephaim, and humbled them. Another battle also was fought against the Philistines, in which Ediotus the son of Saltus, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath the Gethite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. There was another battle also in Geth, in which there was a man of great stature, whose fingers and toes were four and twenty, six on each hand and foot, who also was born of the stock of Repha. He reviled Israel, but Jonathan the son of Sameah, the brother of David, slew him. These were the sons of Repha and Geth, who fell by the hand of David and his servants. End of chapter 20 First Chronicles chapters 21 through 29 of the Bible, Douay Rames, 1899, American Edition. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 21 And Satan rose up against Israel, and moved David to number Israel. And David said to Joab, and to the rulers of the people, Go, and number Israel from Berzebee even to Dan, and bring me the number of them, that I may know it. And Joab answered, The Lord make his people a hundred times more than they are. But, my lord the king, are they not all thy servants? Why doth my lord seek this thing, which may be imputed as a sin to Israel? But the king's word rather prevailed, and Joab departed, and went through all Israel, and returned to Jerusalem. And he gave David the number of them whom he had surveyed, and all the number of Israel was found to be eleven hundred thousand men that drew the sword, and of Judah four hundred and seventy thousand fighting men. But Levi and Benjamin he did not number, for Joab unwillingly executed the king's orders. And God was displeased with this thing that was commanded, and he struck Israel. And David said to God, I have sinned exceedingly in doing this. I beseech thee, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done foolishly. And the Lord spoke to Gad, the seer of David, saying, Go and speak to David, and tell him, Thus saith the Lord, I give thee the choice of three things, choose one which thou wilt, and I will do it to thee. And when Gad was come to David, he said to him, Thus saith the Lord, Choose which thou wilt, either three years' famine, or three months to flee from thy enemies, 
and not to be able to escape their sword, or three days to have the sword of the Lord, and pestilence in the land, and the angel of the Lord destroying in all the coasts of Israel. Now therefore see what I shall answer him who sent me. And David said to Gad, I am on every side in a great strait, but it is better for me to fall into the hands of the Lord, for his mercies are many, than into the hands of men. So the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel, and there fell of Israel seventy thousand men. And he sent an angel to Jerusalem to strike it, and as he was striking it, the Lord beheld and took pity for the greatness of the evil, and said to the angel that destroyed, It is enough, now stop thy hand. And the angel of the Lord stood by the thrashing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. And David, lifting up his eyes, saw the angel of the Lord standing between heaven and earth, with a drawn sword in his hand, turned against Jerusalem. And both he and the ancients, clothed in haircloth, fell down flat on the ground. And David said to God, Am not I he that commanded the people to be numbered? It is I that have sinned, it is I that have done the evil. But as for this flock, what hath it deserved? O Lord my God, let thy hand be turned, I beseech thee, upon me and upon my father's house, and let not thy people be destroyed. And the angel of the Lord commanded Gad to tell David to go up and build an altar to the Lord God in the thrashing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. And David went up according to the word of Gad, which he spoke to him in the name of the Lord. Now when Ornan looked up and saw the angel, he and his four sons hid themselves, for at that time he was thrashing wheat in the floor. And as David was coming to Ornan, Ornan saw him, and went out of the thrashing floor to meet him, and bowed down to him with his face to the ground. And David said to him, Give me this place of thy thrashing floor, that I may build therein an altar to the Lord. But thou shalt take of me as much money as it is worth, that the plague may cease from the people. And Ornan said to David, Take it, and let my lord the king do all that pleaseth him, and moreover the oxen also I give for a holocaust, and the drays for wood, and the wheat for the sacrifice, I will give it all willingly. And King David said to him, It shall not be so, but I will give thee money as much as it is worth, for I must not take it from thee, and so offer to the Lord holocausts free cost. So David gave to Ornan for the place six hundred siclas of gold of just weight, and he built there an altar to the Lord, and he offered holocausts and peace offerings, and he called upon the Lord, and he heard him by sending fire from heaven upon the altar of the holocaust. And the Lord commanded the angel, and he put up his sword again into the sheath. And David, seeing that the Lord had heard him in the thrashing floor of Ornan the Jebusite, forthwith offered victims there. But the tabernacle of the Lord, which Moses made in the desert, and the altar of holocausts, was at that time in the high place of Gabaon. And David could not go to the altar there to pray to God, for he was seized with an exceeding great fear, seeing the sword of the angel of the Lord. End of chapter 21 Chapter 22 Then David said, This is the house of God, and this is the altar for the holocaust of Israel. 
and he commanded to gather together all the proselytes of the land of Israel, and out of them he appointed stone-cutters to hew stones and polish them to build the house of God. And David prepared in abundance iron for the nails of the gates, and for the closures and joinings, and of brass an immense weight. And the cedar trees were without number, which the Sidonians and Tyrians brought to David. And David said, Solomon my son is very young and tender, and the house which I would have to be built to the Lord must be such as to be renowned in all countries, therefore I will prepare him necessaries. And therefore before his death he prepared all the charges. And he called for Solomon his son, and commanded him to build a house to the Lord, the God of Israel. And David said to Solomon, My son, it was my desire to have built a house to the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Thou hast shed much blood, and fought many battles, so thou canst not build a house to my name, after shedding so much blood before me. The son that shall be born to thee shall be a most quiet man, for I will make him rest from all his enemies round about, and therefore he shall be called peaceable, and I will give peace and quietness to Israel all his days. He shall build a house to my name, and he shall be a son to me, and I will be a father to him, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel for ever. Now then, my son, the Lord be with thee, and do thou prosper, and build the house to the Lord thy God, as he hath spoken of thee. The Lord also give thee wisdom and understanding, that thou mayest be able to rule Israel, and to keep the law of the Lord thy God. For then thou shalt be able to prosper, if thou keep the commandments and judgments which the Lord commanded Moses to teach Israel. Take courage, and act manfully, fear not, nor be dismayed. Behold, I in my poverty have prepared the charges of the house of the Lord, of gold a hundred thousand talents, and of silver a million of talents, but of brass and of iron there is no weight, for the abundance surpasseth all account. Timber also and stones I have prepared for all the charges. Thou hast also workmen in abundance, hewers of stones, and masons, and carpenters, and of all trades the most skilful in their work, in gold, and in silver, and in brass, and in iron, whereof there is no number. Arise then, and be doing, and the Lord will be with thee. David also charged all the princes of Israel to help Solomon his son, saying, You see that the Lord your God is with you, and hath given you rest round about, and hath delivered all your enemies into your hands, and the land is subdued before the Lord and before his people. Give therefore your hearts and your souls to seek the Lord your God, and arise and build a sanctuary to the Lord God, that the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and the vessels consecrated to the Lord, may be brought into the house which is built to the name of the Lord. End of chapter 22 Chapter 23 and David, being old and full of days, made Solomon his son king over Israel. And he gathered together all the princes of Israel, and the priests and Levites. And the Levites were numbered from the age of thirty years and upwards, 
and there were found of them thirty-eight thousand men. Of these twenty-four thousand were chosen, and distributed unto the ministry of the house of the Lord, and six thousand were the overseers and judges. Moreover four thousand were porters, and as many singers singing to the Lord with the instruments which he had made to sing with. And David distributed them into courses by the families of the sons of Levi, to wit, of Gerson, and of Caeth, and of Merari. The sons of Gerson were Leodan and Simei, the sons of Leodan, the chief Jehiel, and Zithan and Joel, three, the sons of Simei, Salamith, and Hoziel, and Aran, three. These were the heads of the families of Leodan. And the sons of Semei were Leheth, and Ziza, and Jeus, and Bariah. These were the sons of Semei, four. And Leheth was the first, Ziza the second. But Jeus and Bariah had not many children, and therefore they were counted in one family, and in one house. The sons of Caeth were Amram and Isaiah, Hebron and Oziel, four. The sons of Amram, Aaron and Moses, and Aaron was separated to minister in the Holy of Holies, he and his sons for ever, and to burn incense before the Lord according to his ceremonies, and to bless his name for ever. The sons also of Moses, the man of God, were numbered in the tribe of Levi. The sons of Moses were Gersom and Eliezer. The sons of Gersom, Sebuel the first, and the sons of Eliezer were Rehobiah the first, and Eliezer had no more sons. But the sons of Rehobiah were multiplied exceedingly, the sons of Isaiah, Salomith the first, the sons of Hebron, Jeriu the first, Amarias the second, Jehaziel the third, Jechmeam the fourth, the sons of Oziel, Micah the first, Jesiah the second, the sons of Merari, Moholi and Musi, the sons of Moholi, Eleazar and Kia and Eleazar died, and had no sons but daughters, and the sons of Kis their brethren took them. The sons of Musi, Moholi, and Eder, and Jeremoth, three. These are the sons of Levi, in their kindreds and families, princes by their courses, and the number of every head that did the works of the ministry of the house of the Lord, from twenty years old and upward. For David said, The Lord the God of Israel hath given rest to his people, and a habitation in Jerusalem for ever. And it shall not be the office of the Levites to carry any more the tabernacle and all the vessels for the service thereof. So, according to the last precepts of David, the sons of Levi are to be numbered from twenty years old and upward, and they are to be under the hand of the sons of Aaron for the service of the house of the Lord in the porches and in the chambers and in the place of purification and in the sanctuary and in all the works of the ministry of the temple of the Lord. And the priests have the charge of the Levis of proposition, and of the sacrifice of fine flour, and of the unleavened cakes, and of the frying pan, and of the roasting, and of every weight and measure. And the Levites are to stand in the morning to give thanks, and to sing praises to the Lord, and in like manner in the evening as well in the oblation of the holocausts of the Lord, as in the Sabbaths, and in the new moons, and the rest of the solemnities, according to the number and ceremonies prescribed for everything, continually before the Lord. 
and let them keep the observances of the tabernacle of the covenant, and the ceremonies of the sanctuary, and the charge of the sons of Aaron their brethren, that they may minister in the house of the Lord. End of chapter 23 Chapter 24 now these were the divisions of the sons of Aaron. The sons of Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and Eleazar, and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died before their father, and had no children. So Eleazar and Ithamar did the office of the priesthood. And David distributed them, that is, Sadoc of the sons of Eleazar, and Ahimelech of the sons of Ithamar, according to their courses and ministry. And there were found many more of the sons of Eleazar among the principal men than of the sons of Ithamar, and he divided them so that there were of the sons of Eleazar sixteen chief men by their families, and of the sons of Ithamar eight by their families and houses. And he divided both the families one with the other by lot, for there were princes of the sanctuary, and princes of God, both of the sons of Eleazar and of the sons of Ithamar. And Semaias, the son of Nathaniel the scribe, a Levite, wrote them down before the king and the princes, and Sadoc the priest, and Ahimelech the son of Abiathar, and the princes also of the priestly and Levitical families, one house which was over the rest of Eleazar, and another house which had the rest under it of Ithamar. Now the first lot came forth to Joyarib, the second to Jedei, the third to Harim, the fourth to Seorim, the fifth to Melchiah, the sixth to Maimen, the seventh to Achos, the eighth to Abiah, the ninth to Jeshua, the tenth to Sekaniah, the eleventh to Eliasib, the twelfth to Jachim, the thirteenth to Hopfa, the fourteenth to Isbeab, the fifteenth to Belga, the sixteenth to Emmer, the seventeenth to Hezer, the eighteenth to Aphsez, the nineteenth to Phetiah, the twentieth to Hezekiah, the one and twentieth to Jachin, the two and twentieth to Gamul, the three and twentieth to Deliahu, the fourth and twentieth to Meazayu. These are their courses according to their ministries, to come into the house of the Lord, and according to their manner under the hand of Aaron their father, as the Lord the God of Israel had commanded. Now of the rest of the sons of Levi, there was of the sons of Amram, Subael, and of the sons of Subael, Jehediah, also of the sons of Rohobiah, the chief, Jezias, and the son of Isaiah, Salamoth, and the son of Salamoth, Jahath, and his son, Jeriah the first, Amarias the second, Jehaziel the third, Jechmean the fourth, the son of Oziel, Micah, the son of Micah, Samir, the brother of Micah, Jesiah, and the son of Jesiah, Zacharias, the sons of Merari, Maholi, and Musi, the son of Oziu, Beno, the son also of Merari, Oziau, and Siam, and Zachur, and Hebri, and the son of Moholi, Eleazar, who had no sons, and the son of Kis, Jeremiah, the sons of Musi, Moholi, Eder, and Jeremoth. These are the sons of Levi, according to the houses of their families. And they also cast lots over against their brethren, the sons of Aaron, before David the king, and Sadoc, and Ahimelech, and the princes of the priestly and Levitical families, both the elder and the younger, the lot divided all equally. End of chapter 24
Chapter 25 Moreover, David and the chief officers of the army separated for the ministry the sons of Asaph, and of Heman, and of Idathan, to prophesy with harps, and with psalteries, and with cymbals, according to their number serving in their appointed office. Of the sons of Asaph, Zechur, and Joseph, and Nathaniah, and Azarela, sons of Asaph, under the hand of Asaph, prophesying near the king. And of Idithan, the sons of Idithan, Godolias, Serf, Jesias, and Hazabias, and Mathathias, six, under the hand of their father Idithan, who prophesied with a harp to give thanks and to praise the Lord. Of Heman also, the sons of Heman, Bokayu, Mathanyu, Oziel, Subiu, and Jeremoth, Hananias, Hanane, Eliatha, Gedalthi, and Romemthiezer, and Jesbaxa, Malothi, Other, Mahazioth. All these were the sons of Heman, the seer of the king, and the words of God, to lift up the horn, and God gave to Heman fourteen sons and three daughters. All these under their father's hand were distributed to sing in the temple of the Lord with cymbals and psalteries and harps for the service of the house of the Lord near the king, to wit, Asaph and Idathan and Heman. And the number of them with their brethren that taught the song of the Lord all the teachers were two hundred and eighty-eight and they cast lots by their courses, the elder equally with the younger, the learned and the unlearned together. And the first lot came forth to Joseph, who was of Asaph, the second to Godelias, to him and his sons, and his brethren twelve, the third to Zachar, to his sons and his brethren twelve, the fourth to Isari, to his sons and his brethren twelve, the fifth to Nathaniah, to his sons and his brethren twelve, the sixth to Bokiao, to his sons and his brethren twelve, the seventh to Israela, to his sons and his brethren twelve, the eighth to Jesiah, to his sons and his brethren twelve, the ninth to Mathanias, to his sons and his brethren twelve, the tenth to Semias, to his sons and his brethren twelve, the eleventh to Azareel, to his sons and his brethren twelve, the twelfth to Hazabiah, to his sons and his brethren twelve, the thirteenth to Subael, to his sons and his brethren twelve, the fourteenth to Mathathias, to his sons and his brethren twelve, the fifteenth to Jeremoth, to his sons and his brethren twelve, the sixteenth to Hananias, to his sons and his brethren twelve, the seventeenth to Jesbacasa, to his sons and his brethren twelve, the eighteenth to Hanani, to his sons and his brethren twelve, the nineteenth to Melothi, to his sons and his brethren twelve, the twentieth to Eliatha, to his sons and his brethren twelve, the one and twentieth to Other, to his sons and his brethren twelve, the two and twentieth to Gedelthi, to his sons and his brethren twelve, the three and twentieth to Mahazioth, to his sons and his brethren twelve, the four and twentieth to Romemthiezer, to his sons and his brethren twelve. End of chapter twenty five. Chapter twenty six. And the divisions of the porters, of the Coritus Meselamiah, the son of Cori, of the sons of Asaph. The sons of Meselamiah, Zacharias the firstborn, Jadiel the second, Zabadias the third, Jethaniel the fourth, Elam the fifth, Johanan the sixth, 
Elioenai the seventh, and the sons of Obedidim, Semiaias the firstborn, Josabad the second, Joaha the third, Zechar the fourth, Nathaniel the fifth, Amiel the sixth, Issachar the seventh, Folathe the eighth, for the Lord had blessed him. And to Semei his son were born sons, heads of their families, for they were men of great valor. The sons then of Semei were Othni, and Raphael, and Obed, and Elizabeth, and his brethren, most valiant men, and Eliu, and Semachias. All these of the sons of Obedidim, they and their sons and their brethren, most able men for service, sixty-two of Obedidim, and the sons of Meselamiah and their brethren, strong men, were eighteen, and of Hosa, that is, of the sons of Merari, Semri the chief, for he had not a firstborn, and therefore his father made him chief, Helchias the second, Tabalias the third, Zacharias the fourth. All these the sons and the brethren of Hosa were thirteen. Among these were the divisions of the porters, so that the chiefs of the wards, as well as their brethren, always ministered in the house of the Lord. And they cast lots equally, both little and great, by their families for every one of the gates. And the lot of the east fell to Salamias, but to his son Zacharias, a very wise and learned man, the north gate fell by lot and to Obedidom and his sons that towards the south, in which part of the house was the council of the ancients, to Sephim and Hosa towards the west, by the gate which leadeth to the way of the ascent, ward against ward. Now towards the east were six Levites, and towards the north four a day, and towards the south likewise for a day, and where the council was two and two. In the cells also of the porters toward the west, four in the way, and two at every cell. These are the divisions of the porters of the sons of Cori and of Merari. Now Achaius was over the treasures of the house of God and the holy vessels, the sons of Ladan, the sons of Gersani, of Ladan, were heads of the families, of Ladan and Gersani, Jehiali. The sons of Jehiali, Zathan and Joel, his brethren, over the treasures of the house of the Lord, with the Amramites, and Isaiahites, and Hebronites, and Ozialites, and Subael, the son of Gersom, the son of Moses, was chief over the treasures. His brethren also, Eliezer, whose son Rehobiah, and his son Esaias, and his son Joram, and his son Zechri, and his son Salamith, which Salamith and his brethren were over the treasures of the holy things, which King David, and the heads of families, and the captains over thousands, and over hundreds, and the captains of the host had dedicated, out of the wars and the spoils won in battles, which they had consecrated to the building and furniture of the temple of the Lord. And all these things that Samuel the seer, and Saul the son of Kis, and Abner the son of Ner, and Joab the son of Sarvia had sanctified. And whosoever had sanctified those things, they were under the hand of Selamith and his brethren. But Conanias and his sons were over the Esaiahites, for the business abroad over Israel to teach them and judge them. And of the Hebronites, Hazabias and his brethren, most able men, a thousand seven hundred, had the charge over Israel beyond the Jordan westward, in all the works of the Lord, and for the service of the king. And the chief of the Hebronites was Jeriah, according to their families and kindreds. 
in the fortieth year of the reign of David they were numbered, and there were found most valiant men in Jazer Galead, and his brethren of stronger age, two thousand seven hundred chiefs of families. And King David made them rulers over the Reubenites and the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasses, for all the service of God and the King. End of chapter 26 Chapter 27 Now the children of Israel, according to their number, the heads of families, captains of thousands and of hundreds, and officers that served the king according to their companies, who came in and went out every month in the year, under every chief, were four and twenty thousand. Over the first company, the first month, Jezboam, the son of Zebdiel, was chief, and under him were four and twenty thousand. Of the sons of Phares, the chief of all the captains in the host in the first month, the company of the second month was under Dudiah, an Ahohite, and after him was another named Macheloth, who commanded a part of the army of four and twenty thousand. And the captain of the third company for the third month was Benias, the son of Joiada, the priest, and in his division were four and twenty thousand. This is that Benias, the most valiant among the thirty and above the thirty, and Amizabad, his son, commanded his company. The fourth for the fourth month was Asahel, the brother of Joab, and Zabadias, his son, after him, and in his company were four and twenty thousand. The fifth captain for the fifth month was Samaoth, a Jezerite, and his company were four and twenty thousand. The sixth for the sixth month was Hira, the son of Achez, a Thikuite, and in his company were four and twenty thousand. The seventh for the seventh month was Hellas, a Phalanite of the sons of Ephraim, and in his company were four and twenty thousand. The eighth for the eighth month was Zobachai, a Husathite of the race of Zerahi, and in his company were four and twenty thousand. The ninth for the ninth month was Ebiezer, an Anathothite of the sons of Gemini, and in his company were four and twenty thousand. The tenth for the tenth month was Merai, who was an Atophathite of the race of Zerai, and in his company were four and twenty thousand. The eleventh for the eleventh month was Benias, a Ferathonite of the sons of Ephraim, and in his company were four and twenty thousand. The twelfth for the twelfth month was Holdai, a Netophathite of the race of Gothoniel, and in his company were four and twenty thousand. Now the chiefs over the tribes of Israel were these, over the Reubenites, Eliezer, the son of Zechre, was ruler. Over the Simeonites, Saphatias, the son of Maacah. Over the Levites, Hazabias, the son of Camul. Over the Aaronites, Sadok. Over Judah, Eliu, the brother of David. Over Issachar, Emri, the son of Michael. Over the Zebulonites, Jesmias, the son of Adias over the Nephtalites, Jeremoth, the son of Osriel, over the sons of Ephraim, Oziah, the son of Ozaziel, over the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joel, the son of Fediah, and over the half-tribe of Manasseh, in Gilead, Jado, the son of Zacharias, and over Benjamin, Jesiel, the son of Abner, and over Dan, Ezrael, the son of Jeroham. These were the princes of the children of Israel. But David would not number them from twenty years old and under, because the Lord had said that he would multiply Israel like the stars of heaven. Joab, the son of Sarvia, began to number, but he finished not, because upon this there fell wrath upon Israel, 
and therefore the number of them that were numbered was not registered in the chronicles of King David. And over the king's treasures was Asmoth the son of Adiel, and over those stores which were in the cities, and in the villages, and in the castles, was Jonathan the son of Ozias. And over the tillage, and the husbandmen who tilled the ground, was Ezri the son of Kilub, and over the dressers of the vineyards was Semias, a Romathite, and over the wine cellars Zebdias, an Aphonite, and over the olive yards and the fig groves which were in the plains was Belanum, a Gedarite, and over the oil cellars Joas, and over the herds that fed in Seron was Setri, a Seronite, and over the oxen in the valleys Sephat the son of Adli, and over the camels, Ubil, an Ishmaelite, and over the asses, Jedias, a Moronathite, and over the sheep, Jeziah, an Agarine. All these were the rulers of the substance of King David. And Jonathan, David's uncle, a counselor, a wise and learned man, he and Jehiel, the son of Achamoni, were with the king's sons. And Achitophel was the king's counsellor, and Cusai the Arachite, the king's friend. And after Achitophel was Joiada, the son of Benias, and Abiathar. And the general of the king's army was Joab. End of chapter 27 Chapter 28 and David assembled all the chief men of Israel, the princes of the tribes, and the captains of the companies who waited on the king, and the captains over thousands and over hundreds, and them who had the charge over the substance and possessions of the king, and his sons with the officers of the court, and the men of power, and all the bravest of the army at Jerusalem. And the king rising up and standing said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. I had a thought to have built a house in which the ark of the Lord and the footstool of our God might rest, and I prepared all things for the building. And God said to me, Thou shalt not build a house to my name, because thou art a man of war and hast shed blood. But the Lord God of Israel chose me of all the house of my father to be king over Israel for ever. For of Judah he chose the princes, and of the house of Judah my father's house. And among the sons of my father it pleased him to choose me king over all Israel. And among my sons, for the Lord hath given me many sons, he hath chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. And he said to me, Solomon thy son shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be a father to him. And I will establish his kingdom for ever, if he continue to keep my commandments and my judgments as at this day. Now then, before all the assembly of Israel, in the hearing of our God, keep ye and seek all the commandments of the Lord our God, that you may possess the good land, and may leave it to your children after you for ever. And thou, my son Solomon, know the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts, and understandeth all the thoughts of minds. If thou seek him, thou shalt find him. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off for ever. Now therefore, seeing the Lord hath chosen thee to build the house of the sanctuary, take courage, and do it. And David gave to Solomon his son, a description of the porch, and of the temple, and of the treasures, and of the upper floor, and of the inner chambers, and of the house for the mercy seat, 
as also of all the courts which he had in his thought, and of the chambers round about for the treasures of the house of the Lord, and for the treasures of the consecrated things, and of the divisions of the priests, and of the Levites, for all the works of the house of the Lord, and for all the vessels of the service of the temple of the Lord. Gold by weight for every vessel for the ministry, and silver by weight according to the diversity of the vessels and uses. He gave also gold for the golden candlesticks and their lamps, according to the dimensions of every candlestick and the lamps thereof. In like manner also he gave silver by weight for the silver candlesticks and for their lamps according to the diversity of the dimensions of them. He gave also gold for the tables of proposition, according to the diversity of the tables, in like manner also silver for other tables of silver, for flesh-hooks also, and bowls and censers of fine gold, and for little lions of gold, according to the measure he gave by weight for every lion. In like manner also for lions of silver, he set aside a different weight of silver. And for the altar of incense he gave the purest gold, and to make the likeness of the chariot of the cherubims spreading their wings, and covering the ark of the covenant of the Lord. All these things, said he, came to me written by the hand of the Lord, that I might understand all the works of the pattern. And David said to Solomon his son, Act like a man, and take courage, and do. Fear not, and be not dismayed, for the Lord my God will be with thee, and will not leave thee, nor forsake thee, till thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. Behold the courses of the priests and the Levites, for every ministry of the house of the Lord stand by thee, and are ready, and both the princes and the people know how to execute all thy commandments. End of chapter 28 Chapter 29 And King David said to all the assembly, Solomon my son, whom alone God hath chosen, is as yet young and tender, and the work is great, for a house is prepared not for man, but for God. And I with all my ability have prepared the expenses for the house of my God, gold for vessels of gold, and silver for vessels of silver, brass for things of brass, iron for things of iron, wood for things of wood, and onyx stones, and stones like alabaster, and of diverse colors, and all manner of precious stones, and marble of peros in great abundance. Now over and above the things which I have offered into the house of my God, I give of my own proper goods, gold and silver for the temple of my God, beside what things I have prepared for the holy house. Three thousand talents of gold of the gold of Ophir, and seven thousand talents of refined silver to overlay the walls of the temple, and gold for wheresoever there is need of gold, and silver for wheresoever there is need of silver for the works to be made by the hands of the artificers, now if any man is willing to offer, let him fill his hand to-day, and offer what he pleaseth to the Lord. Then the heads of the families, and the princes of the tribes of Israel, and the captains of thousands and of hundreds, and the overseers of the king's possessions promised, and they gave, for the works of the house of the Lord, of gold five thousand talents, and ten thousand solids, of silver ten thousand talents, and of brass eighteen thousand talents, and of iron a hundred thousand talents. 
and all they that had stones gave them to the treasures of the house of the Lord by the hand of Jehiel the Gersonite. And the people rejoiced when they promised their offerings willingly, because they offered them to the Lord with all their heart, and David the king rejoiced also with a great joy. And he blessed the Lord before all the multitude, and he said, Blessed art thou, O Lord, the God of Israel, our Father, from eternity to eternity. Thine, O Lord, is magnificence, and power, and glory, and victory, and to thee is praise, for all that is in heaven and in earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art above all princes. Thine are riches, and thine is glory. Thou hast dominion over all. In thy hand is power and might. In thy hand greatness, and the empire of all things. Now, therefore, our God, we give thanks to thee, and we praise thy glorious name. Who am I, and what is my people, that we should be able to promise thee all these things? All things are thine, and we have given thee what we received of thy hand. For we are sojourners before thee, and strangers, as were all our fathers. Our days upon earth are as a shadow, and there is no stay. O Lord our God, all this store that we have prepared to build thee a house for thy holy name is from thy hand, and all things are thine. I know, my God, that thou provest hearts, and lovest simplicity, wherefore I also in the simplicity of my heart have joyfully offered all these things, and I have seen with great joy thy people which are here present offer thee their offerings. O Lord God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Israel our fathers, keep for ever this will of their heart, and let this mind remain always for the worship of thee, and give to Solomon my son a perfect heart, that he may keep thy commandments, thy testimonies, and thy ceremonies, and do all things and build the house for which I have provided the charges. And David commanded all the assembly, Bless ye the Lord our God. And all the assembly blessed the Lord the God of their fathers, and they bowed themselves and worshipped God, and then the king. And they sacrificed victims to the Lord, and they offered holocausts the next day, a thousand bullocks, a thousand rams, a thousand lambs, with their libations, and with everything prescribed most abundantly for all Israel. And they ate and drank before the Lord that day with great joy, and they anointed the second time Solomon the son of David. And they anointed him to the Lord to be prince, and Sadoc to be high priest. And Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king, instead of David his father, and he pleased all, and all Israel obeyed him. And all the princes and men of power, and all the sons of King David gave their hand, and were subject to Solomon the king. And the Lord magnified Solomon over all Israel, and gave him the glory of a reign such as no king of Israel had before him. So David the son of Isai reigned over all Israel. And the days that he reigned over Israel were forty years. In Hebron he reigned seven years, and in Jerusalem three and thirty years. And he died in a good age, full of days and riches and glory and Solomon his son reigned in his stead. Now the acts of King David first and last are written in the book of Samuel the seer, 
and in the book of Nathan the prophet, and in the book of Gad the seer, and of all his reign, and his valor, and of the times that passed under him, either in Israel or in all the kingdoms of the countries. End of chapter 29